मेन ऑपरेशन था और इस ऑपरेशन में एक बड़ा नुकसान हुआ है अगर हम देखें तो पिछले लंबे समय से लगातार नक्सल मोर्चे पर जो सुरक्षा बल है वो एग्रेसिवली काम कर रहे हैं और अंदरूनी इलाके में लगातार कैंप बनाए जा रहे हैं और बैकफुट पे कहीं ना कहीं नक्सली नजर आ रहे हैं और ये बीजापुर का जो इलाका है बीजापुर सुकमा और कोंटा इस इलाके में अभी नक्सलियों का जो होल्ड कहा जाता है उसे ब्रेक करने की लगातार कोशिश सुरक्षा बलों के द्वारा की जा रही है और उसी कड़ी में ये कहा जा सकता है कि एक बड़ी सफलता पुलिस फोर्सेस को मिली है यहाँ पे All right. Uh, thanks so much, Zulfikar, for joining us with the latest there. So, an encounter between uh, Naxals and uh, the forces uh, taking place in uh, Bijapur. Six uh, the bodies of six Naxals have been recovered, and a deputy commander of the Naxal forces has been killed. Is what the police have claimed. This encounter is by a joint team of the Cobra, CRPF, and DRG uh, personnel, and uh, the Maoists allegedly killed three villagers. on holy after which this encounter took place in the early hours today with that time for us to slip into a short break more news coming up on the other side stay with us ndtv's you are conclave is back with india's biggest you are disruptors politics culture comedy music future you are youth for change 28th March 12:30 p.m. onwards only on NDTV network Hello Moto Motorola India's best 5G smartphone brand This show isn't just about news from the southern states. It's one that looks at the rest of India and the world from a diverse South India point of view because NDTV has always taken the southern view seriously. The Southern View with Veera Raghav only on NDTV 24/7. talking but very little being said too many voices but hardly any being heard you turn to a show that puts you front and center a show that headlines the stories of the people by the people for the people hello and welcome to ndtv auto what i have with me today is real special it is the latest ev from audi q6 What's special about it is it's based on a completely new platform PPE premium platform electric this platform Audi has developed for their electric vehicles and it has a lot to offer company says the new platform ppe helps our dq6 e-tron achieve 30% less energy consumption with 33% better system performance with the q6 audi is also introducing its electronic architecture e3 1.2 which allows customers to experience digitalization directly in the vehicle making our dq6 e-tron a truly tech marvel so here it is all that you need to know about q6 e-tron 
RD Q6 e-tron is the upcoming EV from RD Stable and is expected to come to Indian shores by the end of this year. International launch is expected in second half of this year. It is a 4.7 meter SUV which will occupy the space between Q4 and Q8 e-tron. It will come in two variants, Q6 e-tron Quattro and the more powerful SQ6 e-tron. What we have today with us is the S variant. What I want to show you the first in the look of RD Q6 are these DRLs. They are matrix LED DRLs with active signature. That means you can change the pattern that gets projected from these DRLs and they also move while the car is on the move. That means you can actually have an active DRL. And I believe this feature is the highlight of RD's upcoming baby. Up front is the grill. Now what I want to show you is this single frame grill. Aldi is calling it inverted single frame grill and it looks very interesting. It's all closed off but looks very nice with these piano black inserts given here and then we have seen these uh, very flattish Aldi logo in other products but here there is a little bit of 3D element in the logo. Now you have to notice this very prominent shoulder line which goes all the way to the tail lamp. The rear looks quite interesting with its almost wrapped around feel to the Welcome back. Now let's get to the latest on elections and seat sharing a tussle. The Mahagad Bandhan in Bihar, there's a tug of war that's still going on over their seat sharing deal. And Tejashwi Yadav is now likely to meet Malikarjun Kharge in Delhi today as a few of the seats continue to see a tussle. Let's go across to Manish now for more. And Manish, it's five seats that are you know, the bone of contention where, over which this tussle is going on. Give us the details. Uh, Gargi, actually on the seat sharing uh, formula, almost uh, all the parties including Congress and left are in agreement over the seats offered by uh, offered to them by Rashtri Janata Dal which is the, playing the role of Big Brother. So Gargi, they have, uh, RJD has come out with a formula uh, where they have given nine seats to Congress and five seats to left parties and remaining 26 seats will be contested by RJD. Out of those five seats for left parties, it is clear that uh, CPIML, which has got uh, uh, 12 MLAs in Bihar Assembly, will contest, will get uh, three seats. But Congress party has no problem with the numbers because the same number was uh, given to them last time also. But somewhere they are, you know, keen on contesting some of the seats which has been you know taken by rjd like you know there is a, a example of punya seat where they have got Papu yadav to merge his party in congress but somewhere rjd top leadership especially lalu yadav and tejasvi yadav are miffed with Papu yadav's candidature over you know betrayal you know he promised to merge his party in rjd and next day he went and merged his party in uh, congress and that is why Tejasvi Yadav has got a local MLA from JDU, uh, Ms. Bhima Bharti, to resign from uh, his uh, her membership of assembly. And now she, uh, you know, has been promised a ticket by Tejasvi Yadav. So somewhere this is uh, this Punya seat has become a bone of contention. And of course there are some seats which has been given to Congress like Gopal Ganj or Betia, which they uh, they are not very keen. But of course, they are saying that last minute parallels are going on. There is some negotiation is going on, and they are very hopeful that some kind of you know uh, settlement will be you know uh, done by the, uh, late evening today. Kargi, that it could be resolved by today. And just briefly, uh, Manish, what about Kanhaya Kumar? There was said to be some kind of dispute over his candidature as well. See, there is no, uh, you know, there is no dispute over his candidature. As you know that Tejasri Yadav and Kanhaiya Kumar, they don't share a very, you know, uh, a good cordial relationship. Uh, there are some issues between them for last six, seven years. And that is why RJD has is been, you know, really very generous to the left parties. And that seat, Begu Sarai, from where Kanhaiya contested last time, has been given to CPI this time and CPI is, has already announced that they are going to fill one of their local MLAs 
from that seat. So it seems that uh, there are not very, you know, bright chances for Kanhaiya to contest in this time, this time from Bihar. Gargi. All right, Manish, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Tejashwi Yadav uh, meeting with Malik Arjun Kharge today. And hopefully this seat sharing will be resolved. News now from Telangana on the snooping scandal and Union Minister from Telangana, Kishan Reddy, has demanded a judicial probe into this phone tapping case which is under investigation which has exploded with more and more information emerging every day. Kishan Reddy said that the phones of BJP leaders and their sympathizers besides the party office staff were tapped during the BRS rule and KCR solely responsible for these crimes, he said he is the cabinet, he, he and his cabinet colleagues have behaved in a heinous manner, is what Kishan Reddy said in an interview to NDTV. Election se agar amara ek am bank se paise utha hai, wo paise ke liye bhi phone tapping karke official money ko bhi. ये लोग फोन टैपिंग करके जैसा इंटरनेशनल टेररिस्ट को अरेस्ट करते ऐसा फोन पूरा गाड़ी को रोककर ग्लास तोड़कर पैसे उठा के ले गए लोग इतना जोर जबरदस्ती इस फोन टैपिंग में तेलंगाना में हुआ है इसलिए मैं ये स्मॉल इशू नहीं है बहुत बड़ा इशू है बहुत बड़ा नेटवर्क पोले ऑफिसर्स बहुत माफिया बन गए फोन टैपिंग माफिया पुलिस वाला बनकर इस तेलंगाना में फोन टैपिंग किया है इसलिए इसमें एक जुडिशियल इंक्वायरी होना चाहिए इतना बड़ा इशू है ये छोटा इशू नहीं क्योंकि आने वाले दिन में ऐसा इश्यूज नहीं होना चाहिए इसके लिए एक जुडिशियल इंक्वायरी भी होना चाहिए ऐसा मेरा डिमांड है मगर जो फोन टाइपिंग में किया है पूरे के के संबंधित लोग हैं पूरे तो फोन टाइपिंग किया है रिटायर्ड रिटायर्ड ऑफिसर्स है उनको एक्सटेंशन किया है नहीं तो स्पेशल ऑफिसर के नाते रिकॉन्स्टिट्यूट करके इनके द्वारा ये नेटवर्क चलाया ये प्राइवेट के का ये प्राइवेट माफिया का जैसा बिहार सरकार ने फोन टैपिंग किया है इसमें आई लेवल इंक्वायरी होना चाहिए इसमें जो भी दोषी कितना करोड़ रुपए प्राइवेट के लोगों के पास ये लोग लूटा है फोन टैपिंग करके डरा के धमका के पैसे लूटा है इस विषय पर हाई लेवल इंक्वायरी होना चाहिए प्रमुख लोगों का फोन टैपिंग करके उनको ब्लैकमेल किया है उनका सरकार की तरफ से किया है बीआरएस पार्टी के तरफ से किया है ये पुलिस ग्रुप ने अलग अलग एक ग्रुप बनकर सरकार को ना बताते हुए पुलिस अलग इसमें अलग फायदा व्यक्तिगत उनके लोग उठाया इसलिए इस ये छोटा इशू नहीं है बिल्कुल बड़ा इशू है इस पे पर बाई लेवल इंक्वायरी होना चाहिए ये इक्विपमेंट भी पूरे लोग छुपा के रख दिया है जो फोन बातचीत किया उसको भी छुपा के रख दिया है इसलिए ये बहुत बड़ा इशू है फोन टैपिंग करने के लिए स्टेट गवर्नमेंट इसको अधिकार रहते हैं इसके लिए कुछ नियम है नाम्स है ओनली टेररिस्ट विषयों पर नेशनल सिक्योरिटी के विषय पर एंटी नेशनल के विषय पर ये फोन टैपिंग कर सकते हैं जो मन माने उनके मन माने जो चाहिए उनको फोन टैपिंग करना उनको ब्लैकमेल करना उनसे पैसे वसूल करना ये अलग अलग प्रांतों में एक माफिया रहते थे ऐसा है पुलिस खुद माफिया बनकर तेलंगाना में एक माहौल फायदा किया है ये एक टेररिस्ट के जैसा ये खुद पुलिस जो रिटायर्ड ऑफिसर्स को जो नया नियुक्त किया के उनका एक नया एक माफिया का जैसा पुलिस माफिया का जैसा ये लोग व्यवहार किया है All right, breaking news now coming in from Maharashtra, where Prakash Ambedkar has said he will be going solo for these elections. Remember, there had been talk uh, in the MV of giving a seat uh, to Prakash Ambedkar's party. However, that uh, agreement could not be arrived at, and now his Vanchit Bahujan Aghadi has declared the first list from Maharashtra. Let's go across uh, to Radhika for more. Radhika, give us the latest. That's it. This is a big setback for MBA, which was negotiating hard with Prakash Ambedkar. Of course, Prakash Ambedkar had been putting pressure on MBA for maximum seats. Uh, in fact, MBA was ready to give uh, almost five seats to Prakash Ambedkar, but looks like he has decided to not go for that offer and he's going to go slow, solo. In fact, uh, VBA has announced his candidates as well for Lok Sabha elections in Maharashtra. Uh, eight candidates have been announced. Uh, Prakash Ambedkar will contest from Akola Lok Sabha seat. In fact, uh, um, he will also be supporting Congress party candidate in Nagpur. And uh, 
Um, his party will also be supporting uh, Bahujan Party's uh, candidate in Sangli seat. And uh, BBA will also be announcing uh, Ramtek uh, uh, seat as well uh, in the evening. So a list is announced. Prakash Ambedkar just took a press conference in which he's decided to go solo. Of course, negotiations with MBA had been going on for quite some time. There were multiple meetings that took place. Uh, in fact, uh, Prakash Ambedkar had given a list of uh, 27 seats from which uh, they were ready to contest, which were, according to Mr. Ambedkar, winnable seats uh, from the side of VBA. Of course, uh, there were negotiations on both sides. Uh, initially, uh, Sena was ready to give two seats from their quota, and they increased it to five. MBA was ready to give five seats to Prakash Ambedkar. Uh, which could have helped the MBA in many seats. However, looks like, uh, you know, because the negotiations failed and um, he couldn't get what he wanted in terms of seats and candidates, he's decided to go solo and he's announced a list of uh, eight uh, candidates. He's declared first list of eight candidates uh, uh, from his party. And he will be supporting uh, the Congress uh, candidates from Nagpur and has also uh, decided to support uh, OBC Bahujan party candidates from Sangli. And he himself will be contesting uh, from Akola. So big setback for uh, MBA. All right, a setback for the MV and Prakash Ambedkar has declared that his uh, Vanchit Bahujan Aghari is going to go it alone in these elections. With that, time for us to slip into a short break. Coming up on the other side, uh, Ladakhi innovator, environmentalist Onam Wangchuk has called off his past. We'll get you the details. NDTV's You Are Conclave is back with India's biggest You Are Disruptors. Politics, culture, comedy, music, future. You Are Youth for Change. 28th March, 12.30 p.m. onwards, only on NDTV Network. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. ट्रैकिंग की बात से इनफैक्ट याद आया गाइस डिड यू नो कि आप अब ट्रैक कर सकते हैं अबाउट योर कंट्रीब्यूशन टुवर्ड्स अ हेल्दीयर एनवायरनमेंट बिकॉज अगर आप ऊबर यूज करते हैं तो आई एम श्योर आपको अभी पता होगा कि उसमें दिस एन ऑप्शन कि आप इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स को बुक कर सकते हैं इफ यू प्रेफर गोइंग सस्टेनेबल लेकिन अब यहां पे एक ऑप्शन आ गया है जहां पे आपको ऊबर दिखाता है कि आप क्या सेव कर रहे हैं कंपेयर टू अगर आप एक नॉर्मल व्हीकल में जाते हैं तो आप कितने कार्बन एमिशंस होने से रोक रहे हैं और वो आपको दिखाता है इन फॉर्म ऑफ ट्रीज बीइंग प्लांटेड तो कहीं ना कहीं ये एक अच्छी चीज है जहां पे यू कैन कीप ट्रैक ऑफ योर यू नो योर कंट्रीब्यूशन कि आप अपने डेली हैबिट्स में जब आप सुबह ऑफिस के लिए ऊबर ले रहे हैं जब आप शामों के बाहर जा रहे हैं अगर आप एक ईवी यूज करते हैं सो हाउ मच एसेंशियली आर यू कंट्रीब्यूटिंग टुवर्ड्स द एनवायरमेंट दिस सर्विस इज लाइव नाउ इन मल्टीपल इंडियन सिटीज तो नेक्स्ट टाइम यू कैन ऊबर आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट कि अगर आप एक इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल यूज करते हैं इट विल kind of contribute towards the environment or you can clearly track in form of number of trees being planted so i'm sure normally we friends sometimes we see each other's uber ratings ki kisko kitne star mile hain kisi kitni rating hai so i'm sure going next this could be a thing that we all might track ki acha maine kitne trees ko plant kiya by going electric ya kaun aage jeet raha hai it's a nice thing did you know this if yes amazing if no please let me know you know the address it's tg@ndtv.com
Stay informed and entertained with the new and updated NDTV News app. You can watch all our channels live, listen to podcasts, read breaking and exclusive news from around the world and more. Download the NDTV app today and get access to the best journalism and storytelling on your smartphone or tablet. The NDTV app. News that matters to you. to NDTV Auto. I'm here in Jaipur for Volkswagen brand conference and they have made a slew of announcements here. Let's talk more about them with Mr. Ashish Gupta, brand director, Volkswagen India. You know, you have uh, again changed the lineup of uh, Tygun. Uh, what was the purpose behind it and uh, uh, will that make things simpler for people? No, I think, you know, uh, the endeavor has been, and if you, you know, I take back, uh, take you back two years when we introduced the Taigo and we introduced it on two line structure, the dynamic line, which was basically based on the one liter and the performance line, which were based, which was based on the 1.5 liter. Over the period of time, what we have also realized is that customers are not differentiated by, you know, engine types. Customers are more and more moving towards style differentiation, you know. I, what kind of a style appeals to me and what kind of a uh, you know style appeal does not appeal to me or appeals to another set of customers so the endeavor this time has been to now uh, put our line structure in place uh, to appeal to style more than you know the, the differentiation by the engine line so that's what we have done so now we have the chrome line which is more elegant you know for the customers who like that kind of a uh, uh, design language available both on the 1.5 and the 1 liter and then the sporty look with more black uh, themed exterior and interior elements which appeals to customer who are looking for more sporty rugged kind of an appeal that uh, appeals to them so that's why today we have launched the GT plus sport uh, on the Tygoon and also the GT line which actually brings the GTness of our car. Welcome back. Now an exclusive interview and meet the BJP's key man in Kerala, Surendra, who is the Kerala BJP president, has been fielded against Rahul Gandhi in Vayanad. Mr. Surendran, the CPI has also fielded a candidate in Wynard. So it's, re it's not really an India bloc candidate versus the BJP. What is your arithmetic? One point I, am, uh, I would like to share with you that uh, Ani Raja, Madam Ani Raja is also a big leader. Lot of responsibility in all these states. She is traveling all over India. Rahul Gandhiji, all over India, even... Uh, abroad also is traveling. Why not do people actually wanted a local MP? I am from here. I am the local man. Both Rahul Gandhi ji and uh, 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 Ani Raja ji, they are in tourist visa. I have permanent visa in Vainad. I will work for uh, the people of Vainad. Will stay with them. Uh, will share their problems. Will solve their problems because. I am the soldier of Narendra Modi. Mo, me Modi ki sivai ho. Modi hai to mumki ke. I can do a, everything for the Vainadi people. So, last time election, how much vote we got? Last time election, how much vote Rahul Gandhi got is not a question. Politics is different. See, Amity constituency, how many decades Nehru family in their own hand and what happened to Amity now? So, log Amethi ke log pichle bar jo kiya, why karenge Vainad ke log is bar? This is my confidence and the people of Vainad is thinking like that. But BJP has been trying very hard, of course, to make inroads in Kerala, but you've got little success. Why do you think 2024 will be different from what it was in 2014 or 2019 or even the assembly elections which have happened in the last 10 years? See, I lost in Manjeshwaram Assembly for 89 votes, sirf 89 votes. I lost Patranditha Lok Sabha seat for 40,000 votes. No, we are the third front in Kerala. But see, now the Narendra Modi ji's acceptance and approval is growing day by day in Kerala. You see the ground reality. Today, my launching day in Calpetta. I just came today by 2 p.m. 
you see the crowd how much crowd in vainadu were there to receive me no i am i am sure that this is not the crowd for me it is the crowd for narendra modi so people trust is growing day by day regarding narendra modi ji people know that modi guarantee will be the main election point in kerala this time we will win many seats this time vainadu will be the one of them that in that seat after surviving on salt and water for 21 days noted climate activist education reformer and innovator sonam wangchuk ended his hunger strike to press for statehood for the ladakh and protection of the fragile himalayan ecology but insisted this was only the end of phase 1 and that his fight would continue when he had begun his fast on the 6th of march the reformer whose life has in, had inspired the character in the 2009 film three idiots had said he would continue it for 21 days and that it could be extended चूल्हे नमस्कार और सलाम आज मेरा इक्कीसवा दिन का अनशन खत्म हो रहा है और ये आंदोलन जारी रहेगा मगर उम्मीद मेरी ज्यादा ये है कि इतना सब हमें करने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी और इससे पहले ही हम उम्मीद करते हैं और विनती करते हैं कि सरकार हमारी आवाज सुने सरकार लोकतंत्र की आवाज सुने क्योंकि तीन लाख लोगों में से अगर साठ सत्तर हजार लोग पैदल चढ़ के आते हैं तो वो जमहूरियत में तो सबसे बड़ी आवाज है News now on the Baltimore bridge collapse and the Coast Guard has ended the search and rescue operation for six people who were on the Francis Scott Key bridge in Baltimore when it collapsed. Uh, the Maryland governor said that it was a heartbreaking conclusion after the Coast Guard ended the search and rescue operation for the six people uh, who were missing. The collapse took place after a massive container ship lost power early on Tuesday and crashed into the bridge sending people and vehicles into the river a maryland's governor said ahead of the collision the crew notified officials with a mayday call that allowed authorities to stop traffic before impact and likely saved numerous lives and so this evening at about uh, 7:30 we are going to suspend the active search and rescue efforts coast guard's not going away none of our partners are going away but we're just going to transition to a different phase US President Joe Biden also spoke uh, on the Baltimore accident saying there's no indication that it was an intentional act. Everything so far indicates that this was a terrible accident. At this time we have no other indication, no other reason to believe there's any intentional act here. Personnel on board the ship were able to alert the Maryland Department of Transportation that they had lost control of their vessel as you all know and reported. As a result, local authorities were able to close the bridge to traffic. before the bridge was struck which undoubtedly saved lives all right let's go across to vishal now for more so vishal uh, search and rescue has been called off and six people remain missing also what of the indian crew the 22 uh, crew uh, the uh, member crew on board that ship was all indian that is right gargi so uh, 22 uh, crew members they were all indians there but the point to be noted here is that uh, the two local pilots uh, who guided the ship through the choppy waters so uh, they were not indians they were from baltimore uh, so uh, they Uh, tried their best to uh, uh, you know take the ship out of the way of the bridge but that could not happen because the bridge was out of power for a while uh, there was also a generator they could not power, power that up so uh, uh, in in his speech uh, in his uh, rem- in his remarks uh, biden has said that uh, he sort of praised the indian sa- indian sailors they he said that uh, because of the mede issued by the uh, indian crew uh, the authorities on ground could close the bridge and so the uh, casualties are much less in number i mean the sick bodies are yet to be found six people are still missing so it remains to be seen uh, how long it it takes for the, uh, before the bodies are found uh, as we speak divers are searching for the bodies uh, the rescue operations have been called off but uh, in the next few hours uh, the authorities will conduct a thorough mapping of the whole area then we'll probably get to know about the location of the bodies All right uh, Vishal thanks so much for joining us uh, with those details and with that we'll slip into a short break more news and updates on the other side with Rishika stay tuned Who present Yeah I feel my Yeah I feel my
A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre, conversations that get to the core of the debate. Hello and welcome to NDTV Auto. What I have with me today is real special. It is the latest EV from Audi, Q6. What's special about it is it's based on a completely new platform, PPE, Premium Platform Electric. This platform Audi has developed for their electric vehicles and it has a lot to offer. <laughs> company says the new platform PPE helps Audi Q6 e-tron achieve 30% less energy consumption with 33% better system performance. With the Q6, Audi is also introducing its electronic architecture E3 1.2 which allows customers to experience digitalization directly in the vehicle. Making Audi Q6 e-tron a truly tech marvel. So here it is, all that you need to know about Q6 e-tron. Audi Q6 e-tron is the upcoming EV from Audi stable and is expected to come to Indian shores by the end of this year. International launch is expected in second half of this year. It is a 4.7 meter SUV which will occupy the space between Q4 and Q8 e-tron. It will come in two variants, Q6 e-tron Quattro and the more powerful SQ6 e-tron. What we have today with us is the S variant. What I want to show you the first in the look of Audi Q6 are these DRLs. They are matrix LED DRLs with active signature. That means you can change the pattern that gets projected from these DRLs and they also move while the car is on the move. That means you can actually have an active DRL. And I believe this feature is the highlight of Audi's upcoming baby. Up front is the grill. Now what I want to show you is this single frame grill. Good afternoon and welcome. You're watching NDTV 24-7. I'm Rishika Barwa. Let's get you the top headlines. We're tracking at this hour. There's been a massive encounter that we're reporting on in Chhattisgarh where six Maoists have been killed. The encounter has taken place in the Bijapur district of the state where Maoists allegedly killed three villagers on Holi. And well, the battle 2024 heating up. It's the last day of nominations for phase one of the Lok Sabha polls. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari filed his nomination from Nagpur amid a massive show of strength by roadshow. Tamil Nadu BJP President Anna Malai filed nominations as well. DMK leader Dhanidhi Maran filed papers from Chennai. And Arvind Kejriwal has moved the High Court against his arrest. The hearing is currently underway. The Enforcement Directorate has sought three weeks' time for a detailed reply. Kejriwal's plea states that these are just dealing tactics by the ED. Meanwhile, a fiery session underway in the Delhi Assembly. This is the first session after Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's arrest. The Delhi BJP chief has demanded a probe into Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's orders from jail. Says all these orders need to be looked at. And in Maharashtra, Prakash Ambedkar has decided to go it solo in the elections. Uh, the VBA has decide, declared its first list of candidates for the upcoming elections. While Prakash Ambedkar himself will be contesting from Akola, they've decided to support the Congress candidate in Nagpur. NI raids in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu in connection with the Bengaluru Rameshwaram Cafe blast case. Welcome back. While, of course, the Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has moved the Delhi High Court against his detention by the Enforcement Directorate, his wife Sunita Kejriwal is at the moment. Let's listen in. Who is so called Sharab Ghutale ka paisa dhund rahe hain? Abhi ta kisi bhi raid mein ek paisa nahi mila. Manish ji ki yaha raid maari. Sanjay Singh ji ki yaha raid maari. 
सत्यन जैन जी की यहां रेड मारी एक भी पैसा नहीं मिला हमारे यहां रेड मारी मात्र तिहत्तर हजार रुपए मिले तो वो इस सो कॉल शराब घोटाले का पैसा है कहा अरविंद जी ने कहा है कि इसका खुलासा वे 28 मार्च को कोर्ट के सामने करेंगे सारे देश को सच सच बताएंगे कि इस सो कॉल्ड शराब घोटाले का पैसा है कहा उसका सबूत भी देंगे अरविंद जी बहुत सच्चे देशभक्त निडर और साहसी व्यक्ति हैं उनकी लंबी आयु सेहत और सफलता की कामना करना उन्होंने कहा है मेरा शरीर जेल में है लेकिन आत्मा आप सब के बीच है आंखें बंद करो मुझे अपने आसपास महसूस करोगे जय हिंद All right, so that was uh, the Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's wife, in fact, announcing that he has decided to make a quote-unquote uh, disclosure as far as the liquor policy case is concerned in the court tomorrow. Remember, the ED has sought uh, his custody till the 28th of March, which is tomorrow. There's a bail hearing underway in the Delhi High Court today. Uh, Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's wife there briefing the press uh, regarding the fact that he is innocent of course that's what his wife has maintained she's questioned the agencies on uh, the money trail as far as the liquor policy case is concerned saying that there were raids that took place at Manish Sisodia's residence at Sanjay Singh's residence and at Arvind Kejriwal's residence but no money was found questioning the probe agency as to where is the money trail on the basis of which the Ahmadmi party leaders are in the enforcement directorate custody we're going to continue to track the details of the story very closely Meanwhile, uh, the other big news that we're tracking from Chhattisgarh, where an encounter is taking place between the police forces, security agencies, as well as uh, the Maoists. News is coming in that there are at least six uh, Maoists who believe to have been killed in the encounter. The encounter is over, but the search operation in the area continues. Based on the input of um, what we're learning right now, these are the Maoists who allegedly killed three villagers in Basagoda on the day of Holi. After this killing, a joint team of the DRG, the CRPF, as well as Cobra personnel had in fact carried out an encounter in which six Maoists are believed to have died. मुठभेड़ में छह नक्सलियों के शव बरामद हुए हैं कुछ परसों जो तीन ग्रामीणों की हत्या नक्सलियों ने कर दी थी उसी के सर्चिंग में टीम गई हुई थी और उस मुठभेड़ में छह नक्सलियों के शव बरामद हुए हैं ये कंफर्मेशन आ चुका है। Let's go right across to NDTV's Zulfikar joining us for the very latest. Zulfikar, uh, what more information can you give us about this encounter? Uh, this encounter uh, has been taken place uh, at uh, around 9 a.m. in the morning uh, when the security forces uh, uh, advancing in uh, uh, in uh, Bijapur's Basagoda area. Meanwhile, fire occurred from the Maoist side and uh, uh, security forces uh, retaliated and uh, uh, continuously firing uh, uh, from the security forces. So in uh, this encounter, six Maoists has been killed till uh, now and uh, security forces uh, said that uh, uh, Deputy Commander Nagesh and uh, his wife also has been killed in this encounter. And uh, where the uh, encounter uh, took place, uh, this place is uh, uh, where uh, day before uh, uh, Holi, uh, three uh, uh, villagers has been killed by the Maoist uh, 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 because of uh, they were uh, uh, claimed they, they were informing the police uh, of the Naxalites. So this uh, incident took place uh, in a uh, Basagoda area and uh, uh, police forces are saying that the uh, loss of the Maoist may increase and uh, we have to wait for that uh, after, uh, uh, after six uh, dead bodies had uh, recovered and uh, some Maoist had been seen, uh, seen in the uh, ground zero uh, uh, wounded and uh, updated information may come after some time. 
All right, Zulfikar, uh, thanks very much for joining us with that preliminary information. It's a big encounter in which uh, the security forces have claimed that six uh, Maoists have, in fact, been killed. These are the individuals believed to be behind the killing of those uh, three villagers on Huli. Uh, let's shift our focus now to more breaking news that is, in fact, coming in at the moment. Prime Minister Modi has, in fact, spoken with the BJP candidate Rajmata Amrita Roy. Uh, she is the candidate, remember, who is contesting against uh, TMC's Mahua Moitra from the Krishnanagar constituency in West Bengal. The Prime Minister is believed to have spoken to the candidate personally, uh, talking about how uh, the BJP is committed to uprooting corruption. Strong message being sent out there. Vasudha joins us for the very latest. So, uh, Vasudha, uh, th this is a very interesting piece of information coming in. Prime Minister Modi, they're personally phoning up the BJP's candidate who's taking on Mahua Moitra. Uh, yes, Rishika. So, you know, just a day after the Prime Minister called Rekha Patra, one of the Sandesh Thali victims, today he made a surprise call to Rajmata Amrita Roy. And remember, she's the contestant who is uh, opposing, who's contesting against Mahua Moitra, the TMC MP, and also expelled MP and also the TMC candidate for uh, uh, Krishna Nagar. Uh, Mahua Moitra, you know, was expelled from the parliament because of, uh, you know, on charges of illegal gratification and ethics panel had found her guilty, prima facie guilty of uh, wrongdoing when it comes to illegal gratification. She was found to be taking favors from a businessman. So uh, if you look at the conversation, the prime minister has made it very clear. He's talking to Rajmata uh, Amrita Roy. Amrita Roy is seen from the royal family of Krishnanagar. Krishnanagar still ha holds this very uh, lavish uh, annual uh, Durga Puja in the Rajpari. Krishna, uh, Krishna Chandra Roy was seen as somebody who was uh, a social reformer and this is something that the Prime Minister also talked about in his conversation with uh, the Rajmata. And Amrita Roy basically talked about how there are allegations against uh, even the uh, royal family saying that the royal family had supported Britishers and um, had gone against the, you know, against the sentiments of people of Bengal. Hmm. But in that conversation, the Prime Minister is making Amrita Roy understand that, uh, you know, TMC as part of the opposition will continue doing that and it is a duty to fight for the right. And he has actually a lot of respect for the royal family of Krishnanagar. All of this is very symbolic because yesterday the Prime Minister made two important calls. One to Professor Sarasir, who is fighting a very important and a difficult battle from the SE Reserve constituency of Alatur in Kerala and also to Rekha Patra. So this is one way of motivating women of uh, the BJP and also ensure that uh, uh, they put in their best efforts and that the party supports them in their endeavours. All right. And of course, Vasudha, very part of the, of the carefully curated strategy of making these phone calls is also to make it publicly known that the Prime Minister has personally reached out uh, to these candidates who are taking on heavyweights uh, like Mahua Moitra, who is, of course, the sitting MP from Krishnanagar. Thanks very much for joining us uh, with the very latest. We'll, of course, keep a close watch on all those political developments. Moving on, Arvind Kejriwal's case is in the Delhi High Court. He's, of course, appealed in the Delhi High Court against his arrest by the Enforcement Directorate. Uh, the Enforcement Directorate has, in, in fact, sought three weeks' time for a detailed reply. Kejriwal and his plea has called these delaying tactics. The hearing is underway in court. My colleague Ashwarya is joining us live from the Delhi High Court. He's been tracking closely the details of this story. So, Ashwarya, break it down for us. What's the latest as far as the court hearing on uh, uh, Delhi Chief Minister's bail plea is concerned? Well, first, it was Arvind Kejriwal who had filed uh, the bail plea in uh, the Delhi High Court stating that uh, this arrest is against uh, the basic fundamental rights and uh, the arrest is completely illegal and politically motivated. Uh, it was uh, early in the morning when Delhi High Court stated that uh, uh, it should be both the sides, uh, ED and Arvind Kejriwal's counsel, that should uh, uh, get an appropriate time to file in reply. The Enforcement Directorate sought at least three weeks' time to file a reply in the case to which it was opposed by Arvind Kejriwal's counsel, who was represented by Abhishek Manu Singhvi, stating that uh, uh, why this delay tactics just because tomorrow is the, uh, is the uh, ED custody city which is ending and uh, today only uh, the Delhi High Court should uh, uh, should uh, 
here on the release of Arvind Kejriwal. The basic uh, uh, points here being raised by uh, Abhishek Manu Singhvi, who is representing Arvind Kejriwal in this case, uh, stating that uh, uh, the Section 50 of PMLA was not followed. The statement was not recorded uh, by of Arvind Kejriwal. It is uh, it was the direct arrest that was made, which is uh, ultimately uh, uh, illegal according to the uh, uh, according to the PMLA, and therefore the reason perhaps uh, he should be granted. Uh, 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 urgent bill uh, uh, to which it is uh, the uh, Delhi, uh, it is the enforcement directorate who objected uh, this stating that uh, uh, you know all the compliances were done earlier before the arrest and therefore the reason perhaps uh, 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 you know there were seizures of documents and later uh, the, uh, the 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 undersigned was uh, uh, the, the, the 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 document was undersigned by Arvind Kejriwal and uh, all of uh, the uh, uh, the the governing uh, uh, sections. Uh, under which Arvind Kejriwal was arrested. He was informed uh, prior to his arrest as well. Uh, it is uh, Abhishek Manu Singhvi who has also stated in the court that uh, uh, without any statements being recorded, Arvind Kejriwal was arrested. This is for the first time when any sitting chief minister uh, was arrested, completely politically motivated, and therefore the reason perhaps uh, he needs to be heard. Uh, uh, the hearing is currently underway. Uh, whether Arvind Kejriwal's plea, which says that he should get uh, urgent relief from the Delhi High Court on uh, the arrest made by enforcement directorate, that happens or yes. not, is something that remains to be seen. But hearing continues in the Delhi High Court. All right. The hearing there continues in the Delhi High Court. And while there is a hearing underway in the Delhi High Court, there's high drama on the floor of the Delhi Assembly. The session today is the first after Chief Minister Kejriwal's arrest. Ahead of the session, the BJP, of course, had demanded a probe into Chief Minister's orders from jail. Uh, the Assembly session uh, went off to a very fiery start, after which it has, in fact, been adjourned till Monday, is what we are learning now. Uh, the ED, remember, meanwhile, in the, Supreme, in, the in the Delhi High Court, has sought three days' time, uh, has sought uh, three weeks' time to actually reply uh, to uh, that bail plea. Um, let's just listen in to uh, the AAP leader, Atishi, and what she had to say um, during the session. आप एक एक करके विपक्ष के सारे नेताओं को जेल में डाल दोगे आप सबके बैंक अकाउंट फ्रीज कर दोगे आप सबके पार्टी ऑफिस सील कर दोगे चुनाव की घोषणा के बाद तो अगर आप विपक्ष पे इस तरह से हमला करेंगे तो विपक्ष चुनाव कैसे लड़ेगा और अगर विपक्ष चुनाव नहीं लड़ सकता तो इस देश में लोकतंत्र कैसा बचा देखिए ये क्या विडंबना है इलेक्शन कमीशन जो एक नॉन पार्टिसन बॉडी होती है विपक्ष के राज्यों में होम सेक्रेटरी बदल देती है डीजीपी बदल देती है सारे अफसरों को बदल देती है लेकिन ईडी सीबीआई और इनकम टैक्स के अध्यक्ष नहीं बदल सकती जब तक चुनाव नहीं होता है क्यों इन इंस्टीट्यूशंस के क्यों इन एजेंसीज के अध्यक्ष नहीं बदले जाते जब यह साफ है कि इनको राजनीतिक तौर पर इस्तेमाल किया जा रहा है सीधा सा साफ है हमारी मांग है कि अरविंद केजरीवाल भ्रष्टाचारी हैं उन्होंने चोरी की है दिल्ली को लूटा है उन्हें इस्तीफा देना चाहिए आम आदमी पार्टी चोरों को बचाने का काम कर रही है ये बुनियादी फर्क है दोनों में पर हमारी जो लड़ाई है दिल्ली की जनता की लड़ाई है दिल्ली की जनता को लूटने का काम अरविंद केजरीवाल ने किया है अब ये चीज़ें इस्टेब्लिश हो रही हैं हिरासत में एक आदमी जो हिरासत में है उसको मुख्यमंत्री बनाए रखना है कहाँ की नैतिकता है आम आदमी पार्टी को सोचना चाहिए और खुद उन्हें अरविंद केजरीवाल को त्याग पत्र देना चाहिए दिल्ली की चिंता अगर आठ नौ साल की होती तो अभी ये फर्जी लेटर निकालने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ती all right, so the protest there continues with the Ahmadmi Party leaders all dressed in uh, yellow, in fact, protesting outside the Delhi Assembly and uh, the BJP, of course, demanding a probe there into all of the orders that the Delhi Chief Minister is passing, sitting in jail. Remember, Arvind Kejriwal was arrested on the 21st of March in connection with the Delhi liquor policy case. His wife, addressing a press conference just a short while ago, has questioned where is the money on the basis of which the Delhi Chief Minister has, in fact, been arrested. This, of course, is the dramatic scenes at the Delhi Assembly while there is a hearing underway in the Delhi High Court and Arvind Kejriwal's bail petition. So far, the enforcement director has sought three weeks' time to file a detailed reply. And, uh, uh, you know, the Arvind Kejriwal side, his lawyers, of course, have called this a delaying tactic. Let's go across to NDTV's Ishika. She's joining us live from outside of the Delhi Assembly. So, Ishika, what's happening where you are? Well, here it certainly looks like a day of drama is what here was going on because let me tell you that we are currently standing outside the Delhi Vidhan Sabha. Remember, today the Delhi Assembly session was in fact called 
for the essential, you know, for the essential healthcare services, shortage in that, but certainly it turned out to be, uh, you know, it turned out to be a drama full day because remember, inside the Aam Aadmi Party MLAs, they burned the effigy of what they called, you know, uh, a gundagardi of the BJP. And because of that, let me show you that this is the security deployment that has been done because, you know, while the Aam Aadmi Party MLAs were protesting inside just a while ago, in fact, you know, there were certain BJP workers also who came here and who tried to do a dharna pradarshan here, but they, they were very few in number. All of them were detained, but you can certainly see uh, because of that, now the security arrangements here have been tightened. The barricades have been put up and you can clearly, in fact, I'll ask my cameraman to pan around and show you the heavy police deployment that now has been done. In fact, you know, just outside the Delhi Assembly. So certainly while the hearing continues, you know, in the High Court for Arvind Kejival, whether or not will he get relief, that certainly remains to be seen. But here also, so here at the Vidhan Sabha, it certainly looks like a day full of drama. Remember uh, that, in fact, the House has now been adjourned. It will be called again on Monday. Uh, but certainly now you can look at the security arrangements that has been done because two drama, two protests, two dharna pradarshan were held today. One inside the Vidhan Sabha by the Aam Aadmi Party MLAs where they burnt the effigy and outside when after the effigies were burnt, Few of the BJP workers came here to protest and they were detained. But certainly, you can see the police deployment has been tightened around the area. Over to you. All right, so heightened uh, police deployment there at the Delhi Assembly. This after the Assembly session was adjourned. And the protest, uh, the protest versus protest rather, continues with uh, uh, the Aam Aadmi Party MLAs there protesting Arvind K. Jival's arrest outside the session, calling this a throttling of democracy ahead of the elections. And uh, the BJP in turn lashing out at the Aam Aadmi Party saying they will continue to protest, demanding the resignation of the Delhi Chief Minister and that all of the orders that he's issuing as Chief Minister continuing to issue as chief minister from jail need to be closely analyzed. So the battle between the Amadmi Party and the BJP, they're only intensifying this, of course, as that bail hearing is underway in the High Court. We'll get you all the latest updates on this story and a lot more on the other side of what's going to be a short break. Stay with us. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. One day, this lecture hall will be made of code and driverless cars would be trapped in intersections. But even in this maze of the future, you can't wish away health. It's time to become more resilient. Ten years of Banega Swast India, we have grown and achieved so many milestones. And now I have a plan to beat the urgency, to stop breathing with difficulty, to relieve getting choked with inactivity. Energize our government, our environment, our society and ourselves. Everyone, everywhere, every day. Banega Swast India. One World Hygiene. Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachur. NDTV. Big Exclusive. We provide justice to common citizens. And there is no case which is too small even for the highest court of the nation. CGI ka kaam karne ka alag andaz. Sometimes I get emails even in the middle of the night. And I'm always available to answer those emails. 25 crore final judgments and orders. This data is available online. As on 29th February 2024, 3.09 crore cases have been heard on video conferencing mode. Chief Justice Chandrachur se jodi ansuni baate. Saadhi teen baje subhe mera din shuru ho jata hai. My best friend, who is my wife, Kalpana. Both of us are vegans. Khabro mein aapka bharosa. NDTV.
आईपीएल का हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एनडी टीवी पर फ्रेंड्स इट्स टाइम नाउ फॉर माय फेवरेट सेक्शन अबाउट दिस एपिसोड बिकॉज हम हमेशा जब क्यू एन ए की बात करते हैं सो आस्क टीजी इज द थिंग जो मुझे बहुत Welcome back. The other big story that we're tracking for you today. It is the last day of nominations for phase one of the general elections, and we have uh, high-profile candidates from uh, all across the country who have, in fact, filed their nominations earlier today. We got visuals of Nitin Gadkari offering prayers at his residence and then holding a massive roadshow in Nagpur when he filed his nomination. The Tamil Nadu BJP president Anna Malai has filed his nomination papers from Coimbatore. DMK leader Dayanidhi Maran has also filed his nomination from Chennai, which is going to be an interesting battle between the AIA DMK allies. Uh, the DMK as well as the BJP. Well, to break down the political developments, we have uh, Sam Daniel joining us as well as uh, Radhika joining us. Sam, to you first. Uh, so we saw Anamalai there filing his nominations, as did Dayanidhi Maran. Uh, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see this time. There's going to be a lot of focus on how South states are going to perform, given the kind of very coordinated, concerted effort by the BJP to make inroads in states. Uh, where they where they don't necessarily have the numbers. It will be a fascinating Lok Sabha election, certainly, Rishika. Tamil Nadu is overlooking a four-cornered contest, but a keenly watched triangular contest between the ruling DMK, the opposition, the AIA DMK, and the BGP, which is trying to make inroads in this Dravidian heartland. Today being the last day of the filing of nominations, we had a few high-profile uh, nominations, including former telecom minister and sitting MP from Chennai Central constituency Dayanidhi Maran and BGP State Chief Anamale uh, filing his nomination for the Coimbatore Lok Sabha constituency. And these are again interesting battles. In Chennai, Dayanidhi is trying for a fourth term and he is facing the DMDK's Partha Sarathi, a former MLA, and uh, BGP's Vinoj Selvam, a firebrand youth wing leader. And uh, in in increasingly, the uh, battle has turned into a battle between the ruling DMK and the BJP because both the ruling DMK and the opposition, the AIA DMK, are opposing BJP. And technically, the DMK has retained its formidable alliance of the 2019 polls it swept and it hopes it will be able to repeat. On the other hand, the AIA DMK is hoping that this would be seen as a referendum on the performance of the ruling DMK in Tamil Nadu. It feels there is severe anti-incumbency, which it will help, uh, which which will help to for the party to win. And the BJP, which otherwise has a very negligible presence, uh, tries to make a splash in this Dravidian heartland. Uh, Anomaly, the party's chief, who lost assembly polls last time, is now trying to make an entry to the parliament from the Coimbatore Lok Sabha seat where, comparatively, the party has a stronger presence. This, the disadvantage for the BJP is that the AIADMK is no longer an ally and it has only smaller allies like the PMK. But the party hopes Prime Minister Modi's uh, frequent visits to Tamil Nadu and Anomaly's recent Pathi Yatra will help them to expand their present negligible footprint and possibly win some seats in the state as well. But the key fight will be between the ruling DMK and the AIADMK. Rishika. All right, well, it's going to be interesting to see how that battle plays out. Sam, thanks very much for joining us. But last day of Phase 1 nominations, and we're also getting news at the moment from Uttar Pradesh, where Jitin Prasad has filed his nomination papers from Pilibi. This is an interesting constituency to watch out for, given the fact that it has been Menika Gandhi and Varun Gandhi's stronghold. Varun Gandhi, of course, has been denied a ticket from Pilibi. He's a sitting member of parliament, and the BJP has given this ticket to Jitin Prasad. Uh, formerly with the Congress who joined the BJP ahead of the UP elections. Well, we'll watch out for all the latest political action. Short break here for news on the other side.
So friends, next I have is this uh, shiny new device coming straight from the Realme factory. This is the all new Realme Narzo 70 Pro 5G. And why am I saying shiny? Because see, of course it's shiny, the way it looks. Even the frame is very shiny. At the same time, this phone really shines bright when we look at its features. Because here is a lot of interesting things Realme has packed. What we have is a Sony AMX 890 sensor, 50 megapixels. A primary camera that has OIS. At the same time, inside the phone is really packed with features. In fact, हम यहाँ पे अभी इस फोन में gestures से इसको control कर सकते हैं, because this has got something that Realme calls air gestures. So अगर आप देखो इसको and have a closer look about how this Realme Narzo 70 Pro really is, I would say very interesting mid-range smartphone coming straight from Realme. Finally, the wait is over. Realme's latest hotshot, the Narzo 70 Pro 5G, finally India में launch हो गया है. This phone is packed with amazing features that will make you go wow. इस फोन में है एक rainwater smart Smart touch feature. This means no more tensions about phone usage in a light drizzle. The powerful MediaTek Dimensity chipset lets you game, multitask, and do everything else at lightning speed. The 5000 mAh battery and SuperVOOC fast charging will get you back in action in no time. The phone's horizon glass design gives it a super premium, head turning look. Realme has kept it affordable. Narzo 70 Pro 5G starts at just Rs 18,999. You can grab it in stylish glass green and glass gold colors from March 22nd on Amazon and the Realme website. With its awesome display, camera and overall performance, the Realme Narzo 70 Pro 5G is a total Pesa Vasool deal. If you're looking for a smartphone that's powerful, stylish and affordable, this is it. हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एनडी टीवी पर Welcome to NDTV Auto. I'm here in Jaipur for Volkswagen brand conference and they have made a slew of announcements here. Let's talk more about them with Mr. Ashish Gupta, brand director, Volkswagen India. You know, you have uh, again changed the lineup of uh, Tygun. Uh, what was the purpose behind it and uh, uh, will that make things simpler for people? No, I think, you know, uh, the endeavor has been, and if you, you know, I take back, uh, take you back two years when we introduced the Taigo and we introduced it on two line structure, the dynamic line, which was basically based on the one liter and the performance line, which were based, which was based on the 1.5 liter. Over the period of time, what we have also realized is that customers are not differentiated by, you know, engine types. Customers are more and more moving towards style differentiation, you know. I, what kind of a style appeals to me and what kind of a uh, you know style appeal does not appeal to me or appeals to another set of customers so the endeavor this time six maoists have been killed in a police encounter in chhattisgarh's bijapur district these are maoists who allegedly killed three villagers on holi Last day of nominations for phase one of the Lok Sabha elections, Nitin Gadkari files his nomination from stronghold of Nagpur, Tamil Nadu BJP president. Anna Malai files his nomination from Coimbatore, part of the BJP South Push. This as three-time MP DMK leader Dhanidhi Maran files nomination papers from Chennai, seeking a fourth term. Arvind Kejriwal has uh, put in a bail plea in the Delhi High Court against his arrest by the Enforcement Directorate. This is the probe agency. Seeks three weeks' time for a detailed reply. Arvind Kejriwal calls this a delaying tactic. High drama in the Delhi Assembly. The session has been adjourned. It was the first session after Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's arrest. The Delhi BJP has protested, demanded a probe into Arvind Kejriwal's orders from jail. 
Big developments in Maharashtra as Prakash Ambedkar has decided to go with solo in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections as they declare the first list of candidates. Prakash Ambedkar will contest from Akola but will support the candidature of the Congress from Nagpur against Nitin Gadkari. NIA raids in Karnataka and uh, Tamil Nadu in the Bengaluru blast case. Welcome back. The battle for 2024 is heating up today. Remember, it's the last day for candidates of phase one to file their nominations. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has, in fact, called up the Bengal BJP candidate Rajmata Amrita Roy, who is contesting against TMC's Mahua Moitra from the Krishnanagar constituency. And an audio file of that conversation has, in fact, been made public. Let's listen in to what the Prime Minister told the candidate. Amruta ji, namaskar. Namaskar, Modi ji. Aap to mohat abhari hu. Aap mujhe chance diye hai loko ki seva karne ke liye. Ham 100% koshish karenge. Aapka chunav abhiyan kaisa chal raha hai? Abhi to ham nikle hai. To ek BJP ko unka pita ka dehant ho gaya. Ham idhar hi aaye hue hai. To abhi wapas ja ke ham prachar mein hi niklenge. Amruta ji. आप महाराजा कृष्णराय चंची की विरासत को आगे ले जा रही है एक बात आपको हम शेयर करना चाहेंगे हम क्या कह सकते हैं जी जी जरूर मुझे अच्छा लगेगा ये जो महाराजा कृष्ण चंद्र का हम शामिली है तो उसका भी ये लोग विरोध कर रहे हैं क्या बोल रहे हैं कि वो ब्रिटिश के साथ साथ दिया था फिर वो मैंने हम लोगों को गद्दार समझते हैं क्यों क्या वो नहीं बोल रहा है इतना जमीन दान किया इतना सब लोगों के लिए किया भलाई के लिए किया वो सब नहीं बोल रहे हैं लेकिन क्या बोल रहे हैं तो हम बोला की क्यों किया ऐसा महाराजा कृष्ण चंद्र अगर नहीं करते तो हमारा सनातन धर्म तो पूरा खत्म हो जाता है कि नहीं तो वो बात है क्योंकि तब का वो जो नवाब थे सिराज उद्दौला तो वो तो बहुत अत्याचारी भ्रष्टाचारी थे तो उसी लिए उन्होंने तो अकेला नहीं किया बहुत सारे राजाओं के मिलन हुआ उसके बाद सभी ने किया जगत सेठ भी थे और और राजाओं थे तो उसी सभी के मेहनत से ये काम सफल हुआ तो अगर नहीं होता आज हम हिंदू नहीं रह पाते हमारा भाषा दूसरा होता हमारा वेशभूषा एकदम अलग होता और सभी अलग हो जाते हम तो दूसरों के अधीन रहते ना यही बात है अमृता जी बचपन में हमारे यहाँ हम लोगों को जो पढ़ाया जाता था उसमें कृष्णचंद राय की समाज सुधार का काम बंगाल के विकास का काम बंगाल के विकास के मॉडल ये सब सुनने को मिलता था बचपन में अब देखिए ये वोट बैंक की राजनीति करने वाले लोग हैं तो बहुत ही अनाप शनाप आरोप लगाएंगे और 300 साल पहले की घटना निकालेंगे 200 साल पहले की घटना निकालेंगे और बदनाम करने का प्रयास करेंगे ये खुद अपने जो वर्तमान पाप है उसको छिपाने के लिए वो ऐसी चीजें ढूंढते रहते हैं लेकिन जब भगवान राम की बात आती है भगवान राम की बात आती है तो वो कहते हैं कि सबूत कहाँ है इतनी पुरानी बात क्यों निकालते हो लेकिन जब कृष्णचंद्र राय की बात आती है तो वो तुरंत निकालते हैं तो इस प्रकार से उनके दोगलापन होता है और आपको इसका बिल्कुल मन में प्रेशर नहीं लेना चाहिए आपने तो बंगाल का उज्जवल भविष्य और आपका हाँ। स्वयं का जीवन भी लोगों के लिए रहा है हाँ जी। और आपके सामने बंगाल की विरासत को बचाने की भी चुनौती है और आप इसे कैसे देख रही हैं आप हम पॉजिटिवली देख रहे हैं हमारा लड़ाई जो है लोगों का सेवा के लिए है प्रोडक्शन हटाने के लिए है और वंचित लोगों के उपकार में आने के लिए है all right vasudha joins us with the very latest vasudha put these developments in context for the benefit of our viewers prime minister modi there having a rather detailed conversation with the candidate the bjp has picked to take on mahua moitra from krishnanagar and no surprises there that we have that full conversation to play out uh, before our viewers 
That's right, uh, Rishika. You know, in fact, uh, it's quite symbolic that the Prime Minister chose to call Rajmata Amrita Roy. She joined the BJP recently. She's contesting against Mahua Moitra, an expelled TMC MP, who was expelled uh, because of very specific reasons. An ethics committee found her uh, guilty of Ill illegal uh, gratification of taking favours in both cash and kind uh, from a businessman in lieu of asking questions. So there was a lot of controversy over that. And she was found guilty prima facie of uh, this kind of wrongdoing. So that also raised a lot of questions on the propriety and moral conduct of MPs and uh, lawmakers. So the Prime Minister has chosen to speak to Amrita Roy. She belongs to the feudal family, the Rajkharana of Krishnanagar. In fact, Krishnanagar still holds an annual Durga Puja affair, which is quite famous. In fact, uh, the Prime Minister spoke about uh, the Maharaja of uh, uh, Krishnanagar, uh, Krishnachandra Roy, and he talked about what a social reformer he was. In fact, uh, even Amrita Roy went on to say that uh, the TMC is targeting her, saying that the royal family was always uh, in support of the Britishers. And she makes a point that it was uh, to actually, you know, undermine the impact of Sirajud Daula, who was also the Nawab, then that the royal family had to do this. This, uh, you know, it was fairly a long conversation because it went for over eight minutes and the Prime Minister made an important point there that the money of the poor is going back, uh, money of the poor is going back uh, to the poor. Remember, uh, West Bengal has also seen a lot of uh, raids and um, scrutiny of investigating agencies. At yes. least uh, three to four leaders of TMC are also, you know, behind bars. And more importantly, Rekha Patra was also called by the PM yesterday. She is a Sandesh Kali sexual assault uh, victim survivor. Yes. And also Professor Sarasu, who's fighting a very different, dif difficult battle in uh, Kerala. So clearly these are outsiders in the party. The Prime Minister's way of uh, telling his own party members to be motivating of them and also to motivate them. This is one kind of... Uh, and just sending out a strong message calls. to the people, isn't it, Vasudha? Like I said, by making these conversations public, uh, by making sure that the media is reporting on these personal interactions that the Prime Minister is having with the select few candidates. He is throwing his weight behind the candidates who are taking on the adversaries of the BJP, like Mah Mahua Moitra, like Rahul Gandhi, like, of course, you know, how the BJP specked its entire Bengal campaign on Sandesh Khali. Prime Minister yesterday spoke with the candidate from Sandesh Khali. So, all of this part of the concerted election campaign strategy of the BJP uh, going forward in the election. Thanks very much, Vasudha, for joining us uh, with the details of that story. Like I said, it is the last day of filing nominations today, and it is a day of hectic political developments with the UBT Sena now releasing its first list of 17 candidates. Anil Desai is going to contest from Mumbai South Central, um, from Mumbai Northwest seat. Uh, this was a massive tussle between Amol Kiritkar, who's now been given the seat. But remember, it was Congress's Sanjay Nirupam who was eyeing the Mumbai Northwest seat. There was a huge NCP Sena battle also over the Mumbai Northeast seat, which has now been given to the Shiv Sena. So the, it has the UBT Sena essentially has announced candidates across Mumbai. Now this has indeed ruffled some feathers. Sanjay Nirupam, in fact, addressing a press conference as we speak, has questioned whether the Congress has kneeled down before the UBT Sena as far as this first list is concerned. They've also uh, continued to retain several existing MPs. So, you know, the big question here is, is all really well within the Mahavikas Agadi Alliance, given the fact that only the UBT Sena has released its first list? We're still waiting to hear from the Sharad Pawar camp as well as the Congress camp. Let's uh, first listen in to what Sanjay Raut has had to say. आज हमने शिवसेना की तरफ से 22 उम्मीदवारों की घोषणा की है। 17, 17 हम 22 लड़ेंगे और 17 की घोषणा की है। आपको पता होगा इस मुंबई है और महाराष्ट्र के बहुत से इलाके से हमने आज उम्मीदवार घोषित किए हैं। All right, uh, Radhika joins us now with the very latest. Radhika, clearly this first list has ruffled many of feathers. We are getting in news flashes on what uh, Sanjay Nirupam is in fact saying at that press conference. He's saying that he's urged the Congress leadership to intervene and break the alliance given the fact that the UBT Sena has really come out and declared candidates for 17 seats and some of the key contest seats, which was three seats in Mumbai where there was a conflict with NCP and Congress and also crucially that Sangli seat which uh, the Congress was eyeing. 
Absolutely clear conflict and tussle within MVA as uh, UBT Sena releases its uh, first list of 17 candidates. And as you mentioned, yes, this has ruffled some feathers within the Congress as well as within NCP itself. In fact, uh, as far as Congress is concerned, it had been vying for uh, Sangli. Sangli is the stronghold of Congress and they wanted that seat, uh, which is why multiple meetings had taken place over Sangli as well as Bhivandi. But despite that, today, uh, UBT Sena going ahead and fielding its candidate from Sangli constituency. Now, ap uh, apart from that, of course, as far as Mumbai is concerned, four seats uh, being taken by uh, Sena and of those, of course, uh, be it Northwest Mumbai or South Central Mumbai, both were being uh, uh, sort of eyed by the Congress, which is why Sanjay Nirupam taking that press conference, making it uh, uh, obvious or making it uh, uh, clear that uh, he's unhappy with this arrangement and also calling on uh, Congress as well as Sena and that Sena has all said to destroy Congress is something that he'd been saying time and again and once again he's taken that press conference because he had been eyeing a Northwest uh, constituency. It was uh, uh, in fact his strong hold for quite some time until he lost uh, elections last year now um, those are two seats as far as uh, uh, the dispute between Congress and Sena is concerned three uh, including Sangli and as far as the Mumbai Northwest seat goes Congress uh, Mumbai uh, Northeast I beg your pardon goes uh, the dispute is between NCP and Sena we just saw some of the NCP workers here in fact protesting uh, that this seat has gone to Sanjay Patil of uh, the Sena so clearly some of the seats has uh, in fact have ruffled Radhika we're going to interrupt you right there because Congress leader Sanjay Nirupam who was denied that seat from Mumbai West in fact is addressing the media like I said let's just dip in and listen in well, we'll try and replay that conversation, but Sanjay Nirupam, remember, was eyeing the Mumbai Northwest seat. He'd made his ambition pretty clear. That seat has also gone to the Shiv Sena. There is now clear rumblings within the Mahavika Sagari after the Uddhav Thakre Sena has announced its list of this of 17 candidates, announcing candidates across all seats in Mumbai, prompting Sanjay Nirupam, who was eyeing the Mumbai Northwest seat, to ask whether the Congress has been forced to quote unquote kneel down. In that press conference that has just concluded, uh, our team of reporters who were there have in fact flagged that he said the Congress is making a mistake. Let's just try and listen in to what he said. हाँ तो आपने देखा होगा मैंने प्रारंभ में ही कहा कि जिस तरीके से मुंबई की छह में से पांच सीटें शिवसेना के हवाले कर दी गई वो निश्चित तौर पर कांग्रेस पार्टी को मुंबई में पूरी तरह से दफन करने का एक कार्यक्रम है एक जमाना था मुंबई में पांच पांच एमपी कांग्रेस के हुआ करते थे एक एनसीपी का हुआ करता था एक जमाना था मुंबई से और जमाना कोई बहुत पुराना नहीं मैं ऐसा कोई हड़प्पा और मोहन जोदड़ो के जमाने की बात नहीं कर रहा हूँ आज आज दस साल बारह साल पहले की बात है तो कांग्रेस का एक बड़ा जबरदस्त जनाधार रहा है ऐसे में दक्षिण मध्य मुंबई उत्तर मध्य मुंबई और उत्तर पश्चिम मुंबई के लिए हमारा विशेष आग्रह था दक्षिण मुंबई के लिए भी विशेष आग्रह था लेकिन दक्षिण मुंबई में चुकी जो वहां का शिवसेना का सांसद है वो उद्धव गुट के साथ है इसलिए हमने वो आग्रह छोड़ दिया था लेकिन हमारा शुरू से आग्रह था कि आप 50-50 करिए तीन सीट हमारा तीन सीट आपका लेकिन जिस तरीके से शिवसेना ने जोर जबरदस्ती की है और एक तरह से कांग्रेस पार्टी को अपने घुटने पे लाके दे दिया है वह निश्चित तौर पर शिवसेना के पूरे नियत के ऊपर सवाल करने वाला है जो कांग्रेस का वोटर है वो कहाँ जाएगा कांग्रेस को जो वर्षों से लगातार वोट करते आए हैं क्या वो शिवसेना के इस हरकत के बाद शिवसेना के पास जाएंगे शिवसेना को वोट देंगे मुझे इस बारे में संदेह है बिल्कुल जब मैं जब मैं ये आह्वान कर रहा हूँ तो निश्चित तौर पर कांग्रेस का जो कैडर है जो मेरे से जुड़े हुए जो लोग हैं वो सारे के सारे लोग शिवसेना के इस कैडर का शिवसेना के इस उम्मीदवार का विरोध करेंगे और सिर्फ कैडर ही नहीं कांग्रेस से कार्यकर्ता नहीं कांग्रेस को मानने वाले मतदाता भी इस खिचड़ी चोर के लिए काम नहीं करेंगे उसको वोट नहीं देंगे ऐसी मैं घोषणा कर रहा हूं क्यों क्योंकि कांग्रेस का जो बड़ा वोट बैंक है 
वह माइग्रेंट लेबर वाला वोट बैंक है अब माइग्रेंट लेबर ने जो कोविड के जमाने में दुख दर्द झेला है उसको हम सब बहुत अच्छे ढंग से जानते हैं हम सब भूले नहीं है तो वो वो कहीं ना कहीं उनके दोस्त थे रिश्तेदार थे उनके पड़ोसी थे और उन उन लोगों के जीवन के साथ जिन्होंने खिलवाड़ किया उन लोगों के जो भोजन के साथ जिन्होंने दलाली खाई है भोजन में ऐसे व्यक्ति के लिए निश्चित तौर पर कांग्रेस से जुड़ा वोटर भी काम नहीं करेगा वोट नहीं देगा अभी अगले हफ्ते हम बता देंगे चुनाव लड़ने का तो पूरा इरादा है चुनाव नहीं लड़ेंगे तो जाएंगे कहा पांच साल घर पे बैठेंगे दो हजार उन्नीस से क्या ये लगातार जो बार्गेनिंग है कांग्रेस की वो खत्म होते जा रही है क्या 2019 में जब सरकार में भी आए तो कांग्रेस को तीसरे और दोयम दर्जे के सारे मंत्रालय और सीटें मिली उसके बाद से लगातार कांग्रेस को इग्नोर किया जाने लगा उसको खत्म करने की एक सोची समझी साजिश रची जा रही क्या देखिए अगर दो की बातें आपको याद है तो आपको ये बात भी याद होगी कि जब शिवसेना और कांग्रेस का अलायंस हो रहा था सबसे पहले मैंने विरोध किया और बहुत खुल के विरोध किया था और मैंने कहा था कि शिवसेना के साथ अलायंस करके गठबंधन करके युति करके आप अपने अपने आप को खत्म कर रहे हैं ये धीरे धीरे एक डी जेनरेशन की प्रक्रिया शुरू होगी आज पांच साल बाद बिल्कुल मुंबई में वही चीज दिख रहा है हमने कहा था शिवसेना के साथ अलायंस नहीं होना चाहिए कांग्रेस का आप हार गए कोई दिक्कत नहीं नए सिरे से मैदान में उतरिए और एक सशक्त विपक्ष की भूमिका निभाते हुए कांग्रेस को फिर से पूरे मुंबई में और महाराष्ट्र में खड़ा किया जा सकता है लेकिन हमारे कुछ लोग ऐसे थे जिनको सत्ता की मलाई चाहिए थी सत्ता में सत्ता को शेयर करना था और इस वजह से वो चले गए और उसका नतीजा सामने अभी अभी इनका पूछने अगर बाला साहब थोराज जी खुद नेगोशिएशन करने वाली टीम के एक सदस्य थे और अगर वो कह रहे हैं रीथिंग करना चाहिए मतलब उनकी बात भी नहीं सुनी गई तो जो नेगोशिएशन करने वाली जो टीम थी जब उनकी ही बात नहीं सुनी गई है तो निश्चित तौर पर हम सब फेल हो गए तो मैं भी यही कह रहा हूं कि शिवसेना को इतना इतना एक्सट्रीम स्टैंड नहीं लेना चाहिए इससे कांग्रेस का जबरदस्त नुकसान है और कांग्रेस के नेतृत्व का ध्यान आकर्षित करना चाहता हूं कि आप अभी भी इंटरवीन करिए नहीं तो अलायंस तोड़िए अगर पार्टी को बचाना है तो अलायंस तोड़िए और मैदान में उतरिए लेकिन आप शिवसेना के साथ अलायंस करके अपने आप को हमेशा के लिए खत्म करने का जो फैसला कर रहे हैं वो बहुत ही आत्मघाती है पूरे कांग्रेस पार्टी के लिए और इसका असर पूरे महाराष्ट्र भी पड़ेगा महाराष्ट्र से बाहर भी पड़ेगा और हमने एक एक व्यक्ति के ऊपर देखिए निश्चित तौर पर एक बार बात हो गए हो गए हो गए आप अशोक जब अशोक चौहान से मिले और उनसे मुलाकात हुई और बीजेपी में जाने के संकेत कुछ हैं आपके All right, so differences between the Mahavikas Agadi there out in the open after 17 candidates of the Uddhav Sena have been declared. Sanjay Nirupam raises the banner of revolt, hits out at the party, says it does appear that the Congress has been forced to kneel down. He said he is going to go ahead and contest the election, irrespective. Interesting political developments there. We'll get you all the latest on the other side of what's going to be a short break. This show isn't just about news from the southern states. It's one that looks at the rest of India and the world from a diverse South India point of view. Because NDTV has always taken the southern view seriously. The Southern View with Veera Raghav, only on NDTV 24/7.
much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. Hello and welcome to NDTV Auto. What I have with me today is real special. It is the latest EV from Audi, Q6. What's special about it is it's based on a completely new platform, PPE, Premium Platform Electric. This platform Audi has developed for their electric vehicles and it has a lot to offer. company says the new platform PPE helps Audi Q6 e-tron achieve 30% less energy consumption with 33% better system performance. With the Q6, Audi is also introducing its electronic architecture E3 1.2 which allows customers to experience digitalization directly in the vehicle, making Audi Q6 e-tron a truly tech marvel. So here it is, all that you need to know about Q6 e-tron. Audi Q6 e-tron is the upcoming EV from Audi stable and is expected to come to Indian shores by the end of this year. International launch is expected in second half of this year. It is a 4.7 meter SUV which will occupy the space between Q4 and Q8 e-tron. It will come in two variants, Q6 e-tron Quattro and the more powerful SQ6 e-tron. What we have today with us is the S variant. What I want to show you the first in the look of Audi Q6 are these DRLs. They are matrix LED DRLs with active signature. That means you can change the pattern that gets projected from these DRLs and they also move while the car is on the move. That means you can actually have an active DRL. And I believe this feature is the highlight of Audi's upcoming baby. Up front is the grill. Now what I want to show you is this single frame grill. Audi is calling it inverted single frame grill and it looks very interesting. It's all closed off but looks very nice with these piano black inserts given here and then we have seen these uh, very flattish Audi logo in other products but here there is a little bit of 3D element in the logo. Now you have to notice this very prominent shoulder line which goes all the way to the tail lamp. The rear looks quite interesting with its almost wrapped around feel to the All right, so after that uh, press conference by Sanjay and Anirupam, let's go across to my colleague Radhika, who's standing by. Radhika, you know, very interesting to see how the UBT Sena has come out, declared that list. Sharad Pawar is going to have a meeting today over, uh, you know, the seats that they have not announced. The Congress, of course, has gone ahead and announced a few seats on, on, on the key areas where apparently there is no conflict in the alliance. But now it raises several questions on, uh, you know, the MVA alliance and fissures that are emerging as, of course, political interests take precedence. Certainly, the list announced by Sena has led to a lot of uh, a displeasure among the allies. That's what we are seeing Sanjay Nirupam taking that press conference, making it very clear that Congress is, in fact, uh, bending over backwards to sort of... Uh, um, you know, accommodate these seats and to be okay with the seats that have been announced. In fact, uh, Sena announced four seats. We know for a fact that Congress wanting four seats from Mumbai. In fact, we know that Congress wanted the equal division when it came to Mumbai seats, but that did not happen. In fact, Northwest constituency from which, uh, uh, you know, Sanjay Nirupam usually fights uh, went to a Sena candidate. And this displeasure and discontentment that he's been expressing today, he had expressed in the past as well. He had been unhappy with the entire MV alliance. He'd been time and again saying that Sena is taking control over the entire alliance and Congress and Sena should ideally be getting equal seats before, uh, uh, you know, during uh, Lok Sabha elections. However, looks like Sena may announce 22 seats and Congress may just end up getting less than 15 seats. So, yes, clear displeasure among the allies, not just Congress, but also NCP. Well, absolutely. And, you know, big questions now will emerge on how this impacts the morale of the party cadre going into the elections as well. But 
parallelly, like you've been reporting, not all is well in the Mahayuti uh, because no NDA seats have been announced yet. There appears to be uh, a fair bit of tussle between the BJP, Shinde Sena and the NCP as well. Maharashtra, remember, is going to be a key battle to watch out for 48 seats there, the second largest state after Uttar Pradesh. And clearly, all not well among the now many stakeholders in the state. We'll track all those developments. Short break, more news on the upside. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. Tracking की बात से in fact याद आया guys did you know कि आप अब track कर सकते हैं about your contribution towards a healthier environment because अगर आप Uber use करते हैं तो I am sure आपको अभी पता होगा कि उसमें there is an option कि आप electric vehicles को book कर सकते हैं if you prefer going sustainable लेकिन अब यहाँ पे एक option आ गया है जहाँ पे आपको Uber दिखाता है कि आप क्या सेव कर रहे हैं कंपेयर टू अगर आप एक नॉर्मल व्हीकल में जाते हैं तो आप कितने कार्बन एमिशंस होने से रोक रहे हैं और वो आपको दिखाता है इन फॉर्म ऑफ ट्रीज बीइंग प्लांटेड तो कहीं ना कहीं ये एक अच्छी चीज है जहाँ पे यू कैन कीप ट्रैक ऑफ योर यू नो योर कंट्रीब्यूशन कि आप अपने डेली हैबिट्स में जब आप सुबह ऑफिस के लिए ऊबर ले रहे हैं जब आप शामों के बाहर जा रहे हैं अगर आप एक ईवी यूज़ करते हैं सो हाउ मच एसेंशियली आर यू कंट्रीब्यूटिंग kind of contribute towards the environment or you can clearly track in form of number of trees being planted. So I'm sure normally we friends sometimes we see each other's Uber ratings. Ki kisko kitne star mile hai, kisi kitni rating hai. So I'm sure going nest, this could be a thing that we all might track ki achha, maine kitne trees ko plant kiya by going electric ya kaun aage jeet raha hai. It's a nice thing. Did you know this? If yes, amazing. If no, please let me know. You know the address. It's tg at the rate ndtv.com. Stay informed and entertained with the new and updated NDTV News app. You can watch all our channels live, listen to podcasts, read breaking and exclusive news from around the world and more. Download the NDTV app today and get access to the best journalism and storytelling on your smartphone or tablet. The NDTV app. News that matters to you. Welcome to NDTV Auto. I'm here in Jaipur for Volkswagen Brand Conference and they have made us. Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV. I'm Gargi Rao. Stay with us for all the news you need to know. Let's take a look at the headlines we're tracking. An encounter in Chhattisgarh. Six Maoists have been killed. This is in the Bijapur district. The Maoists had allegedly uh, killed three villagers on Holi. The last day for nominations for the first phase of elections and bigwigs filing their nominations. Nitin Gadkari files nomination from Nagpur. The Tamil Nadu BJP president Anamalai files his nomination as well. The Nidhi Maran files papers from Chennai. More differences emerge in the Mahavikas Aghadi uh, Alliance. The UBT Sena names candidate for all Mumbai seats. And Sanjay Nirupam, who was hoping for a ticket, says it's a plan to bury the Congress. He appeals to the Congress break the alliance with the Sena. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi today spoke to BJP's Bengal Lok Sabha candidate Amrita Roy, who's contesting from the Krishna Nagar constituency against Trinamool's Mahua Moitra. He says the BJP is committed to uprooting corruption in the country. The Delhi Chief Minister's plea in the High Court against his arrest. The Enforcement Directorate seeks three weeks' time for a detailed reply. Kejriwal says it's a delaying tactic by the ED. While the Chief Minister's wife addresses a press conference, has raids in 250 locations, no money found. And Delhi Assembly session was adjourned. This is the first session after Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's arrest. Delhi BJP chief says probe Kejriwal and how he's giving orders from jail. Our top story, an encounter between the police and Naxals in Chhattisgarh and uh, search, uh, searching of the area, search operations in the area are continuing. Now, based on the input uh, of, uh, regarding Naxalites who had killed three villagers in Basagura on Holi, a joint team of the DRG, CRPF and Cobra personnel uh, went looking for those uh, Naxals. The encounter took place uh, involving the platoon number 10. Bodies and weapons of the killed Naxals were recovered as well, and six Naxals uh, were uh, killed in this encounter. मुठभेड़ में छह नक्सलियों के शव बरामद हुए हैं कुछ परसों जो तीन ग्रामीणों की हत्या नक्सलियों ने कर दी थी उसी के सर्चिंग में टीम गई हुई थी और उस मुठभेड़ में छह नक्सलियों के शव बरामद हुए हैं ये कंफर्मेशन आ चुका है काफी बड़ी मात्रा में वेपन्स और एक्सप्लोजिव मटेरियल और माओवादियों का कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम और उनकी डेली यूज आइटम्स वगैरह भी रिकवर हुआ है अभी आसपास इलाके में लगातार सर्चिंग जारी है सर्चिंग के उपरांत और विस्तार से डिटेल प्राप्त हो सकता है अभी सुरक्षा बल के सभी साथीगण सुरक्षित है और आसपास इलाके में और री एन्फोर्समेंट टीम्स रवाना की गई अभी डेड बॉडीज की शिनाख्ती कार्रवाई की जा रही है संभव तो उसमें एरिया कमेटी और मोदियों के पी एल जी प्लेटू नंबर टेन का कुछ कैडस होने का संभावना है लेकिन फाइनल कंफर्मेशन तब बॉडी का आइडेंटिफिकेशन पूरा कंप्लीट हो जाएगा उसके बाद ही फिर बताना संभव होगा all right so that is the big news coming from chatisgarh where six naxals have been killed in this encounter this comes after three villagers were killed by the same group of naxals is what the police have claimed uh, that three villagers were killed on holi by the same group of naxals and an encounter took place earlier today on the banks of the tal peru river in the area and uh, search operations are still continuing post the encounter the bodies of six naxals have been covered well moving on now to election news and the prime minister continuing uh, with his uh, series of phone conversations that he's having with various bjp candidates uh, today spoke with amrita roy a member of the erstwhile uh, royal family there and bjp's krishna nagar lok sabha candidate uh, she is fighting the election against trinamool congress leader mahua moitra who is a sitting mp of the area and during the conversation he said that bjp was committed to uprooting corruption in the country he also also said that he was working to ensure that money looted from poor people in West Bengal and attached by the ED was returned to them. Remember, Mahua Moitra, who was removed from Lok Sabha, is uh, also facing uh, ED and CBI uh, probes. Let's listen into this conversation. Amruta Ji, Namaskar. Namaskar, Modi Ji. You are very proud of me. You have given me a chance. लोगों की सेवा करने के लिए हम 100 परसेंट कोशिश करेंगे आपका चुनाव अभियान कैसा चल रहा है आ, अभी तो हम निकले हैं तो एक बीजेपी को उनका पिता का देहांत हो गया हम इधर ही आए हुए हैं तो अभी वापस जाके हम प्रचार में ही निकलेंगे अमृता जी आप महाराजा कृष्ण राय चंदी की विरासत को आगे ले जा रही है एक बात आपको हम शेयर करना चाहेंगे हम क्या कह सकते हैं जी जी जरूर मुझे अच्छा लगेगा ये जो महाराजा कृष्ण चंद्र का हम शामिल है तो उसका भी ये लोग विरोध कर रहे हैं क्या बोल रहे हैं कि वो ब्रिटिश के साथ साथ दिया था फिर वो मैंने हम लोगों को गद्दार समझते हैं क्यों क्या वो नहीं बोल रहा है इतना जमीन दान किया इतना सब लोगों के लिए किया भलाई के लिए किया वो सब नहीं बोल रहे हैं लेकिन क्या बोल रहे हैं तो हम बोला की क्यों किया ऐसा महाराजा कृष्ण 
अगर नहीं करते तो हमारा सनातन धर्म तो पूरा खत्म हो जाता है कि नहीं तो वो बात है क्योंकि तब का वो जो नवाब थे सिराजुद्दौला तो वो तो बहुत अत्याचारी भ्रष्टाचारी थे तो उसी लिए उन्होंने तो अकेला नहीं किया बहुत सारे राजाओं के मिलन हुआ उसके बाद सभी ने किया जगत सेठ भी थे और और राजाओं थे तो उसी सभी के मेहनत से ये काम सफल हुआ तो अगर नहीं होता आज हम हिंदू नहीं रह पाते हमारा भाषा दूसरा होता हमारा वेशभूषा एकदम अलग होता और सभी अलग हो जाते हम तो दूसरों के अधीन रहते ना यही बात है अमृता जी बचपन में हमारे यहाँ हम लोगों को जो पढ़ाया जाता था उसमें कृष्णचंद राय की समाज सुधार का काम बंगाल के विकास का काम बंगाल के विकास के मॉडल ये सब सुनने को मिलता था बचपन में अब देखिए ये वोट बैंक की राजनीति करने वाले लोग हैं तो बहुत ही अनाप शनाप आरोप लगाएंगे और 300 साल पहले की घटना निकालेंगे 200 साल पहले की घटना निकालेंगे और बदनाम करने का प्रयास करेंगे ये खुद अपने जो वर्तमान पाप है उसको छिपाने के लिए वो ऐसी चीजें ढूंढते रहते हैं लेकिन जब भगवान राम की बात आती है भगवान राम की बात आती है तो वो कहते हैं कि सबूत कहाँ है इतनी हाँ, पुरानी हाँ, बात क्यों तो निकालते हो लेकिन जब कृष्णचंद्र राय की बात आती है तो तुरंत निकालते हैं तो इस प्रकार हाँ, से उनके दोगलापन होता है और आपको हाँ, इसका बिल्कुल मन में प्रेशर नहीं लेना चाहिए आपने तो बंगाल का उज्जवल भविष्य और आपका हाँ, स्वयं का जीवन भी लोगों के लिए रहा है हाँ जी। और आपके सामने बंगाल की विरासत को बचाने की भी चुनौती है और आप इसे कैसे देख रही है हम पॉजिटिवली देख रहे हैं हमारा लड़ाई जो है लोगों का सेवा के लिए है करप्शन हटाने के लिए है और वंचित लोगों के उपकार में आने के लिए है All right so that is the latest conversation the prime minister has had with the BJP candidate with that we'll slip into a short break on the other side we'll bring you all the highlights as it's the last day to file nominations for the first phase of election also do remember we're asking the youth to come out and cast their vote in the upcoming election so do send us uh, your videos and uh, you can uh, send it a hashtag and the TV 18 ka vote and we'll showcase your videos right here Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. Justice, D.Y. Chandrachur, NDTV, big exclusive. We provide justice to common citizens, and there is no case which is too small even for the highest court of the nation. CGI का काम करने का अलग अंदाज. Sometimes I get emails even in the middle of the night, and I'm always available to answer those emails. 25 crore final judgments and orders. This data is available online. As on 29 February 2024, 3.09 crore cases have been heard. On video conferencing mode, Chief Justice Chandrachur से जुड़ी अनसुनी बातें। साढ़े तीन बजे सुबह मेरा दिन शुरू हो जाता है। My best friend, who is my wife, Kalpana, both of us are vegans. खबरों में आपका भरोसा NDTV.
A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. Hello and welcome to NDTV Auto. What I have with me today is real special. It is the latest EV from Audi, Q6. What's special about it is it's based on a completely new platform, PPE, Premium Platform Electric. This platform Audi has developed for their electric vehicles and it has a lot to offer. <laughs> company says the new platform PPE helps Audi Q6 e-tron achieve 30% less energy consumption with 33% better system performance. With the Q6, Audi is also introducing its electronic architecture E3 1.2 which allows customers to experience digitalization directly in the vehicle, making Audi Q6 e-tron a truly tech marvel. So here it is, all that you need to know about Q6 e-tron. Audi Q6 e-tron is the upcoming EV from Audi stable and is expected to come to Indian shores by the end of this year. International launch is expected in second half of this year. It is a 4.7 meter SUV which will occupy the space between Q4 and Q8 e-tron. It will come in two variants, Q6 e-tron Quattro and the more powerful SQ6 e-tron. What we have today with us is the S variant. What I want to show you the first in the look of Audi Q6 are these DRLs. They are matrix LED DRLs with active signature. That means you can change the pattern that gets projected from these DRLs and they also move while the car is on the move. That means you can actually have an active DRL. And I believe this feature is the highlight of Audi's upcoming baby. Up front is the grille. Now what I want to show you is this single frame grill. Audi is calling it inverted single frame grill and it looks very interesting. It's all closed off but looks very nice with these piano black inserts given here and then we have seen these uh, very flattish Audi logo in other products but here there is a little bit of 3D element in the logo. Now you have to notice this very prominent shoulder line which goes all the way to the tail lamp. The rear looks quite interesting with its almost wrapped around feel to the deep pillar. And the most interesting part of the rear are these OLED tail lamps. These are second generation digital LED tail lamps with six OLED panels. These light up to make various patterns and each panel has 60 individual elements that can light up with varying intensity, giving it a 3D effect. The charging point is available on either side of the car. On the driver's side, you have the AC and DC charging point and on the passenger side, you just have the AC charging point. On that note, let me tell you also all about the charging of this car. Welcome back and some breaking news now coming in. The Minister of External Affairs in Delhi summoned the U.S. Acting Deputy Chief of Mission, Gloria Barbena. Today, the meeting lasted approximately 40 minutes. Now, this comes a day after the U.S.'s comments on Arvind Kejriwal's arrest went public. The U.S. called for a fair and transparent legal process to follow the arrest of Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. And do remember, this comes after Germany too had weighed in on the issue and at that time as well there had been a sharp reaction from the Ministry of External Affairs. Uh, well for more uh, on this story let's now go across uh, to Nikunj Garg and Nikunj uh, give us more details a 40 minute meeting with the US official. Well yes Dagi and uh, the inputs that are coming in to us via a news agency currently are fairly guarded. Uh, there are very sketchy details available. They say that you know the uh, US Deputy Chief of Mission was summoned and uh, that the meeting lasted 40 minutes. What it does not say is what was discussed and what were, was this meeting any which way related to the U.S.'s commentary uh, that has been reported by the national mainstream national press today uh, quite boldly uh, uh, in, in India as well. 
So we we just we yet to get those details from uh, the Ministry of External Affairs or to our other uh, reporting colleagues. But what it looks like is that the, obviously it has not pleased the government of India. Obviously, this kind of commentary, uh, any nation, any jurisdiction is not going to take lightly. And hence, uh, this meeting between the U.S. Deputy Chief of Mission uh, and the Ministry of External Affairs. However, as I said to begin with, that currently there is no um, commentary available or no authoritative input or information available from the side of Ministry of External Affairs as to what precisely was discussed. That's right, though, Nikunj. You know, earlier Germany too had commented on Arvind Kejriwal's arrest and also spoken about, you know, the rule of the law and fairness, etc. And at that time, we did see the MEA react, saying we see such remarks as interfering in our judicial process and undermining the independence of our judiciary, that India is a vibrant and robust democracy. So, uh, given that, uh, that, that that was the sharp reaction uh, to the comments from Germany, and now a day after these comments are given uh, by the Home Department in the US to Reuters, uh, today you have a U.S. diplomat being summoned. Well, obviously, obviously it looks to be part of that chain. I'm not linking the German commentary because that was asked of a, of a very senior ranking minister in Germany and then he reacted. In this case, obviously, a beating to Reuters resulted in this commentary. As we can see now on air, as we, our viewers also can see, this U.S. deputy uh, head of mission is obviously not wanting to comment on uh, the meeting uh, from the from their side and she has quietly walked away, away from a very pesky press uh, reporter of uh, a gang of press reporters outside the ministry of external affairs but what we clearly know is that the meeting took place uh, in the ministry of external affairs and lasted for over 40 minutes and this certainly comes in the backdrop of the american commentary on the matter which as i said was quite fairly boldly reported in the uh, mainstream national press today and as I said, no jurisdiction, no country, uh, no uh, democracy particularly is certainly going to entertain this kind of freewheeling commentary and will certainly register its protest. Whether you can stop this kind of commentary by other nations is something completely different. But India, for sure, uh, will register its protest uh, as a matter of principle. And that's what it seems the Ministry of Functional Affairs has done after the Germans with the Americans too. Right, absolutely. But uh, also the fact that you have these comments coming from U.S. and Germany on uh, the arrest of the Delhi chief minister also shows that this is a, a grabbing attention. Well, yes, obviously, I mean, uh, the fact remains that those countries and their fairly senior ranking diplomats have chosen to speak on this matter. And uh, as I said, that India certainly is not going to appreciate that as we speak the matter of Mr. Kejriwal's arrest uh, is being adjudicated, particularly his bail application, is being adjudicated in uh, the, in a fairly serious manner at a, a constitutional court in the form of Delhi High Court. Uh, so India would certainly want that its judicial processes, post the law enforcement processes, uh, are followed uh, to the T. And in between, there is no outside commentary that is uh, coming on that or reflected in any which way. However, however, what has happened uh, currently is that these nations have chosen uh, to talk uh, 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 while this process is on and in a manner that certainly New Delhi will not appreciate and New Delhi uh, would, as I said, as a matter of principle, would want to register its protest uh, on the kind of commentary that is coming in. Because remember, if there is a judicial process that is on in the United States or in Germany, That's the right. Germans or the Americans would probably not like our commentary on that. All right, thanks so much, uh, Nikunj Garg. They're talking on this development with India summoning a U.S. diplomat. We're also now joined by NDTV's Kadambani uh, for more. And Kadambani, a day after these comments uh, from the U.S. on Arvind Kejriwal's arrest, where they said that uh, we we're encouraging a fair, transparent, and timely legal process for Arvind Kejriwal. Uh, today, you have a U.S. official being summoned, a 40-minute meeting took place. Well, it's quite a long uh, meeting which has taken place uh, and usually these meetings when uh, diplomats are summoned are not so long. So uh, it just uh, shows the seriousness uh, of uh, uh, government's approach which it does not uh, take uh, very kindly to it. If we remember just uh, within two weeks, this is the second time that uh, US has received an earful about uh, something like this. Now this time this is about Kejriwal's uh, uh, arrest and uh, other uh, issues but uh, earlier it was CAA where uh, the, the spokesperson for uh, external 
Affairs Ministry had clearly said that people who do not understand the culture of India, the history of India should not be commenting. It was a very sharp comment as far as uh, uh, US is concerned. But we also have to see, Gargi, that uh, as far as Delhi is concerned, this uh, is, it may be a very, uh, uh, it may be a city, not a complete state, but it punches much above its weight. Whatever happens in Delhi, it is also reflected in other uh, parts of uh, uh, country and uh, uh, all the diplomats are watching very closely the Indian elections. If you talk to them off record, they would be uh, saying that they are watching the elections quite closely and uh, so close to election, something like this is happening. And when uh, uh, the questions are asked about this uh, from any uh, any uh, diplomat or any spokesperson of uh, these countries, because we have to remember that these two answers, one which came from uh, State Department spokesperson, another which came from uh, another spokesperson in Germany, both were answers to the questions which were asked to them. So this has uh, to be something uh, which is also uh, uh, should be seen in context of the elections which are taking place and an understanding and, and a hope uh, and expectation that these would be free and fair elections and that is what they are saying. But of course, these are the internal matters. India uh, clearly says that no other country has a right to interfere in its internal matter and the judiciary is free here. And that is something, the comments which have come like this are sure to rankle and that is why the summoning and the earful about CAA. That's right. And uh, Kadamni, interesting, you know, when when the comments came from Germany, where, they, you know, they also commented on Arvind Kejriwal's arrest and asked for a fair process, etc. We saw very sharp response and very public response uh, from the MEA saying, saying that we see such remarks as interfering in our judicial processing. India is a vibrant and robust democracy with rule of law, etc., etc. However, uh, after the U.S. comments uh, to Reuters today, what we have seen is a summoning of the diplomat and a 40-minute meeting so far uh, we don't know what really transpired during that meeting well, uh, this is a clear message not only to uh, US or uh, and, uh, or Germany, but it is also a clear message to other countries which might in future want to uh, comment when a question is asked to them uh, about uh, Kejriwal or other in, uh, internal matters of India. So it should also be looked at, though the details are not yet available, it has not been shared by External Affairs Ministry or the US Embassy, but it has to be seen as a message to other countries as well that India's internal matters are their matter uh, 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 and no other country should be interfering in it. This is what India has been saying again and again all the, on all the matters which pertain to uh, be it uh, uh, an election process. And India has clearly always said the judiciary is free in India, election process is fair and democratic and there is no uh, way that a country, other country should be commenting about uh, these processes. This should be taken as, a, as an interference in uh, the workings and internal matter of uh, India. All right, uh, Kadamni, thanks so much for joining us uh, with those details. So that is the news coming in. A U.S. diplomat is summoned after remarks were made by the Home Department on the Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's arrest. And remember, uh, these comments uh, made by the U.S. Uh, was that they're encouraging a fair, transparent and timely legal process for Arvind Kejriwal. So a day after those comments, uh, were made. The Ministry of External Affairs uh, today has uh, summoned the U.S. Acting Deputy Chief of Mission, Gloria Barbena. And as Kadamni was telling us, that meeting lasts 40 minutes. So that is a very, you know, long uh, meeting that was held with the U.S. diplomat. And, uh, and remember earlier, the Germany too had uh, commented on Arvind Kejriwal's arrest and made some similar uh, comments about uh, watching it closely and a uh, fair process, etc. And that that time, the MEA too had responded very sharply, saying that this is uh, undermining and uh, this is interfering in our judicial process. All right, moving on to other news now, and let's get you all the election news and news from Maharashtra, where the Udav Thakre uh, Shiv Sena today released its first list of 16 candidates. It uh, released names for all of Mumbai. Anil Desai will contest for Mumbai South Central, while Mumbai North, uh, which uh, Northwest, which saw a seat tussle, they announced Amol Kirtikar to contest from there. Now, this is the seat from where Congress's Sanjay Nirupam was hoping for a ticket. Uh, the NCP Sena both were eyeing Mumbai Northeast, which now the Sena has announced its candid candidature, and uh, Chandrahar Patil will be contesting from Sangli's seat on which the Congress was keen. Now, after uh, the announcement of these seats, uh, Sanjay Nirupam has hit out 
over uh, this announcement. He says there is an attempt to undermine uh, the Congress in uh, in Maharashtra, and uh, and he also said that he appeals to Congress leaders to end this alliance with the Uddhav Thakre Shiv Sena. आज हमने शिव सेना की तरफ से बावीस उम्मीदवारों की घोषणा की है सत्रह हम बावीस लड़ेंगे और सत्रह की घोषणा की है आपको पता होगा इसमें मुंबई है और महाराष्ट्र के बहुत से इलाके से हमने आज उम्मीदवार घोषित किए हैं तो मैं भी यही कह रहा हूं कि शिवसेना को इतना इतना एक्सट्रीम स्टैंड नहीं लेना चाहिए इससे कांग्रेस का जबरदस्त नुकसान है और कांग्रेस के नेतृत्व का ध्यान आकर्षित करना चाहता हूं कि आप अभी भी इंटरवीन करिए नहीं तो अलायंस तोड़िए अगर पार्टी को बचाना है तो अलायंस तोड़िए और मैदान में उतरिए लेकिन आप शिवसेना के साथ अलायंस करके अपने आप को हमेशा के लिए खत्म करने का जो फैसला कर रहे हैं वो बहुत ही आत्मघाती है पूरे कांग्रेस पार्टी के लिए और इसका असर पूरे महाराष्ट्र पर पड़ेगा महाराष्ट्र से बाहर भी पड़ेगा Well, let's go across to Radhika for more uh, on this. And Radhika, with the announcement of candidates, uh, the Uddhav Thakre Shiv Sena clearly, you know, ruffling feathers within the MVA and Sanjay Raut, for one, extremely angry over uh, th this announcement, saying that there's an attempt to finish the Congress and also asking leaders to call off this alliance. Certainly, the list announced by Sena has led to a lot of. Uh, Uh, displeasure uh, and uh, a lot of the allies are upset over the list simply because discussions and deliberations were going on we know that congress leaders had met sharad pawar um, uh, yesterday and also there were uh, different meetings that had happened with sena leaders as well over the last few days over a few disputed seats but those disputed seats have in fact been featured in the list of uh, uh, in the list that was released by sena today that includes sangli which the congress wanted which is Congress is stronghold, but Sena has fielded its candidate from Sangli. Apart from that, of course, Mumbai Northwest and South Central both were under dispute. Both the Congress wanted, of course, Mumbai Northwest was being eyed by Sanjay Nirupam. However, it is Amol Kirtikar who uh, was uh, fielded from uh, Sena side. From Mumbai Northwest. Now, Amol Kirtikar, of course, has been called by ED in connection with uh, a BMC Kichdi scam. Now, which is what Sanjay Nirupam had said today that we do not want, uh, you know, a Kichdi scam criminals to be a part of uh, uh, this alliance. And also going on to hit out at both the Congress and Sena. Congress bending over backwards for Sena. Uh, Sena is dominating in this alliance, and that should not be accepted. Is something Sanjay Nirupam has said. Sanjay Nirupam also giving an ultimatum to his party. saying that uh, some decision has to be taken by the congress uh, leaders else he has other options to go for uh, so yes many others within the party also are not very happy with the list that has been announced we heard bala saheb thorat um, and uh, several others uh, were vijay vadetiwar as well saying that uh, there was discussions ongoing as far as this disputed seats were concerned and the, this list that was announced this morning was unexpected and they should have been consulted before uh, sena fielded its candidates in the in these disputed seats so that's as far as uh, sena is concerned now a blow for mva Uh, after VBA, in fact, uh, uh, broke its ties. Of course, uh, they were in talks um, over a few seats. Uh, MBA was ready to give four seats or four to five seats to VBA. Uh, however, VBA has uh, decided to go alone. Prakash Ambedkar's party has decided not to uh, sort of uh, ally with the MBA, and therefore they have announced their list of candidates. So two setbacks today. Uh, one after Sena released that list. We, many within the Congress unhappy, some within NCP also happy, uh, unhappy because Mumbai Northeast was under dispute between NCP and Sena. And the second setback, of course, VBA deciding to go solo. All right, so lots of uh, lots happening there in the MVA in Maharashtra. Thanks so much, Radhika, for joining us so with that. Now some breaking news are coming in pertaining to a uh, Trinamool Congress leader, Mahua Moitra. who has been summoned now by the enforcement directorate uh, for questioning in connection with an alleged violation of the foreign exchange management act official sources reveal that moitra has been asked to appear before the ed officials in delhi on the 28th of march remember mahua moitra uh, was uh, expelled uh, from the lok sabha in this uh, case of uh, asking questions uh, in the parliament for uh, for uh, 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 for a bribe and that is the case that has been uh, we've seen the cbi also investigating this matter and raids also being conducted 
on Mahua Moitra's residence in West Bengal. She currently is busy campaigning uh, for the Krishna Nagar constituency. Let's go across to Mukesh now uh, for more. Mukesh, give us more details. Uh, Mahua Moitra being summoned now by the Enforcement Directorate. देखिए बिल्कुल महुआ मोत्रा को ईडी ने कल यानी 28 मार्च को फेमा के मामले में पूछताछ के लिए बुलाया है इसके पहले भी एक बार महुआ मोत्रा को समन जारी किया गया था लेकिन वो पूछताछ के लिए नहीं आई थी उन पर एलिगेशन ये है कि उन्होंने बड़े पैमाने पर विदेशों में काफी पैसा खर्च किया है जिसमें एक होटल में रुकी थी और उसमें सात लाख रुपए एक दिन का रेंट था वो रेंट किसने दिया था कहाँ से आया था इसके अलावा उन्होंने कारोबारी दर्शन हीरा नंदानी से कई गिफ्ट लिए हैं और ये भी एलिगेशन है कि काफी सारे गिफ्ट विदेश में लिए गए काफी पैसा विदेश में खर्च किया गया तो उसको लेकर जो ईडी है वो फेमा के तहत इस पूरे मामले की जांच कर रही है और महुआ मोत्रा को उसी मामले में पूछताछ के लिए समन जारी किया गया है 28 मार्च यानी कल उनको पूछताछ के लिए बुलाया गया है अब देखना होगा कि वो पूछताछ के लिए आती है या नहीं आती है क्योंकि इसके पहले भी समन जारी किया गया था तब वो पूछताछ के लिए नहीं पहुंची थी तो कल एक बार फिर ईडी ने उनको समन जारी किया है और अट्ठाईस मार्च को फेमा के मामले में पूछताछ के लिए बुलाया गया है All right, so that is the breaking news uh, coming in. As Mukesh is telling us, Mahua Moitra has been summoned by the Enforcement Directorate, and this is uh, pertaining to an alleged violation of FEMA, that's the Foreign Exchange Management Act. What sources have said is that Moitra has been asked to appear before the ED officials in Delhi on March 28th. Now, uh, Mo 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 Moitra, in fact, earlier had already written to the Election Commission saying the CBI is throttling my poll campaign efforts. Uh, the fact that she is being, uh, that, uh, she is being investigated and summoned at, at a time when she is busy with electioneering. However, uh, the Enforcement Directorate has summoned her in this case uh, of uh, FEMA violations. And it comes after the ED conducted widespread searches across several locations, including Hyderabad, Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata over suspected FEMA violations. Uh, so Mahua Moitra now being summoned in this case already. Uh, she is being uh, investigated or the CBI is looking into that cash for query case involving Mahua Moitra and industrialist uh, Darshan Hiranandani. The accusation is that she asked questions in parliament uh, at the behest of Darshan Hiranandani and she was expelled from the Lok Sabha over this. However, uh, uh, Trinamool Congress leader has hit out and said that she is being targeted uh, by, by the agencies uh, and uh, by the BJP because uh, she, has been, uh, always, she has been critical of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and brought up various issues in the past and claims that that is the reason that she is being targeted by the agencies and uh, this action being taken against her, Mawa Moitra, who is currently campaigning in a Krishnanagar constituency of, on the, for the Trinamool Congress, uh, now being summoned for questioning by the Enforcement Directorate. Remember the Trinamool Congress, uh, the Congress, NCP, uh, UBT, Shiv Sena have all alleged that the agencies are being used to target their leaders, Amagmi Party as well, claiming the ED is used to target its leaders. Well, let's go across to Saurabh for more on this. And Saurabh, give us more details of, of this particular matter uh, for which Amawa Moitra is being summoned. This is to do with the uh, foreign exchange uh, for some sort of FEMA violations and she's been asked to come to Delhi on the 28th. Yeah, that's right. You know, of course, she's been summoned by the enforcement directorate and comes back in the middle of the you know, election campaign. She's a Congress candidate for the Krishnagar seat. BJP candidate there. Now, this, of course, was again a contest where it was going to be a very, uh, you know, sort of uh, hard-fought uh, battle. But uh, obviously, uh, this is something that comes in the middle of the campaign and uh, something that the Trinamool has pointed out. Uh, when it comes to central agencies claiming that central agencies have been acting at the behest of the BJP and uh, that they've been, uh, you know, taking on only opposition parties and opposition rule states. Uh, now, obviously, uh, you know, uh, there is, of course, an investigation that's going on as far as Mohamed is concerned. You remember she was also uh, expelled from parliament after allegations of cash for queries. Uh, emerged against her, or bribes for queries, rather, a bigger pardon, emerged against her. And following that, she was expelled from the Lok Sabha. Uh, the Trinamool renominated her this time. Uh, Mamta Banerjee had said that she would win by a huge margin again. 
and uh, of, of course this summons come right come in the middle comes right in the middle of the campaign which is something that the Trinamool of course is also uh, going to uh, protest about all right thanks so much sora for joining us uh, with that so mawa moitra now being summoned by the enforcement directorate in a case of fema violations uh, with that we'll slip into a short break more news updates coming up on the other side to stay with us Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. One day this lecture hall will be made of coal and driverless cars would be trapped in intersections. But even in this maze of the future, you can't wish away health. It's time to become more resilient. Ten years of Banega Swasth India, we have grown and achieved so many milestones. And now I have a plan to beat the urgency, to stop breathing with difficulty, to relieve getting choked with inactivity. Energize our government, our environment, our society, and ourselves. Everyone, everywhere, every day. Banega Swasth India One World Hygiene हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एनडी टीवी पर फ्रेंड्स इट्स टाइम नाउ फॉर माय फेवरेट सेक्शन अबाउट दिस एपिसोड बिकॉज हम हमेशा जब क्यू एन ए की बात करते हैं सो आस्क टीजी इज द थिंग जो मुझे बहुत पसंद आती है बिकॉज आई गेट टू आंसर ऑल योर क्वेश्चन सो लेट सी इस हफ्ते हमारे पास में क्या क्या क्वेश्चन है आपको जानना है विच इज द बेटर डिवाइस बिटवीन वन प्लस ट्वेल्व एंड शाउमी फोर्टीन इन टर्म्स ऑफ कैमरा एंड परफॉर्मेंस सो लेट मी गेट दिस ट्रेट इन टर्म्स ऑफ कैमरा Xiaomi might jump slightly ahead of the OnePlus 12, not by a huge margin, but like let's say slightly ahead. But if I were to recommend you an overall good product in terms of camera performance, software, you know, like everything combined, I would recommend OnePlus 12 over the Xiaomi. Considering Xiaomi uh, doesn't have the kind of brand value in that premium segment. OnePlus, you know, has been there for a long time now. Or OnePlus 12 is an amazing smartphone overall. If you combine, especially the clean experience of Oxygen OS, yeah, even the camera is fantastic. Xiaomi 14, थोड़ा थोड़ा आगे निकल जाता है. But overall, I would say OnePlus 12 would be a better pick. I mean, pretty simple. If you have access to your mobile phone number, and अगर आपको वहाँ पे SMS की access है, और अगर आपने वो number अपने account में add किया है, it's pretty simple. You just uh, go to the password reset options, और जो आपको OTP आपके phone पे आ रहा है, that security code, just enter that, and Google should let you reset your password. So just use a different device to log in.
Welcome back. Let's get you all the election news now. And today is the last day of nominations for the first phase of elections. So big wigs filing their nominations today. Nitin Gadkari, uh, the union minister, filed his nomination from Nagpur in a show of strength. He was accompanied by Devinder Fadnavis, Tamil Nadu BJP president. Annamalai also filed his nomination from Coimbatore, while DMK leader Dhanidhi Maran filed his papers from Chennai. So today, a day of nomination filing and it's the last day for filing nominations ahead of the first phase. NDTV Sam Daniel spoke with Dhanidhi Maran who uh, hit out at the BJP saying the DMK exposed the BJP's claims. Joining us now, DMK's Chennai central candidate and sitting MP Mr. Dhanidhi Maran, thank you very much for your time. You're seeking a fourth term. What would you call as your promises and your achievements? See, the last five years, we have been with the people. We have been fighting for the rights of our state and also for the rights of the people who have been suppressed by this BJP government. And if you receive that throughout the five years, my participation in the parliament is, fight, is, to, fight, is, is to fight for the rights. And especially when they are trying to oppress and trying to fool the people that they have done something good the last 10 years. That has to be exposed. If you really see, in 2004, when Manmohan Singh government left, the GDP was 50 lakh crores for India. In, sorry, in 2004 when he came, when 2014 left, it was 100 lakh crores, G, the GDP. So technically every 10 years, the GDP should double. When Modi took over, it was 100 lakh crores. So in 2024, when mm -hmm. Modi is 10 years ending, what should be the GDP? Should be 200 lakh crores. But you know what's the GDP now? is 167 lakh crores. That means the Modi government has failed in the economic development of India. They are trying to fool us saying there's growth. There's no growth. So how is he going to explain this? How is Nirmala Sitaraman going to explain this? We are here with the people. We've been doing COVID times, the flood times. We were with the people. And the flood, we never expected this flood. It's a flood which happened once in 75 years. The Prime Minister didn't even come once to Chennai. He has come for other programs, inauguration programs. He comes and says, so I say, wanna come to Chennai, but he has no love for Tamil Nadu. Probably he can read good from the uh, uh, teleprompters, but he's not able to read the minds of hearts of people of Tamil Nadu. That was uh, DMK's Chennai Central candidate sitting MP Dayanidhi Maran talking to us after filing his nomination. In Chennai with Suresh, Sam Daniel, Find the TV. All right, news of uh, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, who today challenged in the Delhi High Court his arrest by the Enforcement Directorate in the money laundering case related to the now scrap liquor policy. The bench of Justice Swarna Kanta Sharma has passed over the matter for a hearing later in the day after Kejriwal's counsel, Senior Advocate Abhishek Singh, we questioned the agency's delaying tactics. The ED said they needed three weeks to reply. Mr. Kejriwal has said in his petition that his arrest violated his human rights and that the ED has failed to prove the crime. Arrest without interrogation shows that the current action is politically motivated is what he has said, demanding immediate release from jail and cancellation of remand. Uh, so uh, that hearing will continue in the High Court. Meanwhile, Arvind Kejriwal's uh, wife uh, has ad addressed a press conference. Neeta Kejriwal hit out at the probe agencies and said that Arvind Kejriwal will make a big revelation in the alleged Delhi liquor policy scam, saying 250 locations have been raided by the enforcement directorate, but no money has been found anywhere. In so-called Charab Ghutale ki jaanj mein, ED ne pichle do saal mein thai so se zyada raid paan liye. Wo is so-called Charab Ghutale ka paisa dhoon rahe hain. Abhi tak kisi bhi raid mein ek paisa nahi mila. Manish ji ke yaan raid maari. संजय सिंह जी की यहां रेड मारी सतीन जैन जी की यहां रेड मारी एक भी पैसा नहीं मिला अरविंद जी ने कहा है कि इसका खुलासा वे 28 मार्च को कोर्ट के सामने करेंगे सारे देश को सच सच बताएंगे कि इस सो कॉल्ड शराब घोटाले का पैसा है कहां
Let's go across to our reporters now and Aishwarya and Ishika join us for more. Aishwarya, first to you. So this matter will be taken up by the High Court uh, later on uh, for hearing later in the day. Also give us more details of what went on in the court with uh, Abhishek Manu Singhvi accusing the ED of delaying tactics. Well, for almost uh, two hours, Abhishek Manu Singhvi, uh, uh, who was who was representing Arvind Kejriwal in this case, uh, had submitted uh, all his arguments. And the key highlights of Abhishek Manu Singhvi uh, remain that uh, Arvind Kejriwal uh, had been uh, affected of uh, the fundamental rights. Uh, uh, it is the first time when a sitting chief minister had been arrested, uh, and these are gross violations of. Uh, uh, the uh, the the PMLA Act, in fact, section f under section 50, no statements were recorded uh, of Arvind Kejriwal. He also went on to say that uh, uh, those approvers uh, who were earlier arrested by the enforcement directorate as accused had had uh, named Arvind Kejriwal in three of the cases, but uh, it is enforcement directorate who never earlier had reached out to uh, Mr. Kejriwal. Kejriwal was not running away from. Uh, uh, the hearings and uh, whatever statement, if uh, needed, uh, enforcement directed could have uh, recorded that. So clearly, uh, you know, for almost two hours, it was uh, 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 Abhishek Manu Singhvi who stated that, uh, you know, this, this is just because the elections are around the corner and that they wanted to uh, arrest Arvind Kejriwal. Uh, if they have powers uh, uh, and they have desire to arrest him, that doesn't mean that they will arrest Arvind Kejriwal. And after all those long hearings, it was uh, from the Enforcement Directorate uh, Council, uh, Additional Solicitor General S.V. Raju stood up and stated that he needs at least three weeks of time to reply uh, uh, because uh, it is two of the lawyers uh, from the side of Arvind Kejriwal who represented uh, on, on the matter of bail plea. Uh, it was uh, lastly uh, stated that at least, uh, if not three weeks, but at least two weeks time should be given to which the order is now reserved. The big update coming in from the Delhi High Court is that the order will be uh, uh, will be uh, pronounced at 4 p.m. today uh, that whether Arvind Kejriwal will get bail uh, via Delhi High Court or it would be an enforcement directorate would be tomorrow seeking more custody of Arvind Kejriwal. All right. Uh, thanks so much, Ashwarya, for joining us. So will uh, Arvind Kejriwal finally have to go back to the top court? Uh, let's go across to Ishika for more on how the Delhi Assembly session was held today. This is the first session after the chief minister's arrest and the BJP, however, demanding a probe, uh, saying probe how the chief minister is giving orders from jail. Let's just listen in uh, to what the BJP has said and as well as Minister Atishi. आप एक एक करके विपक्ष के सारे नेताओं को जेल में डाल दोगे आप सबके बैंक अकाउंट फ्रीज कर दोगे आप सबके पार्टी ऑफिस सील कर दोगे चुनाव की घोषणा के बाद तो अगर आप विपक्ष पे इस तरह से हमला करेंगे तो विपक्ष चुनाव कैसे लड़ेगा और अगर विपक्ष चुनाव नहीं लड़ सकता तो इस देश में लोकतंत्र कैसा बचा देखिए ये क्या विडंबना है इलेक्शन कमीशन जो एक नॉन पार्टिसन बॉडी होती है विपक्ष के राज्यों में होम सेक्रेटरी बदल देती है डीजीपी बदल देती है सारे अफसरों को बदल देती है लेकिन ईडी सीबीआई और इनकम टैक्स के अध्यक्ष नहीं बदल सकती जब तक चुनाव नहीं होता है क्यों इन इंस्टीट्यूशंस के क्यों इन एजेंसीज के अध्यक्ष नहीं बदले जाते जब यह साफ है कि इनको राजनीतिक तौर पर इस्तेमाल किया जा रहा है सीधा सा साफ है हमारी मांग है कि अरविंद केजरीवाल भ्रष्टाचारी है उन्होंने चोरी की है दिल्ली को लूटा है उन्हें इस्तीफा देना चाहिए आम आदमी पार्टी चोरों को बचाने का काम कर रही है ये बुनियादी फर्क है दोनों में पर हमारी जो लड़ाई है दिल्ली की जनता की लड़ाई है दिल्ली की जनता को लूटने का काम अरविंद केजरीवाल ने किया है अब जो चीज़ें स्टैब्लिश हो रही हैं हिरासत में एक आदमी जो हिरासत में है उसको मुख्यमंत्री बनाए रखना कहाँ की नैतिकता है आम आदमी पार्टी को सोचना चाहिए और खुद उन्हें अरविंद केजरीवाल को त्याग पत्र देना चाहिए दिल्ली की चिंता अगर आठ नौ साल की होती तो अभी ये फर्जी लेटर निकालने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ती Let's go across to Ishika for more. Ishika, tell us more about what happened in this Delhi Assembly session that was adjourned, the first session after Arvind Kejriwal's arrest. 
Well, Gargi, you know, as you rightly mentioned that this was the first assembly session where, you know, the chief minister would not be, uh, you know, did not participate since he is uh, in, the, in the ED custody. But certainly, you know, this assembly session that was called to discuss, you know, the shortage of the healthcare, you know, facilities in the Mohalla clinics and the Delhi government hospitals turned into a day full of drama. We did see very dramatic visuals that came from the Vidhan Sabha where, in fact, you know, uh, where in fact the MLAs of the Aam Aadmi Party wore a yellow T-shirt to the Delhi Assembly and that yellow T-shirt had their campaigns of Mai Bhi Kejriwal and also the display picture change campaign. They started raising slogans and after that we also saw how they burned the effigy saying that you know this was the effigy of the so-called dictatorship of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Now it was you know this was one protest that was held inside now, you know, right after that, we also did see how there were few BJP workers that also gathered outside uh, the Delhi Assembly and they tried to do a dharna pradarshan. But very shortly, you know, they were detained because of the huge police deployment that was there at the Vidhan Sabha. So certainly a day full of drama, very dramatic visuals that came from inside and from the outside. But because of this drama, you know, today we did see that the house was adjourned. In fact, it will resume only on now on Monday at 11 a.m. But certainly the discussion that was to be held, that was not taken place and uh, uh, the Aam Aadmi Party, they say that they are going to use, you know, every, uh, every, uh, you know, every stage to raise their concerns over the, you know, over what they call the illegal arrest of Arvind Kejriwal. Over to you. All right, Ishika, thanks so much for joining us with those details. So dramatic scenes, as Ishika was describing in the Delhi Assembly, as you can see, our leaders in yellow T-shirts and with Arvind Kejriwal masks. Uh, with that, we'll slip into a short break. News updates coming up on the other side. Stay with us. Friends, next I have is this uh, shiny new device coming straight from the Realme factory. This is the all new Realme Narzo 70 Pro 5G. And I'm shiny because see, of course, it's shiny. I love the way it looks. Even the frame is very shiny. At the same time, this phone really shines bright when we look at features. Ko dekhte because here is a lot of interesting things Realme is packed. What we have is a Sony Amex 890 sensor with 50 megapixels a primary camera that has OIS. At the same time, inside the phone is really packed with features. In fact, hum yaha pe abhi is phone mein gestures se so control kar sakte because this has got something that Realme calls air gestures. So, agar ab dekho isko and have a closer look about how this Realme Narzo 70 Pro really is. I would say very interesting mid-range smartphone coming straight from Realme. Finally, the wait is over. Realme's latest hotshot, the Narzo 70 Pro 5G, finally India mil launch ho gaya hai. This phone is packed with amazing features that will make you go wow. This phone mein hai ek rainwater smart touch feature. This means no more tensions about phone usage in a light drizzle. The powerful MediaTek Dimensity chipset lets you game, multitask and do everything else at lightning speed. The 5000 mAh battery and Superbook fast charging will get you back in action in no time. The phone's horizon glass design gives it a super premium head-turning look. Realme has kept it affordable. Narzo 70 Pro 5G starts at just Rs 18,999. You can grab it in stylish glass green and glass gold colors from March 22nd on Amazon and the Realme website. With its awesome display, camera and overall performance, the Realme Narzo 70 Pro 5G is a total Pesa Vasool deal. If you're looking for a smartphone that's powerful, stylish and affordable, this is it. बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज
तरफ एनडी टीवी पर Welcome to NDTV Auto. I'm here in Jaipur for Volkswagen brand conference, and they have made a slew of announcements here. Let's talk more about them with Mr. Ashish Gupta, brand director, Volkswagen India. You know, you have uh, again changed the lineup of uh, Tiguan. Uh, what was the purpose behind it, and uh, uh, will that make things simpler for people? No, I think you know uh, the endeavor has been, and if you you know, I take back, uh, take you back two years when we introduced the Tiguo, and we introduced it on two line structure, the dynamic line, which was basically based on the one liter, and the performance line, which were based, which was based on the 1.5 liter. Over the period of time, what we have also realized is that customers are not differentiated by you know engine types. Customers are more and more moving towards style differentiation. You know, I. what kind of a style appeals to me and what kind of a uh, you know style appeal does not appeal to me or appeals to another set of customers so the endeavor this time has been to now uh, put our line structure in place uh, to appeal to style more than you know the, the differentiation by the engine line so that's what we have done so now we have the chrome line which is more elegant you know for the customers who like that kind of a uh, uh, design language available both on the 1.5 and the 1 liter and then the sporty look with more black uh, themed exterior and interior elements which appeals to customer who are looking for more sporty rugged kind of an appeal that uh, appeals to them so that's why today we have launched the GT plus sport uh, on the Tiguan and also the GT line which actually brings the gtness of our cars into the 1 liter uh, lineup as well with the gt line does this impact pricing Yes, of course. If you look at uh, you know the GT line, the GT line is now uh, has all the GT elements, including 17-inch wheels, including six airbag standard, including the black elements in the exterior and the interior, at a price point which is between the high line and the top line. Yeah, so it's a much more accessible, affordable uh, GT. Uh, you know uh, the other big announcement is about ID four, uh, yes. and we have seen ID four earlier as well. But uh, what is the plan now? When do you think it will uh, actually come to India? Will get launched in India? Yeah, I think uh, the ID four that you saw earlier was a test car, which you saw by accident and not by design. But uh, today we have officially showcased the ID four. So very clearly, we are committed to bringing the uh, global electric range into India, starting with the ID four. Uh, our target is to bring this car to India and to you know start selling it from the towards the end of this year mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and uh, what i know it's a uh, very early to say but yeah. how what will what will be your pricing strategy so as as, as you said too early to say but uh, you know any car that you launch has to be competitive uh, in the segment that it is operating in the id4 is an a plus uh, suv you know it's a large car uh, it also comes with class leading range and you know, you know all the features that you can think about so of course it has to, it will be competitive priced with in, in its segment You know uh, your sister brand uh, Skoda. They have announced their compact SUV for yeah. next year. Yeah. Uh, but as far as we know, uh, Volkswagen has abstained from that project. What is the thinking behind uh, not participating in that compact no, SUV project? You know, uh, we are uh, as a group present as two sister brands, but every brand has its own strategy and its own uh, uh, positioning that they would like to achieve. Uh, so our product introductions would typically be in line with what how we position ourselves as the brand. globally volkswagen is a uh, position as a top of volume so we operate in the premium part of the volume segments that's how what we want to translate into india as well i think we have been very relatively successful with the tiguan and the vertos to achieving that kind of a premium positioning in each of the segments that we operate in and that's what we want to carry forward you know uh, you said that uh, last year your growth rate was 8% and this year you are targeting 15% growth yeah. rate uh, so uh, indian market we have seen indian customers leaning heavily towards new product launches yes. so how are you what is your strategy for getting that 15% growth rate i know you are going yeah. to more touch points as well but in on the product side uh, what is your strategy so i think you know uh, with the current product lineup and i am not talking about new introductions now uh, if you look at it uh, I would still classify the Tiguan and the Vertus as new introductions. The Vertus is not even two years old in the market. The Tiguan is hardly two and a half years old in the market. So what we can do as of now is to keep on adding uh, newness into the cars, to keep bringing new features. We added almost 30 new features over the last two years into the Tiguan, including electric seats, including you know uh, subwoofer and amplifier, ventilated seats, a host of features that we have introduced to keep the cars up to date and to keep, to keep the cars relevant. That's what we will keep on doing today. Uh, you know. 
know we also br brought in new variants of the car at new price points with the India summons a US diplomat over the comments made by US Home Department on the arrest of Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal a 40 minute meeting takes place with the US Deputy Chief of Mission the US had called for a fair transparent process for the Delhi Chief Minister India releases a statement saying it strongly objects to the remarks of the US State Department spokesperson A Mahabharat in the MBA over a Mumbai seat upset Congress leader Sanjay Nirupam dares the UBT Sena Nirupam calls on the Congress to snap ties with the Sena after it announces candidates for all the seats. Prime Minister Modi uh, today spoke to BJP's candidate Amrita Roy who's contesting from the Krishna Nagar uh, constituency against Trinamool's Maua Moitra he says the BJP is committed to uprooting corruption in the country The last day of nomination for the first phase of elections and Union Minister Nitin Gadkari files his nomination from Nagpur Tamil Nadu BJP president Annamalai files his nomination from Coimbatore and DMK leader Dayanidhi Maran from Chennai In Chhattisgarh an encounter between uh, the security forces and Maoists and six Maoists have been killed in the Bijapur district this after they allegedly killed three villagers on Holi Welcome you watching ND TV I'm Gargi Raut and our top story the government today held a 40 minute meeting with the United States acting deputy chief of mission who was summoned to the Ministry of External Affairs office in Delhi's south block uh, this comes a day after the US State Department spokesperson said it is monitoring reports of Delhi chief minister Arvind Kejriwal's arrest and called on New Delhi to ensure a fair and timely legal process for the jailed up uh, leader the US State Department uh, comments came came in turn uh, days after Germany's foreign office stressed that Mr Kejriwal like any other Indian citizen facing charges is entitled to a fair and impartial trial at that time also there had been a sharp response from the Ministry of External Affairs well let's go across uh, to Kadambani uh, for more and Kadambani the uh, MEA has also released a statement saying it takes exception to the remarks by the US State Department and India's legal processes are based on an independent judiciary which is committed to timely outcomes well yes it's a very strong statement and we can understand what uh, what would have transpired in those 40 minutes when uh, the dcm of uh, american embassy here in delhi was uh, meeting the officials here in south block uh, the statement says that they have uh, taken a very strong objection to the comments made by the state uh, department uh, spokesperson who was asked this question and he answered about uh, uh, that question on kejriwal though kejriwal has not been named uh, in indian statement it has uh, talked about a certain legal proceeding and has said that that uh, as a uh, fellow democracy uh, the states are expected to be respectful of sovereignty and internal affairs of others and the responsibility for fellow democracies is even more otherwise it will uh, set up an unhealthy precedent so this is also a message to all other countries uh, who might uh, uh, in future would have made any statement when a question would have been asked so this is a clear statement not only for the us but others as well also india has always maintained that its judiciary is uh, free and fair and that is what has been reiterated in this uh, statement by external affairs ministry uh, it has uh, uh, said that india's legal processes are based on an independent judiciary which is committed to objective and timely outcomes casting aspersions on that is unwarranted so it's a very clear strong statement and it should stay put to any other comments which might be coming from any other country That's right Kadamri but it also you know the, this these developments first Germany and now the US show that uh, the arrest of a sitting chief minister of New Delhi uh, you know attracting a lot of attention 
Well, yes, definitely. And we have to keep in mind that this will happen as far as uh, Delhi CM is concerned because uh, look at Delhi, it is not just a city, it is also the national capital. The central government is run from Delhi. Uh, most, uh, almost all the embassies are here, situated here. They have a big diplomatic corps here. So whatever happens in Delhi does make much uh, sound much more than its size. So it punches much above, above its weight and it is being washed all over the world. So a sitting CM being arrested, he ha his bail hearings are going on. That has elicited uh, uh, comments from everyone. And we know, we have talked to different uh, diplomats and off record they do say that they have uh, an eye on the Indian elections which are taking place. It's a huge exercise in democracy and everyone is watching. India is in that position where everyone is watching what happens here, which shape the democracy here takes uh, 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 place. So this is something which has, which has been washed, which is being washed by the entire world. And of course, when a sitting CM is arrested, uh, the legal proceedings are on, the comments would be there. But India in this statement and this summoning of uh, uh, German and US envoy is clearly saying that please do not interfere with our internal matters and the judiciary is fair and free and uh, in a time-bound manner, it would do what is uh, uh, just and uh, right. And uh, Kadamni, the fact that this meeting with uh, Gloria Barbena took place uh, for uh, 40 minutes, uh, uh, quite a long duration for a meeting of this nature. Well, definitely, it's a very long duration uh, for a meeting of uh, this nature. But we also have to see that uh, uh, India's uh, relation with the uh, U.S. has a very wide uh, dimension. To uh, summon a U.S. diplomat here in South Block and to uh, tell that person, that diplomat, that what you are saying, what your State Department is saying, this is not right. And this is also because the first comment came on CAA. Even at that time, the envoy was not summoned, but uh, there was a very sharp comment that uh, those who do not understand the culture and the uh, uh, ethos of India, uh, the history of India, they should not be commenting about it. But after that rebuke, now again, this kind of comment uh, definitely would have uh, riled the officials and, uh, it, and uh, a strong message was deemed necessary so that this does not, does not happen again. All right, Kadamni, thanks so much for joining us with all those details. So that's the big development today. A top U.S. diplomat being summoned for a 40-minute meeting in the South Block this after the U.S. commented on the arrest of Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. Well, let's now get you election news uh, from Maharashtra and uh, muscle flexing in the MVA today. The Udav Thakre Shiv Sena named, uh, announced the names of uh, 17 candidates, including uh, for four seats in Mumbai. In fact, Sangli, which was under dispute between the Congress and Sena, has now been taken by Chandrahar Patil of the ship Sena. So till yesterday, Congress was keen on this seat and it was considered a Congress stronghold. But the ship Sena, uh, UBT ship Sena, they're announcing the candidatures. Mumbai Northwest was also under dispute between Congress and Sena, but now taken by Sena for its candidate, Amol Kirtikar. Uh, but this has uh, led to a sharp reaction from the Congress and uh, especially uh, Congress leader Sanjay Nirupam, who was hoping uh, for a ticket. He has now hit out over this, this announcement by the Shiv Sena and said that it is trying to finish the Congress in Mumbai and also asked the Congress leaders to end this alliance with the Shiv Sena. शिवसेना के हवाले कर दी गई वो निश्चित तौर पर कांग्रेस पार्टी को मुंबई में पूरी तरह से दफन करने का एक कार्यक्रम है लेकिन हमारा शुरू से आग्रह था कि आप 50-50 करिए तीन सीट हमारा तीन सीट आपका लेकिन जिस तरीके से शिवसेना ने जोर जबरदस्ती की है और एक तरह से कांग्रेस पार्टी को अपने घुटने पे लाके दे दिया है वह निश्चित तौर पर शिवसेना के पूरे नियत के ऊपर सवाल करने वाला है जो कांग्रेस का वोटर वो कहां जाएगा कांग्रेस को जो वर्षों से लगातार वोट करते आए हैं क्या वो शिवसेना के इस हरकत के बाद शिवसेना के पास जाएंगे शिवसेना को वोट देंगे मुझे इस बारे में संदेह है शिवसेना को इतना इतना एक्सट्रीम स्टैंड नहीं लेना चाहिए इससे कांग्रेस का जबरदस्त नुकसान है और कांग्रेस के नेतृत्व का ध्यान आकर्षित करना चाहता हूं कि आप अभी भी इंटरवीन करिए नहीं तो अलायंस तोड़िए अगर पार्टी को बचाना है तो अलायंस तोड़िए और मैदान में उतरिए लेकिन आप शिवसेना के साथ अलायंस करके अपने आप को हमेशा के लिए खत्म करने का जो फैसला कर रहे हैं वो बहुत ही आत्मघाती है पूरे कांग्रेस पार्टी के लिए और इसका असर पूरे महाराष्ट्र में पड़ेगा महाराष्ट्र से बाहर भी पड़ेगा आज शिवसेना उद्धवजी ने शिवसेने की याद जाहिर की है खरवी सांगली जाहिर करना मुंबई मधल सुधा 
धारावी जिथे येते तो मतदार संघ जाहीर करणं हे योग्य झालं नाही असं माझं मत आहे त्यांनी असं जाहीर करायला नको होतं ज्यावेळेस आम्ही चर्चेमध्ये आहोत यामध्ये शेवटी एकत्र ज्यावेळेस आम्ही आघाडी आहे तो आघाडी धर्म असतो तो सर्वांनीच पाळला पाहिजे त्यामुळं त्यांनी हे जागा जाहीर करणं योग्य नाही आमचा आजही आग्रह या जागेसाठी आहे एवढंच नाही तर भिवंडीच्या जागेसाठी सुद्धा आमचा आग्रह आहे आणि या बाबतीत जे जाहीर केलं आहे त्या बाबतीत शिवसेनेने फेरविचार करावा असे म्हणेल मुंबई में उत्तर पश्चिम लोकसभा की सीट 2014 में शिवसेना ने जीती 2019 में शिवसेना ने जीती तो 2024 में यह तय हुआ कि महाविकास आघाड़ी की तरफ से शिवसेना उद्धव बाला साहब ठाकरे के उम्मीदवार अमोल भैया कीर्तिकर चुनाव लड़ेंगे आपके ऊपर अन्याय हो रहा है यदि आपको टिकट नहीं मिल रहा है तो आप कांग्रेस पार्टी से जाकर कहिए आप कांग्रेस पार्टी पर दबाव बनाइए न कि टेलीविजन में आकर आप दबाव बनाते हैं और हम एक महाविकास आघाड़ी में हैं आप एक ऐसे आरोप लगा सकते हैं कि हम मदद करेंगे कि नहीं करेंगे पार्टी मदद करती है ना पार्टी ने तय किया है कि यह संयुक्त उम्मीदवार है और आप तो बार बार कह रहे हैं कि सात दिन के अंदर मैं अपने विकल्प ओपन रखा हूं इसका मतलब आपकी किसी और दल से बातचीत चल रही है जब किसी और दल से बातचीत चल रही है आपके विकल्प खुले हैं तो आप उस तरफ जाइए आपको शुभकामना है लेकिन हमारे उम्मीदवार के प्रति नफरत फैलाने का काम न कीजिए And more developments in the MVA today. Prakash Ambedkar announced that he would be going solo. He will be contesting from a cola. Remember, talks were underway with the MVA. However, he was pushing for more seats, which weren't forthcoming. So the Vanchit Bahujan Agadi declaring its first list, and it will go it alone in the upcoming elections in Maharashtra. And ETV's Radhika sent us this report. UBT Sena released its first list of candidates for Maharashtra which included 17 names in fact that has led to a lot of confusion chaos and disappointment among the allies in fact several disputed seats have been taken by Sena Congress not very happy with the list in fact as far as Sangli seat is concerned there were uh, numerous discussions that were going on Congress wanted that seat however Sena has fielded its candidate in that particular seat and several leaders within congress unhappy over it and even two seats within mumbai which include mumbai northwest as well as mumbai south central uh, which were also under dispute which the congress wanted have now been taken by sena in fact sanjay nirupam taking a press conference hitting out at both congress and sena because sanjay nirupam had been eyeing uh, this particular seat he'd been saying that uh, congress is bending over backwards uh, for uh, sena and uh, sena is dominating and will destroy destroy congress party in fact he's also given an ultimatum for congress to decide on this seat within a week or he will have other options to look out for so many within congress unhappy with sena's uh, list because uh, they feel many of the disputed seats were still under discussion and was still to be decided but before that uh, sena has taken claim and announced this particular list now another setback for mva is uh, after vba in fact uh, broke away from uh, the mva in fact uh, they were in talks for a possible alliance and uh, for possible seat sharing however vba has decided to go solo in the elections this is a big setback uh, mva was ready to give about 5 seats uh, to prakash ambedkar's uh, vba however vba deciding uh, to go solo not wanting to join hands with mva despite uh, long discussions and talks over the last uh, few weeks in fact uh, vba has also announced its list of uh, eight candidates uh, now this is as far as the entire sena list and the reaction to it and also vba are uh, breaking away ties and deciding to go solo is concerned as far as mahayuti is concerned we are yet to uh, sort of uh, come up with their they are yet to release a list for both uh, shinde sena as well as uh, for uh, of uh, ajit pawar ncp most likely uh, it will come out with names tomorrow bjp has, of course uh, released its list of at least 23 candidates there are many disputed seats among the mahayuti also so those uh, differences need to be ironed out before a formal announcement by sena and uh, ajit pawar uh, ncp is made uh, most likely there will be some sort of consensus on the seats uh, tomorrow 
Right, moving on to news now from West Bengal and the Prime Minister today continued with his series of phone conversations with candidates. Remember yesterday he spoken to a candidate who uh, was from Sandesh Khali. Today he spoke with Amrita Roy, a member of an erstwhile royal family there and BJP's uh, Krishna Nagar uh, Lok Sabha candidate. She's fighting the election against Trinamool leader Mahua Moitra. During the conversation, the Prime Minister said the BJP was committed to uprooting corruption. He also said he was working to ensure that money looted from the poor people in West Bengal and attached by the Enforcement Directorate was returned to them. Amruta ji, namaskar. Namaskar, Modi ji. You are very grateful. You have given me a chance to give people to serve. We will try 100% to do it. How is your opinion going on? अभी तो हम निकले हैं तो एक बीजेपी को उनका पिता का देहांत हो गया हम इधर ही आए हुए हैं तो अभी वापस जाके हम प्रचार में ही निकलेंगे अमृता जी आप महाराजा कृष्णराय चंची की विरासत को आगे ले जा रही हैं एक बात आपको हम शेयर करना चाहेंगे हम क्या कह सकते हैं जी जी जरूर मुझे अच्छा लगेगा ये जो महाराजा कृष्ण चंद्र का हम शामिली है तो उसका भी ये लोग विरोध कर रहे हैं क्या बोल रहे हैं कि वो ब्रिटिश के साथ साथ दिया था फिर वो मतलब हम लोगों को गद्दार समझते हैं क्यों क्या वो नहीं बोल रहा है इतना जमीन दान किया इतना सब लोगों के लिए किया भलाई के लिए किया वो सब नहीं बोल रहे हैं लेकिन क्या बोल रहे हैं तो हम बोला कि क्यों किया ऐसा महाराजा कृष्ण चंद्र अगर नहीं करते तो हमारा सनातन धर्म तो पूरा खत्म हो जाता है कि नहीं तो वो बात है क्योंकि तब का वो जो नवाब थे सिराज उद्दौला तो वो तो बहुत अत्याचारी भ्रष्टाचारी थे तो उसी लिए उन्होंने तो अकेला नहीं किया बहुत सारे राजाओं के मिलन हुआ उसके बाद सभी ने किया जगत सेठ भी थे और और राजाओं थे तो उसी सभी के मेहनत से ये काम सफल हुआ तो अगर नहीं होता आज हम हिंदू नहीं रह पाते हमारा भाषा दूसरा होता हमारा वेशभूषा एकदम अलग होता और सभी अलग हो जाते हम तो दूसरों के अधीन रहते ना यही बात है अमृता जी बचपन में हमारे यहाँ हम लोगों को जो पढ़ाया जाता था उसमें कृष्णचंद राय की समाज सुधार का काम बंगाल के विकास का काम बंगाल के विकास के मॉडल ये सब सुनने को मिलता था बचपन में अब देखिए ये वोट बैंक की राजनीति करने वाले लोग हैं तो बहुत ही अनाप शनाप आरोप लगाएंगे और 300 साल पहले की घटना निकालेंगे 200 साल पहले की घटना निकालेंगे और बदनाम करने का प्रयास करेंगे ये खुद अपने जो वर्तमान पाप है उसको छिपाने के लिए वो ऐसी चीजें ढूंढते रहते हैं लेकिन जब भगवान राम की बात आती है भगवान राम की बात आती है तो वो कहते हैं कि सबूत कहाँ है इतनी पुरानी बात क्यों निकालते हो लेकिन जब कृष्णचंद्र राय की बात आती है तो वो तुरंत निकालते हैं तो इस प्रकार से उनके दोगलापन होता है और आपको इसका बिल्कुल मन में प्रेशर नहीं लेना चाहिए आपने तो बंगाल का उज्जवल भविष्य और आपका हाँ। स्वयं का जीवन भी लोगों के लिए रहा है हाँ जी। और आपके सामने बंगाल की विरासत को बचाने की भी चुनौती है और आप इसे कैसे देख रही हैं आप हम पॉजिटिवली देख रहे हैं हमारा लड़ाई जो है लोगों का सेवा के लिए है प्रोडक्शन हटाने के लिए है और वंचित लोगों के उपकार में आने के लिए है all right so that was the prime minister's conversation uh, with uh, amrita roy and let's now uh, get you the latest on mahua moitra who is uh, the trinamool congress candidate who is contesting against amrita roy uh, mahua moitra has now been summoned by the enforcement directorate for questioning in an alleged foreign exchange violation case according to sources the agency wants to question miss moitra over transactions linked to a non resident external nre account as well as a few instances of foreign remittances 
and transfer of funds, according to sources. Uh, the agency's summons, that's its third to the former Krishnanagar Lok Sabha MP, came days after the CBI filed a police case and raided Mahwa Moitra's Kolkata home in the cash for query case that led to Ms. Moitra's usually controversial expulsion from parliament in December. The Trinamool Congress has said that Mahwa Moitra is being targeted for uh, being outspoken against the uh, against the government, a uh, central government, and criticizing Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So, uh, Trinamool Congress claiming that the agencies are being used against Mahwa Moitra. And now she has been summoned in this new case, an enforcement directorate case related to FEMA violations. Well, let's uh, go to uh, go across to Dr. Uh, Shartarupa, uh, Shartarupa, spokesperson of the BJP. Uh, your uh, reaction to this allegation by the Trinamool that Mahwa Moitra's uh, summons and her targeting by the probe agencies is politically motivated? Good afternoon, uh, Gaddi. You see, Trinamool has a habit of saying anything everywhere uh, is politically motivated. In fact, I would like to give them a thesaurus so that they can at least, you know, get up, get in different words instead of saying politically motivated, politically motivated. No, this one, if you remember, I mean, I don't want to go through the details over and over again. Mohua Moito has been giving away her password, merrily, to, you know, somebody outside, and all her questions have been typed from uh, outside. Now, the, the logic is that uh, she, she's been saying that she was fully aware Every time her uh, account was accessed, because the OTP came to her, which, in my opinion, makes it even worse. So here we have an elected representative from Krishnanagar who goes to Parliament and plays havoc with the IP security of, uh, of uh, Parliament. I mean, with this access, anything could have happened, I'm sure. She's given away as, an, as a member of Parliament. This right, so that case is being investigated by the CBI. This seems to be a fresh case enforcement directorate now uh, alleging some kind of a FEMA violation and summoning Ms. Moitra. She has already complained to the Election Commission about the CBI saying that, you know, this is all targeting as, at a time when she is busy campaigning in her constituency. Sargi, this is actually all related to the original case of, uh, you know, giving away her password. She has been happily accepting cash she keeps saying that where's the cash? There are only some gifts, one lipstick and a bag. But there is a lot of cash involved, as her uh, ex, uh, the, the friend of hers, Hiranandani, has been very, uh, very clear. Uh, no, not Hiranandani. There's another man. I keep forgetting. There's so many names. Now, this friend of hers has been saying that she, he has seen cash being, in, uh, cash being transacted between the two. So, therefore, I think uh, the CBI was on an inquiry based on a direction from the parliament. And uh, ED has, 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 has latched on to this because CBI does not make direct uh, direct arrests. It's the ED which, which handles all the financial uh, you know, misgivings or the mistransactions. And then uh, I don't know whether she will be nabbed, but she's been called for questioning. So let us go. All right. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on the program. With that, we'll uh, slip into a short break. More news coming up on the other side. Stay with us. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. This show isn't just about news from the southern states. It's one that looks at the rest of India and the world from a diverse South India point of view. Because NDTV has always taken the southern view seriously. The Southern View with Veera Raghav, only on NDTV 24-7.
talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. Hello and welcome to NDTV Auto. What I have with me today is real special. It is the latest EV from Audi, Q6. What's special about it is it's based on a completely new platform, PPE, Premium Platform Electric. This platform Audi has developed for their electric vehicles and it has a lot to offer. <laughs> The company says the new platform PPE helps Audi Q6 e-tron achieve 30% less energy consumption with 33% better system performance. With the Q6, Audi is also introducing its electronic architecture E3 1.2 which allows customers to experience digitalization directly in the vehicle. Making Audi Q6 e-tron a truly tech marvel. So here it is, all that you need to know about Q6 e-tron. Audi Q6 e-tron is the upcoming EV from Audi stable and is expected to come to Indian shores by the end of this year. International launch is expected in second half of this year. It is a 4.7 meter SUV which will occupy the space between Q4 and Q8 e-tron. It will come in two variants, Q6 e-tron Quattro and the more powerful SQ6 e-tron. What we have today with us is the S variant. What I want to show you, the first in the look of Audi Q6 are these DRLs. They are matrix LED DRLs with active signature. That means you can change the pattern that gets projected from these DRLs and they also move while the car is on the move. That means you can actually have an active DRL. And I believe this feature is the highlight of Audi's upcoming baby. Up front is the grille. Now what I want to show you is this single frame grill. Audi is calling it inverted single frame grill and it looks very interesting. It's all closed off but looks very nice with these piano black inserts given here and then we have seen these uh, very flattish Audi logo in other products but here there is a little bit of 3D element in the logo. Now you have to notice this very prominent shoulder line which goes all the way to the tail line. Welcome back. Let's get you news now from Karnataka where resentment is building in Kolar and Congress uh, troubles uh, for the party ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. Uh, MLAs and MLCs from this Lok Sabha constituency have threatened to resign if Karnataka Minister K.H. Muniapa's uh, son-in-law, Chikka Pedana, is fielded from here. Uh, five MLAs and two MLCs raised this and uh, even met with the Speaker at the Vidhan Sauda. Sitting Minister M.C. Sudhakar initially alleged that Congress High Command paid no heed to their demand but later claimed they have been asked to wait for some time and that the High Command as well as the state leadership would arrive at a decision soon. K.H. Muniapa is uh, Food and Civil Supplies Minister. His daughter Rupa Shashidhar is already an MLA. And today is the last day of nominations for the first phase of the election. So some uh, big names are filing their nominations. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari filed his nomination uh, from Nagpur, where it was a show of strength. He was accompanied uh, by Devinder Padnavis and Praful Patel as he filed his nomination there. Also, uh, B Tamil Nadu BJP President Anna Malai, who had uh, taken out a, 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 a foot a, a pad yatra in the state, also filed his nomination in Coimbatore, while a DMK leader, the Anidhi Maran, uh, filed his papers uh, from Chennai today.
ट्रैकिंग की बात से इनफैक्ट याद आया अगर इस डिड यू नो कि आप अब ट्रैक कर सकते हैं अबाउट योर कंट्रीब्यूशन टूवर्ड्स एन हेल्थियर एनवायरमेंट बिकॉज अगर आप ऊबर यूज करते हैं तो आई एम श्योर आपको अभी पता होगा कि उसमें दिस इज एन ऑप्शन कि आप इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स को बुक कर सकते हैं इफ यू प्रेफर गोइंग सस्टेनेबल लेकिन अब यहाँ पे एक ऑप्शन आ गया है जहाँ पे आपको ऊबर दिखाता है कि आप क्या सेव कर रहे हैं कंपेयर टू अगर आप एक नॉर्मल व्हीकल में जाते हैं तो आप कितने कार्बन एमिशंस होने से रोक रहे हैं और वो आपको दिखाता है इन फॉर्म ऑफ ट्रीज बीइंग प्लांटेड तो कहीं ना कहीं ये एक अच्छी चीज़ है जहाँ पे यू कैन कीप ट्रैक ऑफ योर यू नो योर कंट्रीब्यूशन कि आप अपने डेली हैबिट्स में जब आप सुबह ऑफिस के लिए ऊबर ले रहे हैं जब आप शामों के बाहर जा रहे हैं अगर आप एक ई यूज़ करते हैं सो हाउ मच एसेंशली आर यू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टूवर्ड्स एनवायरमेंट दिस सर्विस इज लाइव नाउ इन मल्टीपल इंडियन सिटीज़ तो नेक्स्ट टाइम यू कैन ऊबर आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट कि अगर आप एक इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल यूज़ करते हैं इट विल kind of contribute towards the environment or you can clearly track in form of number of trees being planted so i'm sure normally we friends sometimes we see each other's uber ratings ki kisko kitne star mile hain kisi ki kitni rating hai so i'm sure going next this could be a thing that we all might track ki acha maine kitne trees ko plant kiya by going electric ya kaun aage jeet raha hai it's a nice thing did you know this if yes amazing if no please let me know you know the address it's tg@ndtv.com Stay informed and entertained with the new and updated NDTV News app. You can watch all our channels live, listen to podcasts, read breaking and exclusive news from around the world and more. Download the NDTV app today and get access to the best journalism. Welcome back. Let's get you news uh, from Karnataka now. In resentment in Kolar, uh, Congress troubles for the party ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. MLAs and MLCs from this constituency have threatened to resign if Karnataka Minister K H Muniyappa's son-in-law Chikka Pedana is fielded from here. Uh, five MLAs and MLCs raised uh, this issue and even met with the Speaker at the Vidhan Sabha. Sitting Minister MC Sudhakar initially alleged that Congress High Command paid no heed to their demand, but later claimed they have been asked to wait for some time, and that the High Command as well as state leadership will arrive at a decision soon. Akesh Muniyappa, as Food and Civil Supplies Minister, his daughter Rupa Shashidhar is already an MLA. NDTV's Nehala spoke with Mr. Sudhakar. I have all respects for the party High Command, but here. we want others to be given representation so that is the only issue and uh, since the uh, some people are trying to uh, put pressure on the high command to get the seat so i thought we can uh, there is no no point continuing but rather uh, sit back at home rather than continuing So we have with us Kesh Muniyappa, Karnataka Congress Minister. Sir, the resentment growing in Kolar Congress. What is your statement for that? Congress party is a big party. Naturally. these things will be happen but unfortunately it has uh, reached to the peak i was surprised on that issue because we all together called by the chief minister and deputy chief minister we met and we explained our problems and we appeal to them i never lost in the election only one time i lost you given opportunity i will win this seat i have got my own experience and they also told we want some people they have also proposed ultimately we all ramesh kumar the both the ministers bharati suresh dr sudhakar myself and all mlas together we have 
taken a decision, it will leave it to the high command. The chief minister and the deputy chief minister and the president of the PCC can take the decision. We abide by it. That what was the it? end. Thereafter, this is surprise development has takes place. On this issue, I don't want to say anything on this issue. This is, I am the sin sincere and the disciplined soldier of the party. Whatever the decision the party will take, I will abide by it. Okay. Sir, but you. also uh, most of the rebel leaders have been uh, no, say, have been stating that they uh, no, they will no, be I waiting for a decision issue. from the high command. Okay, thank Suppose you. the high command's thank decision you. is not in your favor, sir. Whatever they take decision, I will abide by it. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was Mr. Munyapa talking about whatever the decision of the high command, they will abide by that. With camera person Govind Pratipa Raman in Bengaluru for NDTV. So we have with us case. All right, let's go across uh, to Pratibha now for more. So Pratibha, resentment in a Kolar against this nomination by the Congress. And now uh, the Congress High Command and the state top leaders are going to uh, look into all this and take a decision? That's right. In fact, it started off with a meeting uh, between K.H. Munyapa as well as Malik Arjun Kharge this morning where uh, they did speak about the resentment that has been brewing. It snowballed into a bigger issue uh, around afternoon where uh, five MLAs as well as uh, two MLCs went to the Vidhan Sada to meet with the speaker, discuss about uh, the concerns that they have. One of the main concerns that they raised was that uh, they have been treated as slaves, quote unquote, um, under K.H. Munyapa. And we have to talk about uh, the kind of uh, portfolios that have already been given to Mr. Munyapa as well as his uh, kid and kin. They did point out that his daughter is already an MLA who's also the chairman of one of the boards here and uh, the fact that uh, the son-in-law would also be given a ticket proves that uh, dynasty politics exists in the Congress and this needs to be eradicated. These were some of the concerns that were laid out and the Congress High Command as well as the state leadership has taken note of this uh, and has also uh, uh, brought in uh, some amount of time so that they could placate these leaders or bring about uh, some kind of a solution to this entire problem that is brewing in Kolar Commerce. All right, uh, Pratibha, thanks so much for joining us uh, with all those uh, details. So some infighting there in the Congress in Karnataka. Well, news now from Maharashtra, where also there has been uh, some amount of infighting in the Mahavikas Aghadi. Uh, and uh, you've had, after uh, the Uddhav Thakre Shiv Sena announced its candidates uh, for uh, 17 seats, including four seats in Mumbai, uh, Congress leader Sanjay Nirupam has hit out over this announcement and also uh, said that the Congress should end its alliance uh, with the Shiv Sena. Uh, Sangli was also under dispute between the Congress and Sena, but that too uh, candidate has been announced by the Shiv Sena. Till yesterday, Congress was keen on this seat, while Mumbai Northwest uh, was under dis dispute between the Congress and Sena, but now taken by Sena's Amol Kirtikar. शिवसेना के हवाले कर दी गई वो निश्चित तौर पर कांग्रेस पार्टी को मुंबई में पूरी तरह से दफन करने का एक कार्यक्रम है लेकिन हमारा शुरू से आग्रह था कि आप 50-50 करिए तीन सीट हमारा तीन सीट आपका लेकिन जिस तरीके से शिवसेना ने जोर जबरदस्ती की है और एक तरह से कांग्रेस पार्टी को अपने घुटने पे लाके दे दिया है वह निश्चित तौर पर शिवसेना के पूरे नियत के ऊपर सवाल करने वाला है जो कांग्रेस का वोटर वो कहां जाएगा कांग्रेस को जो वर्षों से लगातार वोट करते आए हैं क्या वो शिवसेना के इस हरकत के बाद शिवसेना के पास जाएंगे शिवसेना को वोट देंगे मुझे इस बारे में संदेह है शिवसेने की याद जाहिर है खरवी सांगली जाहिर कर मुंबई मधल सुधा धारावी जी थे तो मतदार संघ जाहिर कर योग्य मत है जाहिर कराएं नको तो ज्यास चर्चे मध्य आहोत या मधे शेवटी एकत्र ज्यास आम आघाड़ी है तो आघाड़ी धर्म आतो तो सर्वानी पड़ा पाजे ये जाग जाए कर योग्य नहीं आमच आज ही आग्रह या जागे सा है एवड नहीं तो भिवंटी जागे सुधा आम आग्रह है आबत जे जाहिर के बाबती शिवसेने ने फेर विचार करावा अं मेल मुंबई में उत्तर पश्चिम लोकसभा की सीट 2014 में शिवसेना ने जीती 
2019 में शिवसेना ने जीती तो 2024 में यह तय हुआ कि महाविकास आघाड़ी की तरफ से शिवसेना उद्धव बाला साहब ठाकरे के उम्मीदवार अमोल भैया कीर्तिकर चुनाव लड़ेंगे आपके ऊपर अन्याय हो रहा है यदि आपको टिकट नहीं मिल रहा है तो आप कांग्रेस पार्टी से जाकर कहिए आप कांग्रेस पार्टी पर दबाव बनाइए न कि टेलीविजन में आकर आप दबाव बनाते हैं और हम एक महाविकास आघाड़ी में हैं आप एक ऐसे आरोप लगा सकते हैं कि आ, हम मदद करेंगे कि नहीं करेंगे पार्टी मदद करती है ना पार्टी ने तय किया है कि यह संयुक्त उम्मीदवार है और आप तो बार बार कह रहे हैं कि सात दिन के अंदर मैं अपने विकल्प ओपन रखा हूं इसका मतलब आपकी किसी और दल से बातचीत चल रही है जब किसी और दल से बातचीत चल रही है आपके विकल्प खुले हैं तो आप उस तरफ जाइए आपको शुभकामना है लेकिन हमारे उम्मीदवार के प्रति नफरत फैलाने का काम न कीजिए Now more news uh, from the MVA in Maharashtra and Prakash Ambedkar, who was in talks uh, with the MVA for seats, will now go solo as he is not getting the seats that he was demanding. And Prakash Ambedkar himself will contest uh, from Akola. And Vanchit Bahujan Aghadi has declared its first list uh, from Maharashtra, where they will go it alone. And the TV's Radhika sent us this report on all the developments in Maharashtra. UBT Sena released its first list of candidates for Maharashtra which included 17 names in fact that has led to a lot of confusion chaos and disappointment among the allies in fact several disputed seats have been taken by Sena Congress not very happy with the list in fact as far as Sangli seat is concerned there were uh, numerous discussions that were going on Congress wanted that seat however Sena has fielded its candidate in that particular seat and several leaders within congress are unhappy over it and even two seats within mumbai which include mumbai northwest as well as mumbai south central uh, which were also under dispute which the congress wanted have now been taken by sena in fact sanjay nirupam taking a press conference heading out at both congress and sena because sanjay nirupam had been eyeing uh, this particular seat he'd been saying that uh, congress is bending over backwards uh, for uh, sena and uh, sena is dominating and will dis joy congress party in fact he is also given an ultimatum for congress to decide on this seat within a week or he will have other options to look out for so many within congress unhappy with sena's uh, list because uh, they feel many of the disputed seats were still under discussion and was still to be decided but before that uh, sena has taken claim and announced this particular list now another setback for mva is uh, after vba in fact uh, broke away from uh, the mva in fact uh, they were in talks for a possible alliance and uh, for possible seat sharing however vba has decided to go solo in the elections this is a big setback uh, mva was ready to give about 5 seats uh, to prakash ambedkar's uh, vba however vba deciding uh, to go solo not wanting to join hands with mva despite uh, long discussions and talks over the last uh, few weeks in fact uh, vba has also announced its list of uh, eight candidates and uh, now this is as far as the entire sena list and the reaction to it and also vba are uh, breaking away ties and deciding to go solo is concerned as far as mahayuti is concerned we are yet to uh, sort of uh, come up with their they are yet to release a list for both uh, shinde sena as well as uh, for uh, of uh, ajit pawar ncp most likely uh, it will come out with names tomorrow bjp has of course uh, released its list of at least 23 candidates there are many disputed seats among the mahayuti also so those uh, differences need to be ironed out before a formal announcement by sena and uh, ajit pawar uh, ncp is made uh, most likely there will be some sort of consensus on the seats uh, tomorrow In other news the government today held a 40 minute meeting with United States acting deputy chief of mission Gloria Barbena who was summoned to the Ministry of External Affairs office in Delhi South block and details were not released but this comes a day after a US state department spokesperson said it is monitoring reports of Delhi chief minister Arvind Kejriwal's arrest Arvind Kejriwal the first sitting chief minister to be arrested uh, it, uh, the spokesperson also called on new delhi to ensure a fair and timely legal process Uh, for the jailed Aam Aadmi Party leader, the U.S. State Department's comments came in turn uh, days after Germany's Foreign Office also stressed that Mr. Kejriwal, like any other Indian citizen facing charges, is entitled to a fair and impartial trial. The Indian government had reacted strongly to the comment, summoning the German envoy and labeling the Foreign Office spokesperson's remarks as blatant interference in internal matters. So now, uh, summoning uh, the U.S. diplomat as well. 
and uh, the India statement has said that India reacts, uh, that India's legal process is based on independent judiciary and that casting aspersions is unwarranted. Uh, states expected to be respectful of other sovereignty could end up setting an unhealthy precedence, is what the India statement has said on the comments from the US, in turn uh, discouraging anyone else also from commenting. The US had said about Kejiwal's arrest in comments that were made to Reuters is that we are closely monitoring Arvind Kejiwal's arrest. We encourage a fair, transparent and timely legal process for Chief Minister Kejriwal. All right, so the U.S. diplomat being summoned a day after that statement by the U.S. Home Department. With that, we'll slip into a short break. Do remember, we're encouraging all of you to come out and cast your vote for the upcoming elections, especially those who will be voting for the first time. And do send us your video messages at hashtag ndtv 18 vote and we'll show them right here. Hello and welcome to NDTV Auto. I'm here in Jaipur for Volkswagen Brand Conference and they have made a slew of announcements here. Let's talk more about them with Mr. Ashish Gupta, Brand Director, Volkswagen India. You know, you have uh, again changed the lineup of uh, Taigun. Uh, what was the purpose behind it? and? Uh, uh, will that make things simpler for people? No, I think, you know, uh, the endeavor has been, and if you, you know, I take back, uh, take you back two years when we introduced the Taigo and we introduced it on two line structure, the dynamic line, which was basically based on the one liter and the performance line, which, were based, which was based on the 1.5 liter. Over the period of time, what we have also realized is that customers are not differentiated by, you know, engine types. Customers are more and more moving towards style differentiation, you know. I, what kind of a style appeals to me and what kind of a uh, you know style appeal does not appeal to me or appeals to another set of customers so the endeavor this time has been to now uh, put our line structure in place uh, to appeal to style more than you know the, the differentiation by the engine line so that's what we have done so now we have the chrome line which is more elegant you know for the customers who like that kind of a uh, uh, design language available both on the 1.5 and the 1 liter and then the sporty look with more black uh, themed exterior and interior elements which appeals to customer who are looking for more sporty rugged kind of an appeal that uh, appeals to them so that's why today we have launched the GT plus sport uh, on the Tygoon and also the GT line which actually brings the GT-ness of our cars into the one liter uh, lineup as well with the GT line. Does this impact pricing? Yes, of course. If you look at, uh, you know, the GT line, the GT line is now, uh, has all the GT elements, including 17-inch wheels, including six airbags standard, including the black elements in the exterior and the interior at a price point, which is between the high line and the top line. Yeah. So it's a much more accessible. Welcome back, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is continuing with his series of phone conversations with various BJP candidates and today he spoke with Amrita Roy, a member of an erstwhile royal family and BJP's Krishna Nagar candidate. She is fighting the election against Trinamool leader Mahua Moitra. During the conversation, he said the BJP was committed to uprooting corruption in the country and also that he was working to ensure that the money looted from poor people in West Bengal and attached by the Enforcement Directorate was returned to them. Amruta ji, namaskar. Namaskar, Modi ji. You are very proud of me. You have given me a chance to serve people. We will try 100%. आपका चुनाव अभियान कैसा चल रहा है? आ, अभी तो हम निकले हैं तो एक बीजेपी को उनका पिता का देहांत हो गया हम इधर ही आए हुए हैं तो अभी वापस जाके हम प्रचार में ही निकलेंगे। अमृता जी 
आप महाराजा कृष्णराय चंदी की विरासत को आगे ले जा रही है एक बात आपको हम शेयर करना चाहेंगे हम क्या कह सकते हैं जी जी जरूर मुझे अच्छा लगेगा ये जो महाराजा कृष्ण चंद्र का हम शामिली है तो उसका भी ये लोग विरोध कर रहे हैं क्या बोल रहे हैं कि वो ब्रिटिश के साथ साथ दिया था फिर वो मैंने हम लोगों को गद्दार समझते हैं क्यों क्या वो नहीं बोल रहा है इतना जमीन दान किया इतना सब लोगों के लिए किया भलाई के लिए किया वो सब नहीं बोल रहे हैं लेकिन क्या बोल रहे हैं तो हम बोला की क्यों किया ऐसा महाराजा कृष्ण चंद्र अगर नहीं करते तो हमारा सनातन धर्म तो पूरा खत्म हो जाता है कि नहीं तो वो बात है क्योंकि तब का वो जो नवाब थे सिराज उद्दौला तो वो तो बहुत अत्याचारी भ्रष्टाचारी थे तो उसी लिए उन्होंने तो अकेला नहीं किया बहुत सारे राजाओं के मिलन हुआ उसके बाद सभी ने किया जगत सेठ भी थे और और राजाओं थे तो उसी सभी के मेहनत से ये काम सफल हुआ तो अगर नहीं होता आज हम हिंदू नहीं रह पाते हमारा भाषा दूसरा होता हमारा वेशभूषा एकदम अलग होता और सभी अलग हो जाते हम तो दूसरों के अधीन रहते ना यही बात है अमृता जी बचपन में हमारे यहाँ हम लोगों को जो पढ़ाया जाता था उसमें कृष्णचंद राय की समाज सुधार का काम बंगाल के विकास का काम बंगाल के विकास के मॉडल ये सब सुनने को मिलता था बचपन में अब देखिए ये वोट बैंक की राजनीति करने वाले लोग हैं तो बहुत ही अनाप शनाप आरोप लगाएंगे और 300 साल पहले की घटना निकालेंगे 200 साल पहले की घटना निकालेंगे और बदनाम करने का प्रयास करेंगे ये खुद अपने जो वर्तमान पाप है हाँ। उसको छिपाने के लिए वो हाँ। ऐसी चीजें ढूंढते रहते हैं लेकिन जब भगवान राम की बात आती है भगवान राम की बात आती है तो वो कहते हैं कि सबूत कहाँ है इतनी हाँ, पुरानी हाँ, बात क्यों निकालते हो लेकिन जब कृष्णचंद्र राय की बात आती है तो वो तुरंत निकालते हैं तो इस प्रकार हाँ। से उनके दोगलापन होता है और आपको हाँ। इसका बिल्कुल मन में प्रेशर नहीं लेना चाहिए आपने तो बंगाल का उज्जवल भविष्य और आपका हाँ। स्वयं का जीवन भी लोगों के लिए रहा है हाँ जी। और आपके सामने बंगाल की विरासत को बचाने की भी चुनौती है और आप इसे कैसे देख रही हैं आप हम पॉजिटिवली देख रहे हैं हमारा लड़ाई जो है लोगों का सेवा के लिए है प्रोडक्शन हटाने के लिए है और वंचित लोगों के उपकार में आने के लिए है संदेश खाली से भी हमारी बहनों ने बेटियों ने वो आवाज उठाई जो एक महिला मुख्यमंत्री और उसके ऐसे शासन के खिलाफ थी जहां शासन चरमरा गया है कुप्रबंधन है भ्रष्टाचार है संरक्षण उन लोगों को है जो बहन बेटियों के साथ बलात्कार अत्याचार करते हैं और एक महिला मुख्यमंत्री ममता बनर्जी उस राज्य की महिलाओं को संरक्षण नहीं दे पाई बल्कि संरक्षण दिया है तो भ्रष्टाचारियों को बलात्कारियों को Well, let's go across to Saurabh now for more and Saurabh interesting a series of conversations the Prime Minister is having today. He spoke uh, to uh, Amrita Roy, who is contesting against Mawa Moitra, and he spoke out about corruption and uh, ED, etc. Yesterday we saw he spoke to a Sandesh uh, Khali, a survivor, Rekha Patra, who is also contesting this election. So really trying to uh, put the spotlight on their various criticisms of Mamata Banerjee, be it women protection or corruption. Well, you know, the Trinamool, uh, of course, has hit back uh, at uh, you know uh, the comments, and of course, this is uh, something that obviously uh, you know the BJP will also focus on. And you know, Prime Minister Modi's calls to these candidates is something uh, that uh, is uh, you know a huge morale booster for them ahead of election. And uh, what they are saying is that uh, you know uh, these uh, these are candidates whom the BJP has, of course, you know uh, put up against the TMC now. Uh, Obviously, women candidates is something that uh, the BJP is focusing on, which is why if you see the prime minister has called uh, two candidates so far from Bengal, and both of them are women. One, of course, in Krishna Nagar, uh, and of course, uh, Amrita Roy faces, you know, uh, Mohan Moitra uh, of uh, the 
Trinamul Congress. And the other, of course, is Rekha Patra, who takes on uh, Hadinurul Islam, who is, of course, the Trinamul Congress candidate there. So, obviously, uh, you know, uh, this, these are seats where uh, the BJP uh, has put up the prize candidates. And, uh, you know, and these seats are going to see a contest. And, yes, uh, the Prime Minister, of course, taking on the TNC, saying that, you know, uh, uh, they, you know that uh, they, they will try to uh, dig out stuff to, you know, uh, hide their current uh, misdeeds, and of course the TMC hitting back at the BJP saying, uh, look, uh, you know, uh, uh, what, uh, you know, there is no question of, uh, you know, why are they withholding uh, Bengal's dues, you know, all of that. So obviously uh, this is going to be a very, very, uh, you know, uh, strongly fought campaign in uh, Bengal, uh, both on behalf of the TMC and the BJP as they take on each other in these elections. All right, uh, Saurabh, thanks so much for joining us uh, with all those details. With that time for us to slip into a short break, news updates continue on the other side. Stay tuned. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. On his 39th birthday, superstar Ram Charan visited iconic Tirupati temple and offered prayers along with his wife Upasana and daughter Klin Kara. Chief Justice Deepai Chandrachu, NDTV, big exclusive. We provide justice to common citizens and there is no case which is too small even for the highest court of the nation. CGI ka kaam karne ka lagandaaz. Sometimes I get emails even in the middle of the night and I'm always available to answer those emails. 25 crore final judgments and orders. This data is available online. As on 29th February 2024, 3.09 crore cases have been heard on video conferencing mode. Chief Justice Chandrachur se jodi ansuni baate. Saadhi teen baje subay mera din shuru ho jata hai. My best friend, who is my wife, Kalpana. Both of us are vegans. Khabro mein aapka bharosa. NDTV. Debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre, conversations that get to the core of the debate. Hello and welcome to NDTV Auto. What I have with me today is real special. It is the latest EV from Audi, Q6. What's special about it is it's based on a completely new platform, PPE, Premium Platform Electric. This platform Aldi has developed for their electric vehicles and it has a lot to offer. company says the new platform PPE helps Audi Q6 e-tron achieve 30% less energy consumption with 33% better system performance. With the Q6, Audi is also introducing its electronic architecture E3 1.2 which allows customers to experience digitalization directly in the vehicle. Making Audi Q6 e-tron a truly tech marvel. So here it is, all that you need to know about Q6 e-tron. Audi Q6 e-tron is the upcoming EV from Audi stable and is expected to come to Indian shores by the end of this year. International launch is expected in second half of this year. It is a 4.7 meter SUV which will occupy the space between Q4 and Q8 e-tron. It will come in two variants, Q6 e-tron Quattro and the more powerful SQ6 e-tron. What we have today with us is the S variant. What I want to show you, the first in the look of Audi Q6 are these DRLs. They are matrix LED DRLs with 
active signature. That means you can change the pattern that gets projected from these DRLs and they also move while the card is on the move. That means you can actually have an active DRL. And I believe this feature is the highlight of Aldi's upcoming baby. Up front is the grill. Now what I want to show you is this single frame grill. Aldi is calling it inverted single frame grill and it looks very interesting. It's all closed off but looks very nice with these piano black inserts given here. India summons a U.S. diplomat over comments made by the U.S. State Department on the arrest of Chief Minister Kejriwal. A 40-minute meeting took place with the U.S. Deputy Chief of Mission. U.S. had called for a fair, transparent process for the Delhi Chief Minister. A Mahabharat in the MVA over a Mumbai seat. Congress leader Sanjay Nirupam upset after Adodh of Thakre Shiv Sena announces candidates for a Mumbai seats. He dares the UBT Sena, also calls on the Congress to snap ties with the Sena. Prime Minister Modi today spoke to the BJP's uh, candidate uh, uh, from uh, Amrita Roy, who is contesting from Krishna Nagar, which is the constituency uh, that Mahua Moitra too is contesting. He says the BJP is committed to uprooting corruption in the country. And it's the last day for nomination filing for the first phase of the Lok Sabha elections. Today, Nitin Gadkari filed his nomination from Nagpur. Tamil Nadu BJP President Anamalai from Coimbatore and DMK leader Dayanidhi Maran from Chennai. Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV. I'm Gargi Raut. Up first, let's get you all the developments taking place in Karnataka where there's trouble for the Congress party in the Kolar constituency. MLAs and MLCs uh, from this Lok Sabha constituency have threatened to resign if Karnataka Minister K. H. Muniapa's son-in-law, Chikka Pedana, is fielded from there. In fact, five MLAs and two MLCs raised this and even met with the Speaker at the Vidhan Sauda. Now, sitting Minister MC Sudhakar initially alleged that the Congress High Command did not pay any heed to their demands, but later said that they have been asked to wait for some more time and that the High Command as well as the state leadership will arrive at a decision soon. Meanwhile, K. H. Munyapa is the Food and Civil Supplies Minister and his daughter Rupa Sashidhar is already an MLA. I have all respects for the High Command, but here we want others to be given representation. So that is the only issue. And uh, since the, uh, some people are trying to uh, put pressure on the High Command to get the seat, so we thought we can, uh, there's no, no point continuing. We'd rather uh, sit back at home rather than continuing. We have with us Keesh Monyapa, Kanatka Congress Minister. Sir, there is something in Kolar Congress. What is your statement for that? Congress party is a big party. Naturally, these things will be happen. But Unfortunately, it has uh, reached to the peak. I was surprised on that issue because we are all together. Called by the Chief Minister and Deputy Chief Minister, we met and we explained our problems and we appealed to them. I never lost in the election, only one time I lost. You give an opportunity, I will win the seat. I have got my own experience. And they also told, we want some people, they also propose. Ultimately, we all, Ramesh Kumar, the, both the ministers, Bharati Suresh, Dr. Sudhakar, myself, and all MLAs, together, we have taken a decision, it will leave it to the high command. The chief minister and the deputy chief minister and the president of the PCC, can take the decision, we abide by it. That what was the it? end. Thereafter, this is surprise development that takes place. On this issue, I don't want to say anything on this issue. This is, I am the sin sincere and disciplined soldier of the party. Whatever the decision the party will take, 
I will abide by it. Oh, so, but you. also, uh, most of the rebel leaders have been uh, no, say, have been stating that they uh, no, they will no, be I waiting for a decision from the high command. Okay, thank Suppose you. the high command's thank decision you. is not in your favor, sir. Whatever they take decision, I will abide by it. Well, let's go across to Pratibha now for more. And Pratibha, the minister, they're saying he'll abide by whatever the decision is. And uh, the reason for this rebellion is, as you know, Mr. Munyapa already a minister, his uh, daughter is already an MLA, and now his son-in-law getting the ticket from Kolar. That's right, and that apart, uh, five MLCs, five MLAs as well as two MLCs have been uh, talking about how they've been facing hardship under his leadership and uh, also they want new faces and new uh, people to get uh, enough opportunities in the Kola Congress belt. And uh, that is precisely why they have been... Uh, um, driven to take such an extreme step of at least resigning at this point in time to ensure that uh, new faces would actually emerge in Kola Congress. This was the statement that was made by one of the sitting ministers in Karnataka and that is uh, Mr. Sudhakar who made this uh, statement and uh, he did also mention that all of them would huddle uh, at uh, Mangaluru after uh, submitting their resignations by meeting the speaker at uh, Vidana Sauda. But uh, once they met uh, the speaker at the Vidhan Sauda, I think the high command as well as state leadership into and asked them uh, to wait for a while before they would arrive at a common decision. And when I did uh, question Mr. K.H. Muniapa on this, he did mention that initially when the suggestion was made for uh, fielding his uh, son-in-law, all of them were uh, in concurrence with this idea and they said that whatever decision would be taken by the high command, they would abide by it. It came as a root shock is what Mr. Muniapa said. But we'll have to wait and see whether there would be a common ground that would be achieved by the high command as well as the state leadership ahead of the local of our election. Gargi. All right. Thanks so much, uh, Pratibha, for joining us with all those la latest developments. So, uh, trouble uh, for the Congress there in the Kolar seat. All right. An update now on Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, whose health has deteriorated in ED custody. Remember, uh, today the High Court had taken up his application against his arrest, but news coming in on his health situation and his sugar level is, uh, according to reports, going up and down. Remember, he is a diabetic, uh, and uh, so Arvind Kejriwal's sugar level has dropped to 46, which doctors say is very dangerous for his levels to go so low this on a day that the chief minister has challenged the in the delhi high court his arrest by the enforcement directorate in the money laundering case related to the now scrap liquor policy and the high court bench was to take up the matter later uh, kejriwal's counsel senior advocate abhishek singhvi had questioned the ed's delaying tactics where they had asked for three uh, more weeks to reply uh, to the points raised to the petition mr kejriwal has said in his petition that his arrest violated his human human rights and that the ED has failed to prove the crime that arrest without interrogation shows that the current action is politically motivated. Also, Arvind Kejriwal's wife today addressed a press conference where she also hit out over uh, uh, the probe agencies and said that Arvind Kejriwal will make a big revelation in this alleged liquor policy scam. She says 250 locations were raided but no money was ever found. इस सो कॉल्ड शराब घोटाले की जांच में ईडी ने पिछले दो साल में 250 से ज्यादा रेड पार लिए वो इस सो कॉल्ड शराब घोटाले का पैसा ढूंढ रहे हैं अभी तक किसी भी रेड में एक पैसा नहीं मिला मनीष जी के यहां रेड मारी संजय सिंह जी के यहां रेड मारी सतीन जैन जी के यहां रेड मारी एक भी पैसा नहीं मिला अरविंद जी ने कहा है कि इसका खुलासा वे 28 मार्च को कोर्ट के सामने करेंगे सारे देश को सच सच बताएंगे कि इस सो कॉल्ड शराब घोटाले का पैसा है कहा देखिए हमने देखा था लालू प्रसाद यादव जी के समय जब वो चारा घोटाले में फंसे थे तब राबड़ी जी अनाउंसमेंट करती थी आहिस्ता आहिस्ता उन्होंने गद्दी संभाल ली अब अरविंद केजरीवाल जी के समय जो नैतिकता की बातें करते थे आज भ्रष्टाचार के दलदल में गिरी हुई गहराई तक गिरी हुई आम आदमी पार्टी नजर आती है जिनका सांसद जिनका स्वास्थ्य मंत्री जिनका उप मुख्यमंत्री जिनका शिक्षा मंत्री जिनके पार्षद ये सब जेल में है और इनका मुख्यमंत्री शराब घोटाले के किंग कट्टर बेईमान 
अरविंद केजरीवाल भी जेल में है Well, let's go across to Ashwarya now for more uh, on the plea in the High Court. And uh, Ashwarya, when is this going to be taken up now? And take our viewers through what has happened so far. Well, order will be pronounced at around 4 p.m. Uh, and the order will be uploaded by uh, the uh, judge of Delhi High Court. Uh, intense hearing took place for almost two and a half hours, in which uh, almost for two hours it was Abhishek Manu Singh who was pressing up the issue of uh, how illegal uh, this arrest is, according to him. And uh, uh, it was Abhishek Manu Singh, the counsel of Arvind K. Jival, stood up and stated that. Uh, he has all the right to uh, to counter what enforcement directorate is saying and let's hear on uh, the bail plea at least to to which uh, it was the judge who heard uh, uh, mr singh vi uh, key highlights of this entire hearing uh, uh, remains that uh, it is those accused who were arrested in the alleged delhi liquor policy case which turned approver and on those approvers behalf it was uh, uh, Kejriwal and uh, the statement that was given was in favour of the enforcement directorate to which ultimately Arvind Kejriwal was arrested. Abhishek Manu Singh we also stated that uh, Arvind Kejriwal is a sitting chief minister and without any statements being recorded under section 50 of the PMLA how Arvind Kejriwal was arrested uh, whether he was running away or whether any at any point of time Arvind Kejriwal said that he won't be giving or recording statements to the enforcement directorate uh, Abhishek Manu Singh we uh, time and again stated that uh, it is just because elections are around the corner timing is something that uh, enforcement directorate is seeking and therefore the reason perhaps they are also demanding 3 weeks time to reply perhaps we all know that tomorrow uh, enforcement directorate custody of Arvind Kejriwal is ending and uh, he had to be produced before the court what the top uh, sources from the enforcement directorate uh, are stating to us is that they will be demanding for the custody of arvind kejriwal as to counter as to uh, uh, confront him with the other accused and also uh, record further statements uh, it is abhishek manu singh who has stated that this is just a delay tactic on the part of enforcement directorate why 3 weeks time or 2 weeks time is something that enforcement directorate is asking to file a reply uh, on the bail application that has been uh, filed by arvind kejriwal it's an urgent hearing today itself uh, you know uh, both the sides has to be heard to which it was uh, sv raju on the part of enforcement directorate said that uh, they need at least two weeks of time to reply because it was two of the councils who represented arvind kejriwal and spoke for almost two hours to which they need at least uh, two weeks of time uh, to reply uh, the order has been reserved as of now uh by uh, the uh, in, uh by the uh, delhi high court and at 4 pm we'll get to know that uh, whether arvind kejriwal get some sort of relief today or uh, the custody uh, will be given to enforcement directorate to continue and tomorrow when he will be produced uh, he, uh, the enforcement directorate will seek further custody on the other side of course political showdown continues sunita kejriwal coming up uh, on on camera and uh, stating the facts that it was 250 rates that that has taken place till now no evidence no cash seizures has been done it is just because elections are around the corner and they want to muzzle the voice of opposition uh, in fact arvind kejriwal tomorrow in the court will expose how this money trail uh, uh, went on and where is this money uh, uh, had had ultimately gone of course uh, hinting out to the entire electoral bond issue where we all knew that how aam aadmi party since long had been alleging that it was uh, almost uh, 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 you know uh, crores of uh, rupees which has gone to bjp accounts via those accused uh, arrested earlier and later turned approver and uh, purchased that electoral bond so hinting out at that clearly uh, uh, you know uh, it will be now at 4 pm when we will get to know that uh, whether arvind kejriwal will get some sort of relief or not from the delhi high court All right thanks so much for that Ashwarya so 4 pm we'll know the decision of the high court also Arvind Kejriwal's wife they're saying that on the 28th he's going to make a big revelation
Well, election news now from Maharashtra, where there's trouble in the MVA, and uh, 17 names were released uh, by the Uddhav Thakre Shiv Sena, which also included four seats in Mumbai. And this after uh, there were uh, disputes over several seats. The Shiv Sena has gone out and announced their candidate, Sangli, was under dispute between the Congress and Sena. But now Chandrahar, a partil of the Sena, has been announced for there. Uh, till yesterday, the Congress was keen on this seat. Uh, Mumbai Northwest was under dispute between the Congress and Sena, but now Amol uh, Kirtikar has been announced uh, from there as well. Mumbai North East was also under dispute between the NCP and the Sena. Sanjay Patil has been announced as the, uh, as the candidate from there. So uh, Congress is unhappy over the seats being announced and leaders including Sanjay Nirupam, Bala Sahib Thorat and others are expressing disappointment, saying names from disputed seats like Sangli and some seats in Mumbai were announced even as discussions were still underway. Sanjay Nirupam, who is eyeing the Northwest uh, seat, has slammed the ship Sena and said the Congress should snap ties with them and shouldn't tolerate the Sena's dominance. I have said that in the past, I have said that in the past, I have said that in the past, Congress party in Mumbai has been in the past, and the Congress has लेकिन हमारा शुरू से आग्रह था कि आप 50 50 करिए तीन सीट हमारा तीन सीट आपका लेकिन जिस तरीके से शिवसेना ने जोर जबरदस्ती की है और एक तरह से कांग्रेस पार्टी को अपने घुटने पे लाके दे दिया है वह निश्चित तौर पर शिवसेना के पूरे नियत के ऊपर सवाल करने वाला है जो कांग्रेस का वोटर वो कहां जाएगा कांग्रेस को जो वर्षों से लगातार वोट करते आए हैं क्या वो शिवसेना के इस हरकत के बाद शिवसेना के पास जाएंगे शिवसेना को वोट देंगे मुझे इस बारे में संदेह है शिवसेना को इतना इतना एक्सट्रीम स्टैंड नहीं लेना चाहिए इससे कांग्रेस का जबरदस्त नुकसान है और कांग्रेस के नेतृत्व का ध्यान आकर्षित करना चाहता हूं कि आप अभी भी इंटरवीन करिए नहीं तो अलायंस तोड़िए अगर पार्टी को बचाना है तो अलायंस तोड़िए और मैदान में उतरिए लेकिन आप शिवसेना के साथ अलायंस करके अपने आप को हमेशा के लिए खत्म करने का जो फैसला कर रहे हैं वो बहुत ही आत्मघाती है पूरे कांग्रेस पार्टी के लिए और इसका असर पूरे महाराष्ट्र में पड़ेगा महाराष्ट्र से बाहर भी पड़ेगा आज शिवसेना उद्धवजी शिवसेने की याद जाहिर के लिए खरवे सांगली तीन जाहिर करना कि मुंबई मधल सुधा धारावी जिथे तो मतदार संघ जाहिर करना ये योग्य मज मत है जाहिर कराएगा नको तो ज्यास आम चर्चे मध्य आहोत ये शेवटी एकत्र ज्यास आम आघाड़ी है तो आघाड़ी धर्म आतो तो सर्वानी पड़ला पाजे जागा जाहिर कर योग्य नहीं आम आज ही आग्रह या जागे आहे एवड नहीं तो भिवंटी जागे सुधा आम आग्रह है बाबत जे जाहिर के बाबतीत शिवसेने ने फेर विचार करावा अभी मेरे मुंबई में उत्तर पश्चिम लोकसभा की सीट 2014 में शिवसेना ने जीती 2019 में शिवसेना ने जीती तो 2024 में यह तय हुआ कि महाविकास आघाड़ी की तरफ से शिवसेना उद्धव बाला साहब ठाकरे के उम्मीदवार अमोल भैया कीर्तिकर चुनाव लड़ेंगे आपके ऊपर अन्याय हो रहा है यदि आपको टिकट नहीं मिल रहा है तो आप कांग्रेस पार्टी से जाकर कहिए आप कांग्रेस पार्टी पर दबाव बनाइए न कि टेलीविजन में आकर आप दबाव बनाते हैं और हम एक महाविकास आघाड़ी में है आप एक ऐसे आरोप लगा सकते हैं कि हम मदद करेंगे कि नहीं करेंगे पार्टी मदद करती है ना पार्टी ने तय किया है कि यह संयुक्त उम्मीदवार है और आप तो बार बार कह रहे हैं कि सात दिन के अंदर मैं अपने विकल्प ओपन रखा हूं इसका मतलब आपकी किसी और दल से बातचीत चल रही है जब किसी और दल से बातचीत चल रही है आपके विकल्प खुले हैं तो आप उस तरफ जाइए आपको शुभकामना है लेकिन हमारे उम्मीदवार के प्रति नफरत फैलाने का काम न कीजिए East its first list of candidates for Maharashtra, which included 17 names. In fact, that has led to a lot of confusion, chaos and disappointment among the allies. In fact, several disputed seats have been taken by Sena. Congress not very happy with the list. In fact, as far as Sangli seat is concerned, there were numerous discussions that were going on. Congress wanted that seat. However, Sena 
has fielded its candidate in that particular seat and several leaders within Congress unhappy over it and even two seats within Mumbai which include Mumbai Northwest as well as Mumbai South Central uh, which were also under dispute which the Congress wanted have now been taken by Sena. In fact Sanjay Nirupam taking a press conference hitting out at both Congress and Sena because Sanjay Nirupam had been eyeing uh, this particular seat. He'd been saying that uh, Congress is bending over backwards uh, for uh, Sena and uh, Sena is dominating and will destroy destroy Congress party. In fact, he's also given an ultimatum for Congress to decide on this seat within a week or he will have other options to look out for. So many within Congress unhappy with Sena's uh, list because uh, they feel many of the disputed seats were still under discussion and were still to be decided. But before that, uh, Sena has taken claim and announced this particular list. Now, another setback for MVA is uh, after VBA, in fact, uh, broke away from uh, the MVA. In fact, uh, they were in talks for a possible alliance and uh, for possible seat sharing. However, VBA has decided to go solo in the elections. This is a big setback. Uh, MVA was ready to give about five seats uh, to Prakash Ambedkar's uh, VBA. However, VBA deciding uh, to go solo, not wanting to join hands with MVA despite uh, long discussions and talks over the last few weeks. In fact, uh, VBA has also announced its list of uh, eight candidates. Uh, now, this is as far as the entire Sena list and the reaction to it and also VBA are uh, breaking away ties and deciding to go solo is concerned. As far as Mahayuti is concerned, we are yet to uh, sort of uh, come up with, their, they are yet to release a list for both uh, Shinde Sena as well as uh, for uh, of uh, Ajit Pawar NCP. Most likely uh, it will come out with names tomorrow. BJP has of course uh, released its list of at least 23 candidates. There are many disputed seats among the Mahayuti also. So those uh, differences need to be ironed out before a formal announcement by Sena and uh, Ajit Pawar uh, NCP is made. Uh, most likely there will be some sort of consensus on the seats uh, tomorrow. In other news now, the government today held a 40-minute meeting with United States Acting Deputy Chief of Mission, Gloria Barbena, who was summoned to the Ministry of External Affairs office in Delhi's South Block. Now, details of the meeting have not been released, but this comes a day after the U.S. State Department spokesperson said it is monitoring reports of Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's arrest and called on New Delhi to ensure a fair and timely legal process for the jailed up leader. Uh, the U.S. State Department's comments came in turn, days after Germany's foreign office had also stressed that Mr. Kejiwa, like any other Indian citizen facing charges, is entitled to a fair and impartial trial. So after uh, that comment from Germany, now a comment from the U.S. A home department, a State Department, and this has led uh, to uh, the summoning of a senior U.S. diplomat. The U.S. government had said, we are closely monitoring Arvind Kejiwa's arrest. We encourage a fair, transparent and timely legal process for Chief Minister KG while now India has put out a statement on these remarks and reacted very strongly to the US State Department's remarks on Arvind Kejival who was the first sitting chief minister to be arrested uh, India says India's legal process is based on independent judiciary casting aspersions is unwarranted states expected to be respectful of others and sovereign uh, other sovereignty and could end up setting unhealthy precedents well, let's go across to Kadambani now for more. And Kadambani, a very strong statement uh, from India on the U.S.'s remarks on Arvind Kejriwal's arrest. Well, indeed, this is a very strong statement where India says that fellow democracy should not set such a precedence and that uh, the judiciary in India is uh, uh, time-bound, uh, objective and uh, uh, committed to uh, what uh, it uh, does. And also casting aspersions is uh, something which is unwarranted. That is clear uh, uh, in the statement which uh, Indian uh, uh, Foreign Ministry has said. But this is also a very strong statement because uh, a similar com comment was made by uh, the spokesperson of German uh, uh, foreign ministry and after that India had uh, uh, summoned the German uh, uh, envoy here and uh, the diplomat here and this is the second instance where uh, US uh, State uh, Department has said something like this on which this strong statement has come. So it should also be looked at as something which is uh, a message not only to the US but also to the other countries that India's internal matters are, should remain internal, they are not welcome to comment on that and also that the judiciary which has always been uh, very independent here, that is something uh, 
which has been stressed again and that has uh, been asked to be taken note of. Gargi? All right. Uh, thanks so much, Kadamni, for joining us uh, with all those details. So strong uh, statement there uh, in response to the U.S. comments. And this comes after uh, there was a sharp response also to Germany's comments. Uh, with that, time for us to slip into a short break. Do remember, we're asking you to uh, cast, your elect uh, cast your vote in the upcoming elections, especially the young people. And our aim is to encourage voters aged 18 and above to show up in strength. So do send us your video messages on hashtag NDT. TV 18 ka vote and we'll show them right here. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. One day this lecture hall will be made of code. And driverless cars would be trapped in intersections. But even in this maze of the future, you can't wish away health. It's time to become more resilient. Ten years of Banega Swast India, we have grown and achieved so many milestones. And now I have a plan to beat the urgency, to stop breathing with difficulty, to relieve getting choked with inactivity. Energize our government, our environment, our society and ourselves. Everyone, everywhere, every day. Banega Swast India, One World Hygiene. हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एनडी टीवी पर फ्रेंड्स इट्स टाइम नाउ फॉर माय फेवरेट सेक्शन अबाउट दिस एपिसोड बिकॉज हम हमेशा जब क्यू एन ए की बात करते हैं सो आस्क टीजी इज द थिंग जो मुझे बहुत पसंद आती है बिकॉज आई गेट टू आंसर ऑल योर क्वेश्चन सो लेट सी इस हफ्ते हमारे पास में क्या क्या क्वेश्चन है Okay, so you have asked that आपको जानना है which is the better device between OnePlus 12 and Xiaomi 14 in terms of camera and performance. So let me get this straight. In terms of camera. Xiaomi might jump slightly ahead of the OnePlus 12, not by a huge margin, but like let's say slightly ahead. But if I were to recommend you an overall good product in terms of camera performance, software, you know, like everything combined, I would recommend OnePlus 12 over the Xiaomi. Considering Xiaomi uh, doesn't have the kind of brand value in that premium segment. OnePlus, you know, has been there for a long time now. Or OnePlus 12 is an amazing smartphone overall. If you combine, especially the clean experience of Oxygen OS, yeah, even the camera is fantastic. Xiaomi 14 is a little bit ahead, but overall, I would say OnePlus 12 would be a better pick. Okay, so now we have Xiaomi 14 and OnePlus 12. 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 Now we have Xiaomi 14 and
और अगर आपने वो नंबर अपने अकाउंट में ऐड किया है इट्स वेरी सिंपल यू जस्ट गो टू द पासवर्ड रीसेट ऑप्शंस और जो आपको ओ आपके फोन पे आ रहा है दैट सिक्योरिटी कोड जस्ट एंटर दैट एंड गूगल शुड लेट यू रीसेट योर पासवर्ड सो जस्ट यूज अ डिफरेंट डिवाइस टू लॉग इन पॉपुलर सिम कार्ड एक दूसरे फोन में जहाँ पे अगर आपको एस दिख रहे हैं आते हुए तो उस एस कमिंग इन टू योर फोन मे बी यू कैन बोरो फोन एंड फैमिली और उसके बाद में आप गूगल पे जब लॉग इन करने जाएंगे इफ यू फॉलो द इंस्ट्रक्शन इट माइट गाइड यू कि आपके फोन पे एक ओटीपी आने वाला है दैट यू नो सिक्योरिटी कोड ऑफ गूगल एंड इजीली यू कैन रीसेट योर पासवर्ड ऐसा कोई ऐप है जिससे एक फोन से पांच छह स्पीकर्स या योर फोन्स कनेक्ट कर सकते हैं आ इफ यू वांट टू कनेक्ट फाइव टू सिक्स स्पीकर्स और ईयरफोन्स वेल आई एम नॉट श्योर व्हाट यू आर अप टू इफ यू वांट टू सेट अप अ पार्टी सीन ऑल टुगेदर तो डेफिनेटली आप किसी ऐप से तो ये काम नहीं कर पाएंगे देर आर अ फ्यू फोन्स दैट सपोर्ट मल्टीपल ब्लूटूथ डिवाइसेस बट वो भी मैंने जहाँ तक देखा है इट्स लिमिटेड टू ओनली टू कि आप दो ईयरफोन्स या दो स्पीकर्स एक साथ कनेक्ट कर सकते हैं वाया ब्लूटूथ ऑल्टरनेटिवली वॉट यू कैन यूज इज देर आर मल्टीपल स्प्लिटर्स तो इट्स अ हार्डवेयर डिवाइस जो अपने आप फोन में अटैच करते हैं और वहां पे आपको एज एन आउटपुट मल्टीपल 3.5 पॉइंट mm वाले जैक्स मिल जाते हैं सो यू कैन कनेक्ट मल्टीपल वायर वेलकम बैक इन न्यूज कमिंग इन अनादर जोल टू दी आम आदमी पार्टी इन पंजाब एज सुनील रिंकू इज सेट टू क्विट दी आम आदमी पार्टी द सिटिंग एम पी एंड ज्वाइन द बीजेपी लेट गो अक्रॉस टू गजाली फॉर मोर एंड गजाली दिस इज एज यू एट प्रिडिक्टेड आफ्टर द बीजेपी अनाउंस इट विल गो इट अ लोन इन पंजाब येस्ट डे लॉट्स ऑफ यू नो चेंज टेकिंग प्लेस ऑन द ग्राउंड Yeah, more defections to follow. So, yesterday, the Congress MP Ravneet Bittu switched over to the BJP, and today, Aam Aadmi Party sitting MP from Jalandhar, mm-hmm. Mr. Sushil Rinku, is joining. And we are also picking up that a uh, sitting M- MLA of Aam Aadmi Party from the same district, Mr. Sheetal Anugrah, is also uh, will also be accompanying Mr. Sushil Rinku. So, why is Mr. Rinku joining? Uh, what we have picked up is that he was perhaps upset that all the promises he made during the five polls of Jalandhar Lok Sabha uh, last year have not been fulfilled yet. Another. reason being that uh, uh, he has been fighting election for the 2022 assembly elections of congress ticket for the 23 lok sabha by for a sub ticket and he was yet again announced the 2024 lok sabha candidate for the aam aadmi party and what he was facing was perhaps a fund crunch and he wanted the party to support him over that uh, and uh, he also made a lot of buzz a couple of weeks ago when he went to uh, ajodhya uh, to pay his obeisance at the uh, ram temple there but was perhaps uh in communicado with the party leaders and workers and once he returned chief minister bhagwant man also met him on tuesday amid all these fears of defection but uh despite the meeting's assurances he is going to join the bjp today at around 4 pm all right so sitting mp and jalandhar candidate sushil rinku all set to uh, join the bjp so a jol to aam aadmi party there we well, moving on uh, to other news now and the uh, breaking news now coming in from Kerala where the enforcement directorate has now filed a money laundering case against the Kerala chief minister's daughter Veena and the IT firm owned by her and others in an illegal payments case according to officials so a PMLA case now filed against the Kerala chief minister's daughter remember uh, the opposition has criticized uh, the center over the use of PMLA as as it's a very stringent a uh, law under which getting bail is extremely difficult it's the same a uh, law under which uh, Delhi chief minister Arvind Kejriwal has been arrested and now a PMLA case against a Pinarayi Vijayan's daughter in Kerala The ED has filed a money laundering case against uh, Kerala Chief Minister's daughter Veena as well as the IT firm owned by her and others in a case of alleged illegal payments and uh, the case is over payments uh, by the Chief Minister's daughter's uh, IT firm so a money laundering case being filed against the Kerala Chief Minister's daughter let's go across to Mukesh Sengar for more and Mukesh give us more details of this case that has now been filed देखिए जो ईडी है उसने केरल के मुख्यमंत्री पिन्यारी विजयन की बेटी वीना विजयन के खिलाफ मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग का मामला दर्ज किया है और ये मामला जो है जो एस एफ आई ओ है सीरियस फ्रॉड इन्वेस्टिगेशन यूनिट उसकी शिकायत पर दर्ज हुआ है दरअसल एक मिनरल फर्म है जिसके साथ 
गैर कानूनी लेन देन का ये मामला है इस मामले में जो एस एफ आई है उसने शिकायत दर्ज कराई थी और जांच में ये बात सामने आई थी कि कोचीन मिनरल्स और रोटाइल प्राइवेट लिमिटेड ये कंपनी है इस कंपनी ने जो वीना विजन की कंपनी है जिसका नाम है एक्सालॉजिक सॉल्यूशन प्राइवेट लिमिटेड इस कंपनी को 2018 से लेकर 2019 के बीच में करीब 1.72 करोड़ का पेमेंट किया था और उसमें ये बात सामने आई थी जांच में कि जो वीना विजन की आईटी फर्म है उस समय ये कोई भी सर्विस नहीं दे रही थी इसके बावजूद इसको पेमेंट किया गया तो वीना विजन इस मामले में बेनिफिशरी हैं और इस मामले की जांच सबसे पहले जो इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट है उसने शुरू की थी इसके बाद एस एफ ने जांच शुरू की और एस ने इस मामले में शिकायत दर्ज की थी जिसको कि ई ने ई डी ने टे, टेक ओवर किया और फिर ई ने अब इस मामले में मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग का मामला दर्ज किया है जो वीना विजन की कंपनी है वो कलकत्ता कोलकाता सॉरी केरला हाईकोर्ट भी गई थी और केरला हाईकोर्ट में उन्होंने ईडी की जांच का विरोध किया था लेकिन हाई कोर्ट से उनको कोई राहत नहीं मिली थी और इसके बाद जो ईडी है उसने अब इस मामले में मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग का मामला दर्ज कर लिया है तो केरल के मुख्यमंत्री की बेटी वीना विजन की मुश्किलें बढ़ने वाली हैं क्योंकि करोड़ों के लेन देन का ये मामला है जिसमें एलिगेशन ये है कि गलत तरीके से पेमेंट किया गया और कहीं ना कहीं वीना विजन को इस मामले में लाभ हुआ वो बेनिफिशरी हैं तो इसको लेकर ई ने केस दर्ज कर लिया है और ई बहुत जल्दी इस मामले में जो रेट्स हैं जो कार्रवाई है वो भी करने वाली है All right thanks so much Mukesh for joining us with those details so Mukesh bringing us uh, the breaking news uh, that a PMLA case has been filed by the enforcement directed against Kerala chief minister Pinarayi Vijayan's uh, daughter Veena related to her IT company uh, so this case uh, filed against Veena Vijayan and her IT uh, company and some others and uh, this is a probe of uh, in a case of alleged illegal payments made by a private mineral firm to her and the company and uh, this uh, case as uh, mukesh was telling us earlier it was a complaint filed by the serious fraud investigation office the sfio uh, which is an investigative arm of the union corporate affairs ministry and now this case has been taken over by the ed well let's go across to arpita for more on this story and arpita so uh, this is a big uh, setback uh, to uh, the kerala chief minister at least the optics of it with the ed filing a case a pmla case against his daughter veena yes gargi so now finally ed has initiated an investigation now remember this case happened last year when the controversy in the state uh, erupted after it was reported that uh, cmrl had paid uh, rupees 1.72 crore to Veena Vijayan uh, who is chief minister's daughter between 2017 and 2020 and uh, it was alleged that CMRL had an agreement with uh, Veena's IT firm Exologic uh, which is based in Bengaluru now uh, after this uh, the case was taken over and now finally ED has taken over the investigation and is uh, looking into the matter All right thanks so much uh, Arpita for joining us with those details so that's the big breaking news right now that uh, the Kerala chief minister's daughter uh, now is being investigated by the enforcement director that has filed a PMLA case against her uh, Veena Vijayan and her IT company as well as others uh, and it's a case of alleged illegal payments being uh, having been made by a private mineral firm to her and the company which is now uh, being probed as Arpita was saying this case happened last year and now the pmla uh, case has been registered so the ed registering a case under the prevention of money laundering act which is a draconian uh, law uh, uh, which under which several opposition leaders have already been arrested or are facing charges uh, with that we'll slip into a short break more news updates coming up on the other side stay with us Hello Moto Motorola India's best 5G smartphone brand
So friends, next I have is this uh, shiny new device coming straight from the Realme factory. This is the all new Realme Narzo 70 Pro 5G. And I'm shiny because because see, of course it's shiny, I mean, the way it looks, even the frame is very shiny. At the same time, this phone really shines bright when we look at features. Because here also a lot of interesting things Realme is packed. What we have is a Sony AMX 890 sensor with 50 megapixels a primary camera that has OIS. At the same time, inside the phone is really packed with features. In fact, we can control this phone with gestures because this has got something that Realme calls air gestures. So, you can see it and have a closer look about how this Realme Narzo 70 Pro really is. I would say very interesting mid-range smartphone coming straight from Realme. Finally, the wait is over. Realme's latest hotshot, the Narzo 70 Pro 5G, finally India mein launch ho gaya hai. This phone is packed with amazing features that will make you go wow. This phone mein hai ek rainwater smart touch feature. This means no more tensions about phone usage in a light drizzle. The powerful MediaTek Dimensity chipset lets you game, multitask and do everything else at lightning speed. The 5000 mAh battery and Superbook fast charging will get you back in action in no time. The phone's horizon glass design gives it a super premium head-turning look. Realme has kept it affordable. Narzo 70 Pro 5G starts at just Rs 18,999. You can grab it in stylish glass green and glass gold colors from March 22nd on Amazon and the Realme website. With its awesome display, camera and overall performance, the Realme Narzo 70 Pro 5G is a total Pesa Vasool deal. If you're looking for a smartphone that's powerful, stylish and affordable, this is it. Welcome back. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today continued with his series of phone conversations with BJP candidates. Today he spoke with Amrita Roy, a member of the erstwhile royal family and BJP's Krishna Nagar Lok Sabha candidate. She's fighting the election against Trinamu leader Mahua Moitra. Now speaking to her, the Prime Minister said he is working to ensure that nearly 3,000 crore looted from poor people in West Bengal and attached by the Enforcement Directorate is returned to them. Amrita Ji, Namaskar. नमस्कार मोदी जी आप तो बहुत आभारी हूँ आप मुझे चांस दिए हैं लोगों की सेवा करने के लिए हम 100 परसेंट कोशिश करेंगे आपका चुनाव अभियान कैसा चल रहा है आ, अभी तो हम निकले हैं तो एक बीजेपी को उनका पिता का देहांत हो गया हम इधर ही आए हुए हैं तो अभी वापस जाके हम प्रचार में ही निकलेंगे अमृता जी आप महाराजा कृष्ण राय चंची की विरासत को आगे ले जा रही है एक बात आपको हम शेयर करना चाहेंगे हम क्या कह सकते हैं जी जी जरूर मुझे अच्छा लगेगा ये जो महाराजा कृष्ण चंद्र का हम शामिल है तो उसका भी ये लोग विरोध कर रहे हैं क्या बोल रहे हैं कि वो ब्रिटिश के साथ साथ दिया था फिर वो मैंने हम लोगों को गद्दार समझते हैं क्यों किया वो नहीं बोल रहा है इतना जमीन दान किया इतना सब लोगों के लिए किया भलाई के लिए किया वो सब नहीं बोल रहे हैं लेकिन क्या बोल रहे हैं तो हम बोला की क्यों किया ऐसा महाराजा कृष्ण चंद्र अगर नहीं करते तो हमारा सनातन धर्म तो पूरा खत्म हो जाता है कि नहीं तो वो बात है क्योंकि तब का वो जो नवाब थे सिराजुद्दौला तो वो तो बहुत अत्याचारी भ्रष्टाचारी थे तो उसी लिए उन्होंने तो अकेला नहीं किया बहुत सारे राजाओं के मिलन हुआ उसके बाद सभी ने किया जगत सेठ भी थे और और राजाओं थे तो उसी सभी के मेहनत से ये काम सफल हुआ तो अगर नहीं होता आज हम हिंदू नहीं रह पाते हमारा भाषा दूसरा होता हमारा वेशभूषा एकदम अलग होता और सभी अलग हो जाते हम 
तो दूसरों के अधीन रहते हैं ना यही बात है अमृता जी बचपन में हमारे यहाँ हम लोगों को जो पढ़ाया जाता था उसमें कृष्णचंद्र राय की समाज सुधार का काम बंगाल के विकास का काम बंगाल के विकास के मॉडल ये सब सुनने को मिलता था बचपन में अब देखिए ये वोट बैंक की राजनीति करने वाले लोग हैं तो बहुत ही अनाप शनाप आरोप लगाएंगे और 300 साल पहले की घटना निकालेंगे 200 साल पहले की घटना निकालेंगे और बदनाम करने का प्रयास करेंगे ये खुद अपने जो वर्तमान पाप है उसको छिपाने के लिए वो ऐसी चीजें ढूंढते रहते हैं लेकिन जब भगवान राम की बात आती है भगवान राम की बात आती है तो वो कहते हैं कि सबूत कहाँ है इतनी पुरानी बात क्यों निकालते हो लेकिन जब कृष्णचंद्र राय की बात आती है तो वो तुरंत निकालते हैं तो इस प्रकार से उनके दोगलापन होता है और आपको इसका बिल्कुल मन में प्रेशर नहीं लेना चाहिए आपने तो बंगाल का उज्जवल भविष्य और आपका हाँ। स्वयं का जीवन भी लोगों के लिए रहा है हाँ जी। और आपके सामने बंगाल की विरासत को बचाने की भी चुनौती है और आप इसे कैसे देख रही हैं आप हम पॉजिटिवली देख रहे हैं हमारा लड़ाई जो है लोगों का सेवा के लिए हाँ। है प्रोडक्शन हटाने के लिए है और वंचित लोगों के उपकार में आने के लिए है संदेश खली से भी हमारी बहनों ने बेटियों ने वो आवाज उठाई जो एक महिला मुख्यमंत्री और उसके ऐसे शासन के खिलाफ थी जहां शासन चरमरा गया है कुप्रबंधन है भ्रष्टाचार है संरक्षण उन लोगों को है जो बहन बेटियों के साथ बलात्कार अत्याचार करते हैं और एक महिला मुख्यमंत्री ममता बनर्जी उस राज्य की महिलाओं को संरक्षण नहीं दे पाई बल्कि संरक्षण दिया है तो भ्रष्टाचारियों को बलात्कारियों को टाइम फॉर अस स्लिप इनटू अ शॉर्ट ब्रेक ऑन द अदर साइड विल गेट यू ऑल द आईपीएल न्यूज स्टे विद अस हेलो मोटो मोटोरोला इंडियाज बेस्ट फाइव जी स्मार्टफोन ब्रांड NDTV Auto. I'm here in Jaipur for Volkswagen brand conference, and they have made a slew of announcements here. Let's talk more about them with Mr. Ashish Gupta, brand director, Volkswagen India. You know, you have uh, again changed the lineup of uh, Tiguan. Uh, what was the purpose behind it, and uh, uh, will that make things simpler for people? No, I think you know uh, the endeavor has been, and if you you know, I take back uh, take you back two years when we introduced the Tiguan. We introduced it on two line structure: the dynamic line, which was basically based on the one liter, and the performance line, which were based which was based on the 1.5 liter. Over the period of time, what we have also realized is that customers are not differentiated by you know engine types. Customers are more and more moving towards style differentiation. You know, I. what kind of a style appeals to me and what kind of a uh, you know style appeal does not appeal to me or appeals to another set of customers so the endeavor this time has been to now uh, put our line structure in place uh, to appeal to style more than you know the, the differentiation by the engine line so that's what we have done so now we have the chrome line which is more elegant you know for the customers who like that kind of a uh, uh, design language available both on the 1.5 and the 1 liter and then the sporty look with more black uh, themed exterior and interior elements which appeals to customer who are looking for more sporty rugged kind of an appeal that uh, appeals to them so that's why today we have launched the GT plus sport uh, on the Tiguan and also the GT line which actually brings the gtness of our cars into the 1 liter uh, lineup as well with the gt line 
Does this impact pricing? Yes, of course. If you look at uh, you know the GT line, the GT line is now uh, has all the GT elements, including 17-inch wheels, including six airbag standard, including the black elements in the exterior and the interior, at a price point which is between the high line and the top line. Yeah, so it's a much more accessible, affordable uh, GT. Uh, you know, uh, the other big announcement is about ID4, uh, yes. and we have seen ID4 earlier as well. But uh, what is the plan now? When do you think it will uh, actually come to? A clash of the two new captains at the Chepok, and it was Ruturaj Gaikwad who came out on top with a thumping win. Hello and welcome to Lights, Camera and 6i. Musama Shab, uh, Chennai Super Kings produced a clinical display to outwit Gujarat Titans by 63 runs in their second home match. CSK dished out a solid batting display courtesy Rachin Ravindra and Shivam Dubey, among others, to post a daunting total of 206. In response, the Gujarat Titans could manage just 143 for 8 in their allotted 20 overs. Tonight. Fills me with pride to introduce two new, two new captains and a new brewing rivalry. <laughs> Chennai openers went hammer and tongs and the men in yellow got off to a flying start. Picked up. That's monstrous. Stage of the game. In came Russia then created instant impact for the Titans. Sending Ratchin Ravindra for 46 there, runs. That the ball was close to the wicket keeper. And on cue. Go straight and a long way through. So, which way you go? But Chennai kept the good work going as Shivam Dubey carried his good form and stitched a crucial 57 run partnership with Daryl Mitchell. Maybe. Rashid Khan was the only silver lining for Gujarat as he struck for the second time. Dubey went for a well-made half-century. The new inductee to the Chennai team, Samir Rizvi's late fire, that took CSK to a total of 206 runs. A daunting total at the Chepok. And uh, as far as the Gujarat innings is concerned, Gujarat, they had a daunting task at hand. It's uh, never easy to chase a big total at the Chepok and uh, the Titans got to know that firsthand. The chase uh, never got going. They had only 34 on the board when their openers fell. 114 when their top scorer, Sai Sudarshan, fell. And in between all of that, uh, there was a young 42-year-old MS Dhoni flying uh, to take a brilliant catch. The Titans were in danger of being bowled out at one point of time. Thankfully, that didn't really happen, which basically means that their run rate could have been even worse, which it did not. But uh, what was worse for Shubman Gill's team was the fact that this was their worst loss in terms of runs in the IPL. Uh, in Chennai, especially when you are not really sure about how the wicket will be, it's always important that you bat well and bowl well, irrespective of your batting first or batting second. And definitely to have that kind of uh, wickets in hand going at the last end always helps over here. And with, I thought personally Rachin batted brilliantly in the power play, took the game away. And then from there on, I think we were always ahead of them. It was just about managing wickets, managing risk. And I feel even Jinx played a good role and even Shivam to come up with a good role as well. And not to forget our youngster Rizvi as well. All right, uh, Rajiv Seth, former India cricketer, and uh, Naresh Mansukhani join us to uh, talk about that match and uh, the match that is going to happen today. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Let me start uh, with Rajiv Seth. Uh, Rajiv, Virat Kohli said uh, uh, that he still got it. And after yesterday's match, uh, we can very uh, confidently say that uh, Dhoni still got it as well. What a brilliant catch that was. Indeed, uh, Osama, good morning to all. Uh, a wonderful match, a brilliant uh, display by CSK, the dominance that they have shown over the years. They've proved that they have actually been very consistent in uh, framing their team, uh, edition after edition. Uh, the catch that you're talking about is phenomenal because it's, it tells about his uh, reflexes at this age. And you know, the best part is that Dhoni doesn't play domestic. So yeah. he comes and plays a big, big events like this and uh, still keeps up to the levels that is desired. 
that's the brilliance of the guy and uh, you know more than the skill that he's displayed uh, in the wicket keeping department it was his all round uh, show he did help butu in every possible way when it came to making those crucial changes and you know the yeah. field placements and not that ruturaj was not aware of it it's just that yeah. you know these kind of things rub on you and i think uh, overall it was a dominance because that's the reason you see a result of 63 runs lost so i think they never got uh, you know gt to even settle down for a minute and and that's where reflected in the innings having a, having 200 odd on board is always a task but then you got to plan your way out and that's what gt lacked narish how impressed were you with uh, ruturaj gaikwad especially with his captaincy Well, it's, it's a it's a good learning curve for him. He's just uh, started off, uh, but he's very calm. And I think yesterday was uh, one thing good was the kind of bowling changes that were done. Uh, very good call on getting in Patirana as the uh, impact player. The way the wicket played for the Pacers in the second half, uh, you know, only two overs to Jadeja, and then it was only the uh, seam bowlers who uh, you know restricted uh, Gujarat or got or, uh, got them just uh, I mean 16 runs short. So I think he's doing very well. He's very calm on the field, and um, and and he's he's getting all the respect that he deserves as a leader. And obviously, Dhoni is there to guide him. Another player who has had a fabulous start uh, to his career in the IPL is Rachin Ravindra. Uh, Narish, uh, what do you have to say about uh, him? Uh, the kind of talent that he is. He is incredibly special when it uh, when it comes to and and you have to give credit to uh, the Chennai team, uh, Chennai management, to pick a player like him, uh, knowing that. Uh, a Devon Conway is not available, and you need uh, the same kind of quality in that team, right at the top of the uh, batting lineup. Uh, yes, as you said, you know Devon Conway has been very consistent with uh, uh, New Zealand and uh, Ch Chennai Super Kings. We saw the way they started off in the last final. You know, Ruturaj and Devon Conway, the start they gave, chasing a total against Gujarat. so that's a that's a that's a big call to make to get rachin ravindra in the auction and immediately put him to start uh, the uh, as an opener uh, in the first game so uh, he's responded well he's he's extremely uh, talented and attacking batter in uh, this format and i think the left right combination which chennai is sticking to is is working well for them along with ruturaj and uh, uh, rachin uh, now it's going to be how consistent he's going to be in the rest of the tournament he's had good starts in these two games uh an unfortunate run out yesterday or stumping or uh, whatever you call it but uh, yeah uh, i think it's it's a good pick very promising and uh, yes there is there is an influence stephen fleming has been there with chennai and he is from new zealand the influence of more in depth uh, of how rachin as a player is so uh, that's that's a very good call they made uh, in the auction absolutely and an another player who has absolutely transformed uh, uh, in uh, the chennai super kings is uh, shivam dubey uh rajiv said uh, the number of 50s that he has scored for uh, csk is 6 uh, in uh, his 27 innings uh, as compared to uh, the other uh, one century that he scored in 22 innings while playing for other franchises what is so different about uh, how he approaches his game uh, when it comes to playing for chennai uh osama before that if you allow me i would want to say a word about uh, rachin yes you know when i first saw him the recent uh, series against new zealand i i really said a first thing came to my mind was wow because it's not just very rhyming name with sachin but rachin had that class you know i mean you could see that he had the temperament to take it through to beginnings and this is where i think he changes gears very well and he adapts to different formats and another player who impressed me was uh, mitchell uh Daryl Mitchell also so both are there in the in the nest for CSK so brilliant Hello Moto Motorola India's best 5G smartphone brand
This show isn't just about news from the southern states. It's one that looks at the rest of India and the world from a diverse South India point of view. Because NDTV has always taken the southern view seriously. The Southern View with Veera Raghav, only on NDTV 24-7. talking with very little being said too many voices but hardly any being heard you turn to a show that puts you front and center a show that headlines the stories of the people by the people for the people hello and welcome to ndtv auto what i have with me today is real special it is the latest ev from audi q6 What's special about it is it's based on a completely new platform, PPE, Premium Platform Electric. This platform Aldi has developed for their electric vehicles and it has a lot to offer. company says the new platform PPE helps Audi Q6 e-tron achieve 30% ED case filed against Kerala Chief Minister's daughter. Money laundering case uh, filed against Chief Minister's daughter. This case is over suspicious payments by a mineral firm. And a High Court order expected very shortly. This high, the High Court is uh, to give the order on Delhi Chief Minister's bail petition. India summons U.S. diplomat over U.S. comments on Kejriwal, a 40-minute meeting with the U.S. Deputy Chief of Mission. U.S. had called for fair and transparent process for Delhi Chief Minister. Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV 24-7. I'm Usama Shab. Our top story of the day, the Enforcement Directorate has uh, filed uh, a uh, a case against Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan's daughter. Remember, uh, this is over the alleged illegal payments uh, uh, to, uh, from a mineral firm. The payments were made uh, to the tune of uh, rupees 1.72 crore, uh, which is under the lens of uh, the ED. Uh, these payments were made to Kerala Chief Minister's daughter, Bina's IT firm. Now, SFIO and uh, the tax department were already probing this matter. Joining us to give us more details is uh, Arpita. Arpita, what more uh, can you tell us? Give us, uh, give us a timeline and, and, and uh, the details of uh, this particular case. Uh, well, Osama, so finally the uh, ED has registered a case against uh, Veena Vijayan, who is the daughter of Chief Minister uh, Pinarai Vijayan. Now, remember this ca uh, case stems from Income Tax Department's investigation team where they had alleged that a private uh, IT company had given 1.72 crores of illegal payment to Veena Vijayan's company, uh, which is based in Bangalore. The IT firm's name is Cochin's Minerals and Retail Limited. So uh, the investigations, uh, the IT team uh, alleged that this IT company has given 1.72 crores of rupees to Veena Vijayan's company, Exalogic, which is based in Bangalore. Now, this is the allegation 
and uh, now ED has taken over the investigation and uh, they have filed a money laundering case against Pina Vijayan, who is the chief, uh, who is the daughter of Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan. All right. Uh, so ED files a case uh, on uh, Pinarayi Vijayan's uh, daughter, and uh, 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 let's also listen to what uh, Mukesh Singh Sanger had to uh, say uh, in his exclusive report. केरल के मुख्यमंत्री पिन्यारी विजयन और उनकी बेटी वीना विजयन की मुश्किलें बढ़ने वाली हैं ईडी ने वीना के खिलाफ पीएमएलए यानी मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग के तहत मामला दर्ज कर लिया है ये मामला एक मिनरल फर्म के साथ गैर कानूनी तरीके से लेन देन का है इस मामले में एसएफआईओ ने शिकायत दर्ज कराई थी ये मामला इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट की जाँच में सामने आया था जाँच में ये बात सामने आई थी कि कोचिन मिनरल्स रुटाइल लिमिटेड ने वीणा की कंपनी एक्सालॉजिक सॉल्यूशन को 2018 से 2019 के बीच में 1.72 करोड़ रुपए का भुगतान किया था जबकि उस समय ये आईटी फर्म कोई सर्विस नहीं दे रही थी तो ये भुगतान जो है लीगल तौर पर किया गया था और इसमें आरोप ये है कि वीना विजन को इससे लाभ हुआ और इस मामले में ये मामला जो है केरल हाईकोर्ट भी पहुँचा था जिसमें फरवरी में कंपनी रजिस्ट्रार ने केरल हाई कोर्ट को बताया कि कोचीन मिनरल्स रुटाइल लिमिटेड के लिमिटेड के धन के दुरुपयोग के कारण सार्वजनिक खजाने की लूट हुई है और इससे राज्य के औद्योगिक विकास पर असर पड़ेगा केरल ने जो केरल हाई कोर्ट है उसने कहा था जो राज्य औद्योगिक विकास निगम है उसने कहा था कि वह एस की जाँच में सहयोग क्यों नहीं कर रहा था इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि जो जाँच थी उसमें हाई कोर्ट ने रुकावट में कोई बाधा नहीं डाली थी और एस एफ इस पूरे मामले की जांच कर रहा था इसी के बेसिस पर ईडी ने मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग का मामला दर्ज किया है और केरल के मुख्यमंत्री और उनकी बेटी की मुश्किलें बढ़ने वाली हैं क्योंकि एक मिनरल फर्म के साथ जो इलीगल तरीके से पैसे के लेन देन का आरोप है और 1.72 करोड़ रुपए का जो लेन देन था उसको लेकर ये जाँच शुरू हुई थी अब इसमें ई ने मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग का मामला दर्ज कर लिया है all right so uh, kerala minister uh, the kerala excise minister mb rajesh joins us uh, to give his side of uh, the story uh, sir welcome to ndtv the ed is saying that uh, these payments were made uh, to the chief minister's daughter what is your response on that ed ed right Hello. yes mr rajesh uh, the ed is uh, saying that uh, these payments were made to the chief minister's daughter we all know what this ed is doing uh, now they are on election duty let them do their election duty people of kerala will give them a befitting reply that's all <laughs> all right uh, but uh, this probe has been going on for some time sir and uh, this is only after uh, because uh, we remember in january this year uh, the kerala high court had also listened uh, uh, to the plea uh this this isn't a one off uh, thing so it has been going on for some time so the ed has a case uh, to say that uh, look we have been probing this matter and we have been probing this matter for some time poor guys they have to do a lot of things they have to extort people uh, to get them uh, buy electoral bonds and give it to bjp now they are they are doing their, their direct election duty let them do it All right. Uh, so what you are what you are basically saying is that uh, the ED is uh, like like the other uh, opposition parties, uh, uh, which suggests that ED is being used uh, by the government. Uh, all right. We seem to have lost that line uh, uh, with uh, uh, Mr. M B Rajesh. Uh, so uh, the ED is uh, the ED has uh, in fact filed a case against uh, Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan's daughter. and uh, this is over the alleged illegal payments from a mineral firm is what uh, the ed is saying the payments were made to the tune of rupees 1.72 crore uh, which is being probed these payments uh, in fact were made to kerala chief minister's daughter veena's it firm and uh, the sfio and the tax department uh, remember were already probing this matter 
Moving on, the Delhi High Court is expected to deliver its order shortly on uh, the Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's challenge to his arrest by the Enforcement Directorate in the alleged liquor policy scam case. Now, Kejriwal's lawyers, uh, they had questioned the agency's delaying tactics and claimed that there was, there was no need for the probe agency to arrest the Delhi Chief Minister without questioning him first. The Aam Admi Party Chief uh, also claimed that uh, he will be released after the elections are over on June 2nd, alleging a political conspiracy behind his arrest. <laughs> वो इस सो कॉल्ड शराब घोटाले का पैसा ढूंढ रहे हैं अभी तक किसी भी रेड में एक पैसा नहीं मिला मनीष जी के यहां रेड मारी संजय सिंह जी के यहां रेड मारी सतीन जैन जी के यहां रेड मारी एक भी पैसा नहीं मिला अरविंद जी ने कहा है कि इसका खुलासा वे 28 मार्च को कोर्ट के सामने करेंगे सारे देश को सच सच बताएंगे कि इस सो कॉल्ड शराब घोटाले का पैसा है कहां देखिए हमने देखा था लालू प्रसाद यादव जी के समय जब वो चारा घोटाले में फंसे थे तब राबड़ी जी अनाउंसमेंट करती थी आहिस्ता आहिस्ता उन्होंने गद्दी संभाल ली अब अरविंद केजरीवाल जी के समय जो नैतिकता की बातें करते थे आज भ्रष्टाचार के दलदल में गिरी हुई गहराई तक गिरी हुई आम आदमी पार्टी नजर आती है जिनका सांसद जिनका स्वास्थ्य मंत्री जिनका उप मुख्यमंत्री जिनका शिक्षा मंत्री जिनके पार्षद ये सब जेल में है और इनका मुख्यमंत्री शराब घोटाले के किंग पिन कट्टर बेईमान अरविंद केजरीवाल भी जेल में है all right, Ashwarya joins us uh, to give us more details. Ashwarya, the High Court is expected to deliver its order very shortly. And uh, we heard uh, both uh, Anurag uh, Thakur as well as uh, Sunita Kejriwal uh, speaking about the matter. What more details can you give us? Well, any time from now, Delhi High Court can pronounce its order as far as Arvind Kejriwal's bail plea is concerned. Uh, intense hearing took place on one side of the Delhi High Court where uh, Abhishek Manu Singhvi, who was representing Arvind Kejriwal, stated that uh, it is just because Arvind Kejriwal uh, who's, a, uh, who's a chief minister and uh, uh, when elections are around the corner, he has been arrested. He is not. He was not going anywhere. He could be questioned at any point of time. Uh, Abhishek Manu Singhvi uh, also stated that uh, just because those uh, accused who uh, the enforcement directed arrested earlier and then they later turned approver named Arvind Kejriwal on the basis of that Arvind Kejriwal is arrested, that certainly means how ED is functioning. Uh, you know, it was a long uh, arguments and submissions made by Abhishek Manu Singhvi to which S.V. Raju, who, is, uh, who, who was appearing for enforcement directorate, stated that when uh, almost for two hours Arvind Kejriwal Council speak, uh, spoke, why not we had been given enough time and at least uh, uh, two weeks time is something that we want, uh, to which the court clearly had stated that uh, uh, yes, of course, uh, uh, every council had, uh, uh, had to be given proper time and to reply on each and every submissions. Uh, but uh, it was uh, Abhishek Manu Singhvi who said that these are just delay tactics because we all know tomorrow enforcement directed custody of Arvind Kejriwal is ending and uh, highly placed sources in the ED also stated that uh, ED will seek further custody of Arvind Kejriwal. So this hearing needs to be done uh, on uh, the bail uh, today, uh, today only. Uh, you know, there is no hint that the judge has given that whether this would be, uh, uh, you know, order on the bail or or uh, whether Arvind Kejriwal will get some sort of relief or not. But on the other side, you know, try, very parallelly, uh, a political showdown had continued. It is Sunita Kejriwal who came out on camera for the very, f uh, not for the very first time, but of course, uh, she has been speaking on behalf of Arvind Kejriwal. Today as well, she came and stated that more than 250 raids had taken place. No cash seizures have been done. No evidence had been uh, had been taken uh, by, uh, by the enforcement directorate. And uh, tomorrow, when Arvind Kejriwal will be appearing uh, in front of the court, Arvind Kejriwal will expose that uh, where this money had gone and uh, uh, in the alleged uh, Delhi liquor excise policy case, uh, how the funding had been transferred, of course, hinting to the entire uh, electoral bonds where Aam Aadmi Party clearly stating that the money uh, 
वॉज अल्टीमेटली यू नो सेंट सेंट टू भारतीय जनता पार्टी बैंक अकाउंट्स एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट दी एक्यूज हु आर अरेस्टेड इन दिस केस टर्न अप्रूवर एंड लेटर ग्रांटेड बेल सो यू नो प्रोटेस्ट ऑल्सो बींग 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 टेकिंग प्लेस एट दी डेली असेंबली भारतीय जनता पार्टी कंटिन्यूसली प्रोटेस्टिंग अनुराग ठाकुर वेंट ऑन टू से दैट इट इज सुनीता केजरीवाल नाउ विल विल बी द फेस ऑफ आम आदमी पार्टी एंड दैट्स ऑल्सो वॉट वी हैव वॉट वी सो अर्लियर वेन लालू प्रसाद यादव वॉज बिहाइंड दी बार राबड़ी देवी टू कोवर बट यू नो वेदर अरविंद केजरीवाल Ashwari, I'll have to stop you there. Uh, there is breaking news coming in at this point of time. Uh, the election commission has issued uh, notices uh, to both uh, Supriya Shrinath as well as uh, Dilip Ghosh. These notices uh, are over personal attacks uh, made by these politicians, uh, and uh, the election commission has said that these com comments uh, are found to be offensive and prima facie. Are uh, is a violation of uh, the model code of conduct. Uh, remember, uh, the, the EC has uh, now issued a notice to Supriya Shinet and uh, the Libo. This is in regard with uh, the comments made uh, by allegedly made by uh, Supriya Shinet on uh, her social media platform against uh, Kangana Ranaut and. Uh, Uh, the bjp the opposite uh, the uh, the bjp and the government had uh, uh, strongly reacted to this and now ec issuing notice to supriya shinet uh, as well as uh, dilip ghosh uh, uh, like i mentioned these notices are over those personal attacks by politicians uh, the election commission has said uh, that the comments uh, they were found to be offensive and uh, prima facie violation of the model code or right, supriya shinet had been in the news uh, for all the wrong reasons uh, especially after making uh, allegedly making those comments on her social media platform uh, uh, where uh, uh, she used uh, uh, unparliamentary language with respect to kangana ranaut and uh, the election commission has now taken uh, uh, cognizance cognizance of the matter and said that these notices are being issued and uh, that these comments uh, are found to be offensive mario shakil joins us uh, to give us more details mario what more can you tell us yes yeah, so the election commission has uh, issued notices uh, uh, to both uh, 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 to supriya shrinath and also dilip ghosh remember dilip ghosh only recently had made some very offensive comments um, against uh, mamata banerji which the commission says were objectionable and disrespectful and hence they have asked to uh, show uh, to uh, you know in fact a show cause notice has been issued to dilip ghosh and he has told to respond by 29th of march because this is being seen as offensive comment prime of his eye uh, which is a violation of the model code of conduct now looking at the other side which is supriya shinet's comment uh, which she had put uh, on her instagram page which of course she deleted later uh again uh, the time that has been given is that till 29th of march she should uh, respond as to why an uh, action should not be taken against her for making a comment which is extremely objectionable and harsh uh, so this is being seen as a violation of model code of conduct when uh, if, even if you criticize a political party then it should be confined to policies and programs uh the parties and the candidates uh, must refrain from criticism on all aspects of private life and uh, public activities should be seen of the leaders not private matters and this statement of supriya shrinath is being seen as violation uh, of model code of conduct because this is a low level personal attack uh, which is about some kind of insult uh, to the rivals and which should not be made uh, because the election commission has gone on to talk about the manual and the code of conduct is very clear about uh, how such comments should be completely avoided as this is also a violation and it cannot stand as freedom it can express maria is there uh, is there uh, any sort of uh, 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 is there any sort of uh, uh, action being uh, or is it uh, expected to be taken against uh, supriya shinet possible uh, or or even against dilip ghosh because notices have been sent to supriya shinet and dilip ghosh Uh, one of the bjp another one of the congress because uh, their comments have been found to be undignified and in bad taste uh, both of them have been show cause and answers uh, have been by 29th of march uh, what has been said also that uh, in in case that uh, the response is not uh, given to the commission then action will be initiated by 
the commission forced that so time has been given till 29 as to when action uh, you know they have to give an explanation as to why action should not be taken against them for the comments uh, which have been made by both the leaders Yes, uh, Mari, in fact, uh, the Congress had uh, already on uh, Tuesday, it has uh, said uh, that there is no place for such language in public discourse. And uh, uh, Supriya Shinet, uh, she also cleared the air. But uh, despite that, uh, the Election Commission has uh, issued a notice. Yes, because they have taken this issue up, just as the Trinamool Congress has taken up the issue of Dilip Ghosh. So in political season, uh, and we are in the middle of uh, heated political uh, you know, battle which is playing out. Uh, so we were expecting some kind of an action. Uh, NCW has taken action, but uh, when it came to model code of conduct violation, the election commission says that prime of SI, they feel that this is objectionable and hence uh, violation of model code of conduct. Uh, and, and there is a clear guideline and code of conduct which has been specified for various political parties. Uh, there is a clear specific guideline with regards to the language, the tone and tonality which can be used during elections and both these statements have been found to be distasteful and in violation of that code and uh, both the leaders have been asked to explain as to why they made those statements, one, and second, why action should not be taken um, as per the rules which have been prescribed. All right, so the Election Commission issuing notice to both uh, Dilip Ghosh as well as Supriya Srinet. Maria Shakil, thank you very much for uh, getting us all those details. And the countdown uh, to the biggest festival in the world's largest democracy has started and everyone is prepping for the 2024 national elections. India's future is its youth. To support that goal, NDTV is launching the hashtag NDTV18 ka vote campaign to make youth aware of the need to vote. Our aim is to encourage voters aged 18 to show their strength in the 18th Lok Sabha polls. You can send us your video messages on hashtag NDTV18 ka vote and we will show them on NDTV. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. ट्रैकिंग की बात से इनफैक्ट याद आया गया इस डिड यू नो कि आप अब ट्रैक कर सकते हैं अबाउट योर कंट्रीब्यूशन टुवर्ड्स एन हेल्थीयर एनवायरनमेंट because अगर आप Uber use करते हैं तो I am sure आपको अभी पता होगा कि उसमें there is an option कि आप electric vehicles को book कर सकते हैं if you prefer going sustainable लेकिन अब यहाँ पे एक option आ गया है जहाँ पे आपको Uber दिखाता है कि आप क्या save कर रहे हैं compared to अगर आप एक normal vehicle में जाते हैं तो आप कितने carbon emissions होने से रोक रहे हैं और वो आपको दिखाता है in form of trees being planted. So, this is a good thing where you can keep track of your, you know, your contribution that when you are taking Uber for your daily habits, when you are going out of the office, if you use an EV, use, so how much essentially are you contributing towards the environment? This service is live now in multiple Indian cities. So, next time you book an Uber, I would request that if you use an electric vehicle, it will uh, kind of contribute towards the environment or you can clearly track in form of number of trees being planted. So I'm sure normally we friends sometimes we see each other's Uber ratings. Ki kisko kitne star mile hai, kisi kitne rating hai. So I'm sure going next, 
दिस कुड बी ए थिंग दैट वी ऑल माइट ट्रैक कि अच्छा मैंने कितने ट्रीज को प्लांट किया बाई गोइंग इलेक्ट्रिक या कौन आगे जीत रहा है इट्स अ नाइस थिंग डिड यू नो दिस इफ येस अमेजिंग इफ नो प्लीज लेट मी नो यू नो द एड्रेस इट्स टी जी एट द रेट एन डी टी वी डॉट कॉम Stay informed and entertained with the new and updated NDTV News app. You can watch all our channels live, listen to podcasts, read breaking and exclusive news from around the world and more. Download the NDTV app today and get access to the best journalism and storytelling on your smartphone or tablet. The NDTV app, news that matters to you. Welcome to NDTV Auto. I'm here in Jaipur for Volkswagen brand conference, and they have made a slew of announcements here. Let's talk more about them with Mr. Ashish Gupta, brand director, Volkswagen India. You know, you have uh, again changed the lineup of uh, Tiger. Uh, what was the purpose behind it, and uh, uh, will that make things simpler for people? No, I think you know uh, the endeavor has been, and if you you know I take back uh, take you back two years when we introduced the Tiger, and we introduced it on two line structure, the dynamic line, which. Welcome back. Seventeen names have been released by Uddhav Bala Sahab Thakre Sena, which also includes four seats in Mumbai. Now, Sangli was under dispute between Congress and Sena. It has now been taken by Chandrahar uh, Patil of uh, Sena. Till yesterday, Congress was keen on this seat and was considered Congress's stronghold. Mumbai Northwest was under dispute uh, between the two parties, but that has now been taken by Sena's Amol Kirtikar. Mumbai South Central, meanwhile, uh, which was also under dispute between Congress and Sena, uh, but Anil Desai has been announced instead. Sanjay Patil is set to contest from Mumbai's northeast, which again was under dispute between NCP and Sena. Meanwhile, the Congress has given its reaction. Uh, Congress is unhappy over the seats announced by Sena. सेना को इतना इतना एक्सट्रीम स्टैंड नहीं लेना चाहिए इससे कांग्रेस का जबरदस्त नुकसान है और कांग्रेस के नेतृत्व का ध्यान आकर्षित करना चाहता हूं कि आप अभी भी इंटरवीन करिए नहीं तो अलायंस तोड़िए अगर पार्टी को बचाना है तो अलायंस तोड़िए और मैदान में उतरिए लेकिन आप शिवसेना के साथ अलायंस करके अपने आप को हमेशा के लिए खत्म करने का जो फैसला कर रहे हैं वो बहुत ही आत्मघाती है पूरे कांग्रेस पार्टी के लिए और इसका असर पूरे महाराष्ट्र में पड़ेगा महाराष्ट्र से बाहर भी पड़ेगा उद्धवजी ठाकरे यांनी ज्या दोन जागावर उमेदवार घोषित केलेला आहे थोडासा आघाडीचा धर्म जर पाडला असता तर नक्कीच आपल्याला त्याचा आनंद झाला असता शेवट तीनही पक्ष मिळून अंतिम निर्णय घ्यायचा असतो आणि चर्चा संपली नाही चर्चा सुरू आहे अशा स्थितीमध्ये उमेदवार घोषित करणं थोड़ा आघाड़ी धर्माला निश्चितपने थोड़ा गालबोट लारख मैं जर पुनर्विचार के सगले तीन ही पक्ष मिल खुले मनाने निवणुका अपने पार पड़ता आया मुंबई में उत्तर पश्चिम लोकसभा की सीट दो हजार चौदह में शिवसेना ने जीती 2019 में शिवसेना ने जीती तो 2024 में यह तय हुआ कि महाविकास आघाड़ी की तरफ से शिवसेना उद्धव बाला साहब ठाकरे के उम्मीदवार अमोल भैया कीर्तिकर चुनाव लड़ेंगे आपके ऊपर अन्याय हो रहा है यदि आपको टिकट नहीं मिल रहा है तो आप कांग्रेस पार्टी से जाकर कहिए आप कांग्रेस पार्टी पर दबाव बनाइए न कि टेलीविजन में आकर आप दबाव बनाते हैं और हम एक महाविकास आघाड़ी में है आप एक ऐसे आरोप लगा सकते हैं कि हम मदद करेंगे कि नहीं करेंगे पार्टी मदद करती है ना 
पार्टी ने तय किया है कि यह संयुक्त उम्मीदवार है और आप तो बार बार कह रहे हैं कि सात दिन के अंदर मैं अपने विकल्प ओपन रखा हूं इसका मतलब आपकी किसी और दल से बातचीत चल रही है जब किसी और दल से बातचीत चल रही है आपके विकल्प खुले हैं तो आप उस तरफ जाइए आपको शुभकामना है लेकिन हमारे उम्मीदवार के प्रति नफरत फैलाने का काम न कीजिए All right, Radhika Ramaswamy joins us to give us more details. Radhika, uh, very strong reactions coming in, especially from Sanjay Nirupam, who called uh, on his party to break the alliance. What more can you tell us? That's right. A lot of disappointment and discontent within Congress post the release of uh, 17 names by Uddhav Sena. In fact, there were many names under dispute, including Sangli constituency as well as uh, Mumbai Northwest and Mumbai uh, South Central that were uh, under dispute. In fact, uh, both Congress and Sena were vying for it. And over the last several weeks, there were discussions happening and discussions over these seats are still ongoing. So therefore, Congress, many Congress leaders disappointed that when the discussions were ongoing, how could Sena go ahead and release these names without any sort of approval and without any sort of uh, a consensus over these seats? Sanjay Nirupam has, of course, lashed out. He'd uh, been vocally opposed to this entire MV alliance. He is somebody who had eyed the Northwest constituency from where Amol Kirtikar of Sena uh, will, uh, in fact, be contesting. He's called him, uh, um, you know, a, a criminal. He's, uh, in fact, uh, said that, uh, of course, th th this is a person who's been called by enforcement director for questioning so therefore uh, he is lashed out at Sena for giving ticket to him and also lashed out at Congress for bending over backwards uh, for accommodating uh, Sena and that this is going to be destruction and end of Congress party and he's also urged Congress party to break ties uh, with Sena also giving an ultimatum saying that he will have to look for other options if uh, things are not reconsidered so a lot of disagreement uh, as far as these 17 seats are concerned, Congress not happy. NCP also, we believe, not happy, especially when it came to uh, when it comes to Northeast Mumbai Northeast seat, which was uh, eyed by the NCP. However, uh, uh, Sena has uh, in fact uh, given that ticket to Sanjay Patel. So uh, a lot of discontent within the MVA allies. Now we also are made to understand that perhaps Congress may suggest a friendly fight between Sena and Congress in many of these disputed seats. Now, will that happen? Will, uh, you know, Sena be pressured to reconsider the list considering the allies are not very happy uh, with these uh, disputed list being uh, released? Right. Um, or will it lead to a bigger crisis within MVA? All that remains to be seen. All right, uh, Radhika Ramaswamy, thank you very much for getting us all those details. We'll keep an eye on uh, the development there. Moving on, uh, the sitting MP and uh, the Jalandhar candidate uh, of, from Aam Admi Party has joined uh, the BJP, Sushil Rinku. He has quit Aam Admi Party and joined uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party. Remember Sushil Rinku, he won the Jalandhar bipole last year and Aam Admi Party had again fielded Rinku from Jalandhar. So another Aam Admi Party MLA has quit and joined the BJP. Time for a very short break. More news and updates on the other side. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. Justice, D.Y. Chandrachur, NDTV, big exclusive. We provide justice to common citizens and there is no case which is too small even for the highest court of the nation. CGI ka kaam karne ka alag andaz. Sometimes I get emails even in the middle of the night and I'm always available to answer those emails. 25 crore final judgments and orders. This data is available online. As on 29 February 2024, 3.09 crore cases have been heard on video conferencing mode. Chief Justice Chandrachur se jodi ansuni baate. Saadhi teen bajay subay mera din shuru ho jata hai. My best friend, who is my wife, Kalpana. Both of us are vegans. Khabaron mein aapka bharosa. NDTV.
A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre, conversations that get to the core of the debate. Hello and welcome to NDTV Auto. What I have with me today is real special. It is the latest EV from Audi, Q6. What's special about it is it's based on a completely new platform, PPE, Premium Platform Electric. This platform Audi has developed for their electric vehicles and it has a lot to offer. <laughs> company says the new platform PPE helps Audi Q6 e-tron achieve 30% less energy consumption with 33% better system performance. With the Q6, Audi is also introducing its electronic architecture E3 1.2 which allows customers to experience digitalization directly in the vehicle. Welcome back. Uh, the Election Commission has issued show cause notices to Congress leader Supriya Shinet and uh, Bharatiya Janata Party's Dilip Ghosh over derogatory remarks against uh, actor Kangana Ranaut, who is uh, the BJP's candidate of Haryana, for Haryana's Mandi Lok Sabha and Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee. Uh, on uh, careful examination, uh, the comments have been found uh, to be undignified and in bad taste. This is what uh, the Election Commission has said. And uh, it also violates, uh, it's a violation of provisions of the model code of conduct. Uh, let me go across uh, to Maria, who joins us on the phone line. Maria, uh, what actions uh, can we expect? Uh, they have been given time till Friday, uh, 5 p.m. What action is expected if they do not uh, give a proper response? An FIR can be filed. So the Election Commission can issue instructions uh, to the local electoral officer uh, that an FIR be lodged if it is found to be defamatory, if it is uh, found to be undignified. Uh, look, the election commission is very clear when it, when it comes to the guidance of political parties and candidates that the uh, criticism of any political party is all right, but it should be confined to policies and programs, past work and record. It cannot be about private lives of an individual. And if that is not you know, if, if language is not washed out for, then certainly this will be seen as an utterance which is uh, harming the dignity of a woman. In case of Supriya Srinay, this is what the Election Commission says, that the utterances uh, have been found to be, uh, you know, uh, hampering the honour and dignity of women. And this is best avoidable. If you have put out a social media post which vilifies an individual, insults the rival, then it will be seen as a personal attack and will be seen as a low level of criticism, which is violation of model code of conduct. It cannot be seen as freedom of speech and expression. That is the reason why uh, the, the statement of Supriya Srinath with regards to, because she had put out a social media, uh, you know, uh, on her Instagram page, she had put out a, a, a message and which she deleted uh, later. The election commission says that the prime of SI it has been found to be undignified and in bad taste. And hence, uh, notice or show cause has been issued to her till 29th of March as to why action should not be taken as per the guidelines of the Election Commission. Similarly, with regards to Dilip Ghosh, the comments which he had made uh, uh, regarding Mamda Banerjee, the sitting chief minister and TMC Supremo, has been found to be in bad taste and undignified. Um, you know, it, it is, of course, uh, targeting the dignity of a, a chief minister and also a woman here. And that is the reason why the Election Commission has said that both these leaders must explain as to why action cannot be taken. And after, if the, if the answers are not found to be satisfactory, because in the past also, uh, there have been very, very inflammatory comments which have been made by leaders. But if the comments are not found to be satisfactory, then an FIR can be lodged um, and, and a process or the due process of law will be followed there. Maria, it also seems like a self-goal by uh, the Congress leader because uh, we have seen instances where uh, Congress leaders have made such comments prior to the elections and this time around uh, something similar has happened. 
do you do you feel this is also a self goal by uh, Congress in a way? Yes. Uh, so, uh, so uh, yes, this would be seen as a self goal because. Uh, the BJP has made uh, Nari Shakti as uh, their talking point in these elections. They are uh, making uh, women as an important constituency. As part of the messaging, uh, the BJP has given record number of tickets to the women candidates uh, in these elections. So, and, and Prime Minister himself speaking to uh, women who have been fielded in Bengal, uh, you know, a survivor of Sandesh Khali in Rekha Patra, uh, to others over the last 48 hours, the messaging is loud and clear that here it is about uh, that very, very strong messaging. It is about that any kind of comment against a woman will not be tolerated, which will be which, which will be taken to the logical conclusion. Uh, you know, uh, Supriya Srinath has been trying to issue clarifications. She has given multiple and mixed or jumbled responsible uh, right from saying that uh, somebody else handles her uh, the handles of social media profile to to even going to the extent of saying that it was hacked. But overall, uh, this is a self goal. This is uh, the Congress landing its in its uh, landing itself in a big mess because they realize that the BJP will not be stopping at just this. That it will be it will try and make this a talking point in the elections going ahead. Right. Uh, uh, Maria, thank you very much for getting us all those details. We are also joined by Ashwarya. Uh, Ashwarya, uh, when you talk about uh, BJP MP Dilip Ghosh, uh, he had already issued an apology after his uh, controversial uh, father remark at uh, Mamata Banerjee. Uh, so this has been this has been happening from both sides of the uh, both both the parties, not just uh, the Congress here. Yes, well, certainly, Sanjay, let's look at the Election Commission uh, trying to be very neutral on uh, these remarks and. Uh, 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 controversial statements being made. Remember that press conference by the uh, Chief Election Commissioner uh, where uh, uh, at the time of announcement of elections he clearly stated that uh, uh, they will be completely unbiased and uh, whether it is uh, the ruling uh, uh, party or be it the opposition, each and every politician should refrain from using any uh, controversial statements or that can lead to uh, 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 your undignified way and therefore the reason perhaps it it is uh, 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 Supriya Shinnet or uh, Dilip Ghosh from the Bharatiya Janata Party. Both had been issued notices on uh, the post or the comments uh, that both had made respectively. And they have to reply to the election commission before March 29th, 5 p.m. as to uh, what... Uh, uh, they uh, uh, what what led uh, them to uh, post it and uh, what was the reasoning behind it. Uh, so a clarification has been sought by the Election Commission of India, but uh, it is uh, uh, both the leaders who had apologised. Of course, Supriya Shinnet on her side clearly stated that it was someone else who hacked her account and posted. Uh, from her account uh, later, she apologized for it. She said uh, uh, she can't use such a derogatory word for any woman. And uh, she had in, uh, started an investigation on her own, uh, uh, at her own level. On the other side, Dilip Ghosh, uh, uh, you know, commenting on uh, Mamta Banerjee using that father bub uh, clearly had uh, triggered a lot of controversy. In fact, it is Prime Minister Narendra Modi, remember, during a rally in West Bengal, where a Mahila Sammelan was uh, organized by BJP. It was Prime Minister himself who had, uh, uh, in a very uh, sharp way, uh, uh, and, uh, and stated that, uh, you know, uh, respect for women is supreme in the party. And that's what uh, somewhere we have seen uh, while Bharatiya Janata Party announcing, uh, announcing uh, tickets as well. Sadhvi Pragya being dropped, uh, uh, Uma, uh, Sadhvi Pragya being dropped, uh, it was... Uh, uh, Parvez Saif Singh Burma was dropped as well. Uh, you know, both uh, the Bharti Janta Party sitting MPs were dropped just because of the controversial statement in the past being made. So now, uh, you know, when uh, the messaging has been very clear and notices have been shared by the Election Commission when MCC has already been in place, uh, it remains to be seen that what sort of uh, reasoning these both leaders gave. But a strong statement being made here by the Election Commission of India by sending notices that during the election campaign, no such a commentary will be allowed by either of the uh, political parties. Right, Ashwarya, thank you very much for uh, all those details. We are also joined by Mohammad Ghazali. Uh, Ghazali, uh, BJP's push uh, uh, in this Lok Sabha elections is uh, uh, 
is uh, for Nari Shakti, and uh, they have been very vocal about this. Uh, and amid all of that, amid all of that campaigning, when uh, somebody like Supriya Shinet comes and uh, uh, posts something like this, allegedly, uh, how does it hurt Congress, and uh, how, do they, how does it benefit uh, BJP in this case? Up to the same effect. And now, after receiving the election commission's notice, it is very, uh, 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 it's a writing on the wall kind of thing. The BJP will try to exploit this. BJP will try to exploit this issue or raise this issue in this election. Actually, in Himachal, we are seeing that how Congress government is facing an imminent threat that someday or the later some MLAs will switch or BJP will try to engineer the rebellion there. But for the Lok Sabha polls, certainly. Uh, uh, Kangana Ranaut will raise this issue in not only in Himachal Pradesh, but in other Hindi-speaking uh, states as well. And Prime Minister's push, since this episode happened, we saw how Prime Minister has been speaking to the women ticket uh, can women candidates for the Lok Sabha elections for the party from different regions. So somewhere he's also hinting that this issue is not going to die down very soon and Congress will have to give endless explanations in this entire poll campaign uh, uh, as far as this Kangana Ranaut controversy is concerned. Right. Uh, we were discussing this earlier as well, and I want to ask you this uh, again, uh, Ghazali. Uh, does this feel like a self-goal by the Congress here? See, uh, certainly it appears like a self-goal now because it is now just not associated with the women power. If you heard Kangana's reaction, she said that the word Mandi or the place Mandi in Himachal Pradesh is a chota kashi for us. So drawing a religious comparison to this entire controversy is again going to be damaging for Congress as we see the kind of politics BJP does when it comes to nationalism, religion and all that. Certainly the BJP will try to raise and associate this particular incident with all other issues on which the Congress is, has often been on a weak wicket. All right, Mohammad Ghazali, thank you very much for getting us all those details. So, a uh, notice have been issued uh, to both uh, Supriya Shinate as well as uh, BJP's uh, minister over the comments that they made. Moving on, uh, resentment in uh, Kolar Congress troubles uh, the party ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. The MLAs and MLCs from this Lok Sabha constituency have uh, threatened to resign if Karnataka Minister K.H. Muniappa's son-in-law, Chika Pedana, is fielded. Now, five MLAs and two MLCs uh, raised this fiasco and even met the speaker at Vidhan Sauda. The sitting minister, M.C. Sudhakar, initially alleged that uh, Congress High Command paid no heed to their demand, but later claimed that they have been asked to wait for some time and that uh, the High Command, as well as the state leadership, would arrive at a decision soon. K.H. Muniapa, remember, is uh, Food and Supply, Civil Supplies Minister. His daughter, Rupa Shashidhar, is already an MLA. My colleague, Pratibha, gets us uh, an exclusive with Muniapa. I have all respects for the party I command, but here we want others to be given representation. So that is the only issue. And uh, since the, uh, some people are trying to uh, put pressure on the high command to get the seat, so I thought we can, uh, there's no, no point continuing, but rather uh, sit back at home rather than continuing. We have with us Kesh Munyapa, Karnataka Congress Minister. Sir, the resentment brewing in Kolar Congress. What is your statement for that? Congress party is a big party. Naturally, these things will be happen. But unfortunately, it has uh, reached to the peak. I was surprised on that issue because we are all together. Called by the Chief Minister and Deputy Chief Minister, we met and we explained our problems and we appealed to them. I never lost in the election, only one time I lost. You give an opportunity, I will win the seat. I've got my own experience. And they also told, we want some people, they also propose. Ultimately, we all, Ramesh Kumar, the, both the ministers, Bharati Suresh, Dr. Sudhakar, myself, and all MLAs, together, we have taken a decision. It will leave it to the high command. The chief minister and the deputy chief minister and the president of the PCC can take the decision. We abide by it. That what was the end. Thereafter, this is surprise. Development has takes place. 
on this issue i don't want to say anything on this issue this is i am the sin sincere and the disciplined soldier of the party whatever the decision the party will take i will abide by it so but you. also uh, most of the rebel leaders have been uh, no, say have been stating that they uh, no, they will no, be I waiting for a decision issue. from the high command okay, thank suppose you. the high command decision you. is not in your favor sir whatever they take decision i will abide by it all right time for a very short break more news and updates on the other side Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. One day this lecture hall will be made of code and driverless cars would be trapped in intersections. But even in this maze of the future, you can't wish away health. It's time to become more resilient. Ten years of Banega Swast India, we have grown and achieved so many milestones. And now I have a plan to beat the urgency, to stop breathing with difficulty, to relieve getting choked with inactivity. Energize our government. our environment our society and ourselves everyone everywhere every day banega swast india one world hygiene हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एन डी टीवी पर फ्रेंड्स इट्स टाइम नाउ फॉर माय फेवरेट सेक्शन अबाउट दिस एपिसोड बिकॉज हम हमेशा जब क्यू एन ए की बात करते हैं सो आस्क टीजी इज द थिंग जो मुझे बहुत पसंद आती है बिकॉज आई गेट टू आंसर ऑल योर क्वेश्चन सो लेट सी इस हफ्ते हमारे पास में क्या क्या क्वेश्चन है आपको जानना है विच इज द बेटर डिवाइस बिटवीन वन प्लस ट्वेल्व एंड शाउमी फोर्टीन इन टर्म्स ऑफ कैमरा एंड परफॉर्मेंस सो लेट मी गेट दिस ट्रेट इन टर्म्स ऑफ कैमरा Xiaomi might jump slightly ahead of the OnePlus 12, not by a huge margin, but like let's say slightly ahead. But if I were to recommend you an overall good product in terms of camera performance, software, you know, like everything combined, I would recommend OnePlus 12 over the Xiaomi. Considering Xiaomi uh, doesn't have the kind of brand value in that premium segment. OnePlus, you know, has been there for a long time now. or OnePlus 12 is an amazing smartphone overall if you combine especially the clean experience of Oxygen OS or yeah, even the camera is fantastic Xiaomi 14 thoda thoda aage nikal jata hai but overall i would say OnePlus 12 would be a better pick I mean pretty simple if Welcome back uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi continued with his series of phone conversations with candidates uh, today he spoke with Amrita Roy a member of first while royalty and BJP's Krishnanagar Lok Sabha candidate she is fighting the election against uh, Trinamool leader Mahua Moitra now during the conversation he said that the BJP was committed to uprooting corruption in the country he also said he was working to ensure that the money looted from poor people in west bengal and attached by the enforcement directorate was returned to them amruta ji namaskar namaskar modi ji aap ka bahut aabhari hu aap mujhe chance diye hain logo ki seva karne ke liye hum 100% koshish karenge 
आपका चुनाव अभियान कैसा चल रहा है आ, अभी तो हम निकले हैं तो एक बीजेपी को उनका पिता का देहांत हो गया हम इधर ही आए हुए हैं तो अभी वापस जाके हम प्रचार में ही निकलेंगे अमृता जी आप महाराजा कृष्ण राय चंची की विरासत को आगे ले जा रही है एक बात आपको हम शेयर करना चाहेंगे हम क्या कह सकते हैं जी जी जरूर मुझे अच्छा लगेगा ये जो महाराजा कृष्ण चंद्र का हम शामिल है तो उसका भी ये लोग विरोध कर रहे हैं क्या बोल रहे हैं कि वो ब्रिटिश के साथ साथ दिया था फिर वो मैंने हम लोगों को गद्दार समझते हैं क्यों क्या वो नहीं बोल रहा है इतना जमीन दान किया इतना सब लोगों के लिए किया भलाई के लिए किया वो सब नहीं बोल रहे हैं लेकिन क्या बोल रहे हैं तो हम बोला की क्यों किया ऐसा महाराजा कृष्ण चंद्र अगर नहीं करते तो हमारा सनातन धर्म तो पूरा खत्म हो जाता है कि नहीं तो वो बात है क्योंकि तब का वो जो नवाब थे सिराज उद्दौला तो वो तो बहुत अत्याचारी भ्रष्टाचारी थे तो उसी लिए उन्होंने तो अकेला नहीं किया बहुत सारे राजाओं के मिलन हुआ उसके बाद सभी ने किया जगत सेठ भी थे और और राजाओं थे तो उसी सभी के मेहनत से ये काम सफल हुआ तो अगर नहीं होता आज हम हिंदू नहीं रह पाते हमारा भाषा दूसरा होता हमारा वेशभूषा एकदम अलग होता और सभी अलग हो जाते हम तो दूसरों के अधीन रहते ना यही बात है अमृता जी बचपन में हमारे यहाँ हम लोगों को जो पढ़ाया जाता था उसमें कृष्णचंद्र राय की समाज सुधार का काम बंगाल के विकास का काम बंगाल के विकास के मॉडल ये सब सुनने को मिलता था बचपन में अब देखिए ये वोट बैंक की राजनीति करने वाले लोग हैं तो बहुत ही अनाप शनाप आरोप लगाएंगे और 300 साल पहले की घटना निकालेंगे 200 साल पहले की घटना निकालेंगे और बदनाम करने का प्रयास करेंगे ये खुद अपने जो वर्तमान पाप है उसको छिपाने के लिए वो ऐसी चीजें ढूंढते रहते हैं लेकिन जब भगवान राम की बात आती है भगवान राम की बात आती है तो वो कहते हैं कि सबूत कहाँ है इतनी पुरानी बात क्यों निकालते हो लेकिन जब कृष्ण चंद्र राय की बात आती है तो वो तुरंत निकालते हैं तो इस प्रकार से उनके दोगलापन होता है और आपको इसका बिल्कुल मन में प्रेशर नहीं लेना चाहिए आपने तो बंगाल का उज्जवल भविष्य और आपका हाँ। स्वयं का जीवन भी लोगों के लिए रहा है हाँ जी। और आपके सामने बंगाल की विरासत को बचाने की भी चुनौती है और आप इसे कैसे देख रही हैं आप हम पॉजिटिवली देख रहे हैं हमारा लड़ाई जो है लोगों का सेवा के लिए है और प्रोडक्शन हटाने के लिए है और वंचित लोगों के उपकार में आने के लिए है संदेश खाली से भी हमारी बहनों ने बेटियों ने वो आवाज उठाई जो एक महिला मुख्यमंत्री और उसके ऐसे शासन के खिलाफ थी जहां शासन चरमरा गया है कुप्रबंधन है भ्रष्टाचार है संरक्षण उन लोगों को है जो बहन बेटियों के साथ बलात्कार अत्याचार करते हैं और एक महिला मुख्यमंत्री ममता बनर्जी उस राज्य की महिलाओं को संरक्षण नहीं दे पाई बल्कि संरक्षण दिया है तो भ्रष्टाचारियों को बलात्कारियों को Time for a very short break. More news on the other side. Who present? Yeah, I feel my pain. Yeah, I feel my pain. So friends, next I have is this uh, shiny new device coming straight from the Realme factory. This is the all new Realme Narzo 70 Pro 5G. Or my shiny? Why I'm saying this? Because see, of course, it's shiny. I mean, the way it looks, even the frame is very shiny. At the same time, this phone really shines bright. When we look at its features, ko hai. because here we have some interesting things. Realme is packed. What we have is a Sony AMX 890 sensor. Ke 50 megapixels. 
लेंस वाला प्राइमरी कैमरा दैट हैज ओ आई एस एट द सेम टाइम इन साइड द फोन इज रियली पैक विद फीचर इनफैक्ट हम यहाँ पे अभी इस फोन में जेस्टर्स से इसको कंट्रोल कर सकते हैं बिकॉज दिस हैज गॉट समथिंग दैट रियल वी कॉल्स एयर जेस्टर्स सो अगर आप देखो इसको एंड हैव अ क्लोजर लुक अबाउट हाउ दिस रियल मी नार्जो सेवेंटी प्रो रियली इज आई वुड से वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग मिड रेन स्मार्टफोन कमिंग स्ट्रेट फ्रॉम रियल मी फाइनली द वेट इज ओवर रियल मी इज लेटेस्ट हॉट शॉट नार्जो सेवेंटी प्रो फाइव जी फाइनली इंडिया में लॉन्च हो गया है दिस फोन इज पैक विद अमेजिंग फीचर्स दैट विल मेक यू गो वाओ इस फोन में है एक रेन वॉटर smart touch feature this means no more tensions about phone usage in a light drizzle the powerful mediatek dimensity chipset lets you game multitask and do everything else at lightning speed the 5000 mah battery and superbook fast charging will get you back in action in no time the phone's horizon glass design gives it a super premium head turning look realme has kept it affordable narzo 70 pro 5g starts at just rupees 18999 You can grab it in stylish glass green and glass gold colors from March 22nd on Amazon and the Realme website. With its awesome display, camera and overall performance, the Realme Narzo 70 Pro 5G is a total paisa vasool deal. If you're looking for a smartphone that's powerful, stylish and affordable, this is it. This is NDTV, and you're watching NDTV twenty four seven. Hello, Moto. ECI issues notices to Supriya Shine, Dilip Ghosh. The notices are over personal attacks by politicians. The ECI notice after Supriya Shine's remark on Kangana Ranaut. Sources tell NDTV that ED case against Kerala Chief Minister's daughter. The money laundering case is against the Chief Minister's daughter Dina. The case is over suspicious payments made by a mineral firm. A high court order expected shortly. High court to give order on Delhi Chief Minister's bail petition. India summons U.S. diplomat over U.S. comment on Arvind Kejriwal. A 40-minute meeting with U.S. Deputy Chief of Mission. U.S. had called for fair and transparent process for the Delhi Chief Minister. There's a Mahabharat in the MBA over a Mumbai seat. Upset uh, Sanjay Nirupam Das. Uh, Shiv Sena led by Uddhav Pal Thakre. Nirupam calls on the Congress to snap ties with the Sena led by Uddhav Thakre. Prime Minister Narendra Modi speaks to BJP's uh, Bengal Lok Sabha candidate Amrita Roy, who is contesting the Krishna Nagar constituency against Trinamool Congress's Mahua Maitra. The PM says BJP is committed to uprooting corruption in the country. The Election Commission of India has sent a notice to Congress leader Supriya Shine over a post on Kangana Ranaut. Remember, remember Kangana Ranaut is uh, BJP's candidate for the 2024 Lok Sabha polls from Himachal Pradesh's Mandi. The ECI said uh, that the comments by Shine are prima facie violative of the Model Code of Conduct. She is required to respond by the 29th of March, 5 p.m. So Supriya Shineth has been sent a notice by ECI on her comments against uh, uh, Kangana Ranaut uh, a few days ago. Um, there was an Insta post by Supriya Shineth's uh, account in which uh, she had posted a picture of uh, Kangana Ranaut in her modelling days. Of course, Ms. Shineth had apologised and retracted that post, but uh, uh, the BJP has been demanding an apology, and also uh, a delegation from the BJP had asked the ECI to take strict action against people who violate the Model Code of Conduct yesterday. Moving, moving on, the ECI has also issued notices to BJP MP Dilip Ghosh over identify her father jibe against Mamta Banerjee. Remember, uh, Dilip Ghosh is also the uh, sitting MP from Medhnipur. He is also the candidate from Bardhaman Durgapur for the BJP. This time, he's been the state president of the BJP um, uh, till recently. I have my colleague uh, Saurabh Gupta joining us with more details on this. Uh, uh, Saurabh. Uh, 
Um, Dilip Ghosh is known to make these comments. Now, of course, the Shukas notice against him comes uh, as a surprise. Uh, but tell us, how is he taking it? Well, this has been the political headline of the day with Dilip Ghosh uh, not only making that uh, caustic and uh, controversial comment earlier, but also uh, somewhat offering an apology this morning. Uh, but in spite of that, the Trinamool Congress has visited the Election Commission with a delegation and asked for action. One is he should be suspended from the election pro pro process for seven days, his candidature should be cancelled, etc., etc., is what the Trinamool Congress delegation told the Election Commission this morning when they visited the Election Commission in Kolkata. Now, uh, obviously, this has become a bit of an embarrassment for the BJP because, remember, the BJP has been focusing on a... Uh, you know, women's issues-led campaign, uh, you know, the Prime Minister's handle and all the other BJP handles saying Modi ka parivar, uh, which is basically to stay away from more personal comments and personal attacks. At least if you see the Prime Minister's speeches in uh, during this election <coughs> cam campaign earlier, uh, they've all been very, very targeted towards the issues that the BJP wants to make an election plank. And therefore, uh, this seems to be a distraction from that electoral strategy of the BJP, which is why, uh, obviously, you know, that apology too has been offered, but the Election Commission also stepping in and asking Dilip Ghosh to explain his comments. And this is perhaps in line with what was expected, that this hadn't gone down well, and the BJP itself also hadn't taken this well. And there was that news earlier about a show cause notice being sent to Dilip Ghosh by his own party. Right. Uh, thank you, Saurav, for joining us for those details. I also have Mohammad Ghazali, my colleague, joining us. Uh, uh, Ghazali, ECI has sent a notice to Congress leader Supriya Srinir. She, of course, had retracted her post on Kangna Ranaut. Uh, Kangna is, of course, uh, the Mandi candidate for the BJP. She had herself posted on this. Uh, of course, that post was extremely problematic, misogynistic and offensive. Uh, tell us how are the people of Himachal looking at uh, this action by ECI? See, as far as this entire episode is concerned, the BJP's local leadership in Himachal Pradesh is going to raise this issue throughout the campaign because Himachal goes to polls in the last phase of... Uh, Himachal will vote in the last phase of the polls, that is on June 1st. And since uh, her announcement as the candidate from the Mandi Lok Sabha constituency, uh, the first thing what we have heard is that Congress's candidate or the sitting MP from Mandi, Pratibha Singh, has refused yet again that she won't be contesting uh, the Lok Sabha polls this time. But as far as those comments are concerned, the BJP is raising that issue and it's connecting it with multiple other issues on which Congress has often been found very wanting. Like uh, Kangana said that the city of Mandi or the place of town of Mandi has been used derogatory, uh, has been shown in a derogatory light by the Congress leaders, but it is a Chota Kashi or Mini Kashi for us due to its religious significance. Now, one particular issue, one sexist comment will now be uh, utilized or exploited by the BJP in the campaign, connecting it with different issues. It was, It is just not uh, a sexist comment, <coughs> but using that word for the town of Mandi will also have uh, the BJP feels that it, it has got religious connotation and they'll yet again try to uh, sort of Gherao be the Congress or attack Congress on the religious issue. That how Congress has always been anti-Hindu and the kind of politics BJP does when it comes to Hindutva issues or issues of religion. So be, with Congress will certainly find itself on a weak wicket if it keeps explaining it itself on why the comments were issued. And it will certainly hope that this issue dies down sooner than later. But the BJP will certainly use it throughout the campaign, connecting it with the uh, uh, dignity of women or Mahila Asmita. And we have seen how Prime Minister has been uh, talking to those women candidates on the BJP from different seats, also asserting the same fact that BJP respects women, while Congress behaves or uh, uh, does this or outrages or uh, issue such uh, insensitive comments against women is what the BJP will try to play throughout the campaign. Right. Thank you, Ghazali, for joining us for those details. So politics playing out over those uh, comments which are being seen as anti-women. I also have Kapil Madan, who's a political analyst, advocate uh, Supreme Court, and also Amitabh Tiwari, who's a political analyst, joining us uh, uh, to debate this, to discuss this. Uh, let me uh, ask you, uh, Mr. Madan, you know, so the BJP has, uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, proved that uh, it is taking action against uh, people who use hate speeches. We saw many of them getting dropped in so many lists of the BJP. Now, the East CI has also sent a show cost notice to Mr. Ghosh over his offensive comments against uh, Mamta Panerjee. 
the bjp is asking that asking congress why is the party falling short of action uh, because the comments the post by supriya shinet of course she has retracted them and apologized but that is extremely offensive and it is in himachal pradesh where the your congress is where your government is also on thin ice do you think this will impact women's votes and at least the deputation of the party see you know i'll 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 let me give you an example we all saw when you know honorable prime minister modi was campaigning in bengal uh, against uh, tmc prime minister himself made that ddo dd remark in a humorous way and you know nothing happened in so far as the uh, you know election commission is concerned now coming to the issue at hand wherein you know miss shubhya shinete has come openly said what has happened how that has happened and she has not for a you know second try to defend you know this incident so she has condemned in uh, unequivocally she has also said that she's trying to find out because different people had access to the accounts uh, you know she's trying to find out who the person was uh, who has actually posted this comment and at this point in time bjp is not concerned with taking this issue to a logical conclusion because had this this been the case the bjp should have you know registered the fir against the, the concerned person after the registration of fir the post you know can be tracked down through the ip address that who actually was the individual what was the location from which this was post i also at this point in time do not rule out you know any political conspiracy behind it and it is only after a detailed investigation you know we can come to a conclusion whether this was orchestrated by anyone from the congress or it was a uh, you know misdeed orchestrated or you know planned or planted by any outsider But do so you this think is, that the Congress should have is, actually walked the extra mile to reassure women of the country that uh, it is extremely concerned about this post? Do you think that should have happened, and the Congress party should have taken more action on this? See, when I said here, when you know, Mr. Sri Sri Neet has publicly apologized, she has taken responsibility of the post. She is not saying it has not come from her account. She has admitted that it has come to you know come from her account. However, there were you know several individuals who had access to her account and. you know any individual has posted and she has you know very categorically made that admission on camera so had this been the case if you know okay let me ask this question to amitabh tiwari mr tiwari you know there are these bread and butter issues and of course there are these issues of women uh, do do you think that there is uh, some sort of uh, relatability at least when it comes to uh, dignity of women in the water base because there are also urban sensibilities there are rural sensibilities people are people are also wondering if bridgebushan sharan will be given a ticket from the bjp so there are many questions and you know this whole gamut of uh, uh, women's uh, dignity is is a huge uh, uh, feat do you think the parties are doing enough when it comes to protecting women's honor and respect see essentially the women vote has emerged as a very important vote bank and in 12 states the, the women voters are uh, more in number than the men so they have their own sensibilities issues and demands so both of all the political parties across the spectrum are trying to woo the women voter through increased representation